League fans around the world, welcome to North America. We got the Rocket League Championship Series rolling into town. This is our third open qualifier, and we are going to be sending some teams to Copenhagen at the end of this weekend. Could not be more excited about it. I'm Wave Punk. I got Gibbs. I got Dazrin. Dazrin, you're looking fly in the new in the new hoodie. I didn't get that one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't get that one. But yes, nope. <laughs> I enjoyed this hoodie just like I enjoy Rocket League. You know, we're both we're both here. We're warmed up. Uh, honestly, we might have to do an outfit change because this qualifier is the hottest one that we've had all season for NA. Yeah, gotta gotta go with the tank tops. When, when, when RLCS tank tops win. Gibbs, I have like three of that shirt, though. Oh, I love this shirt. It's so comfortable. But we're not here to sell merch. We're here to talk about North American Rocket League. <laughs> so exciting. It's the last chance. It's the third qualifier. There's no more excuses. Just win. Make it to Copenhagen. That is what everyone is trying to do. A lot of teams are boot camping, too, to try and do that. So it should be an interesting weekend. They're trying to get there. They're trying to boot camp, folks. Let's see the season schedule. We are in open qualifier number three of the first split, that orange bar at the top. And you can see open qualifier number three. There's an arrow beep, 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 straight to major one in Copenhagen. That is literally the next thing that is happening after we get done with all these open three qualifiers, because there is a, there's there's some other regions that will have to play their qualifiers before that event. So that's coming up at the end of March, March 28th through 31st. I believe the show days that you can attend are the 30th and the 31st. Make sure you get your tickets billetloon.dk if you haven't already folks we would love to see you there it's an incredible event and a wonderful experience every time we've gone never been to a, I've, I've done i've done a layover in copenhagen daz i've never done an oh. event in copenhagen though me either uh, i'm very interested to see you know the environment the city the crowd everything that surrounds it but i think it'll be a good time I, I'm, I'm excited. I just remembered how nice the airport is. I am excited to go and enjoy <laughs> the, and be in that airport for a second again, folks. But if you're just now joining us, thank you so much for watching. Welcome to one of the best shows on Twitch and on YouTube all over the world. TikTok as well, apparently, folks. We're everywhere right now. And we've got some amazing teams trying to compete to earn one of four spots to going to Copenhagen. So we've got lots of excellent action coming down the pipe over the next three days. This is March 1st. Welcome to the spot. The game's do begin at 10 a.m. Pacific. You can see the kickoff in the top left corner there. Dignitas versus Luminosity. 16 minutes and counting down till they are on the pitch. We'll have the playoff bracket starting off tomorrow, creating a champion on Sunday. But next week, folks, got more action for you. Europe will be doing the same thing we're doing. Different start time, but same format, different teams. Also got the First Touch podcast, as always, 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch.tv slash Rocket League. Daz, what can people expect on First Touch this week? I mean, we're going to have a lot of conversations breaking down all of the regions that are qualifying for Copenhagen, what to expect there. Of course, we're going to talk about this weekend as well. North America, how's NA looking? Mm. Uh, again, talking about the wild things that have happened over the course of this weekend, because we know it's not that simple when it comes down to qualifying for Copenhagen here. So teams now, last chance to make major one. What are they going to show us? We'll break it down on Wednesday. We certainly will, folks. There's lots of storylines coming into these events. First Touch is a wonderful place to get you caught up on everything that's going on in the scene. But if you haven't watched First Touch, or if you haven't watched our show before and you're wondering, who are all these people? What sort of things are going on in Rocket League in North America? Let's get you caught up. With the season now very much in full swing, North America stepped back up to the plate. See, we know American football. Of all the tournaments, slam dunks, these are our favorite three. A new star emerges. Guys, you gotta wish me luck doing this without making a single cheese pun, because this man is more than a Rocket League pro with a great name. Over the last two open qualifiers, he has proven himself as one of the region's top talents. Immediately picking up right where they left off. This is good solid control there for Cheese, and where's the defense? Luminosity Gaming, led by Cheese's sheer brilliance, gate crashed the grand finals for the first time in the org's history. Only Rettles on the team had a top two finish under his belt until now. The last one, by the way, was almost two years ago. So this first thrust into the limelight will put LG in great stead for the rest of the season. I guess you could say the cream cheese is really rising to the top. <laughs> oh, I was so close. G2 drop a game. Let's get it out the way now. G2, they won again. And by the way, in spectacular fashion. But Rettles able to get the save out. Beast Mode again, picking up the ball, has atomic midfield, plays it low! Crikey, they're good. 
At least Luminosity went one step further than Gen G had two weeks prior, battling to bag a grand final game and avoid the whitewash. It could have been so much more. Reynolds, fake challenge, but Beast Mode called the bluff and banked the shot. That demo takes out Cheese, and that takes out 90% of the Luminosity offense. No, what and the? Everybody parts. If G2 Esports are going to do a last season spring vitality and win three online RLCS events in a row, you'd expect this weekend's challenge to be their toughest yet. The field closes. With their 4-1 <laughs> win, G2 became the first NA team to qualify for Copenhagen. Copenhagen? I don't know, you decide. As for the rest, it is close. All the way up to number 10. If you win qualifier three, you clinch. Just three points separate Dignitas in fourth with Rebellion in 10th. For context, OG looked down and out after going 0 and 5 in series across two qualifiers. One late rally later and their first two series win secured, they clawed their way to the semi-finals, proving perfectly how much a single good run can catapult you up the points rankings. It really is still all to play for, with three major spots up for grabs. Tune in this weekend to find out who comes out on top when it's all on the line. Man, name a more confusing emotional roller coaster than Stumpy talking about North America. I'll wait, folks. I don't know. I don't know what this guy thinks about us. But either way, lots of crazy stories coming into this weekend. Uh, Gibbs, you said it yourself. If you win this event, you are in. 16 points is enough for the top 11 teams to guarantee a trip to Copenhagen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That four point gap is huge. Everyone is going to be trying to compete to at least get up to that top two category. And that'll very likely get you a top four spot into the major. But let's take a look at those points and see how close it is. And let's run it down really quick. G2, Woo! they've already clinched. But if they make it to the top eight, they clinch number one seed. That's all they have to do there. Gen G just needs two wins for today to clinch. So they don't even have to make it into top eight to clinch a major spot. Luminosity needs a top four to clinch by themselves. Then everyone else can clinch with a major win all the way up to number 10. And then TSM, like if they win the regional, they might have to play a tiebreaker, but they also control their own destiny because they could obviously just win that tiebreaker as well. So 11 teams control their own destiny and G2, obviously they've already clinched. So they're the only team that is coming into this, just going for some prize money. Some extra points is always nice because they all count for the world championship when we get there. So they're still competing four points, but at the end of the day, the main goal it's one of those top four spots. And Dignitas right now, they have that spot by one point. This is, this, this, this is, I think, the closest it's, like, the most tight it's ever been, Daz, going into a final qualifier. Yeah, I mean, the way this looks, it is absolutely so close. And everybody has something to play for, though. Even G2 at the top, right? If they win this event, first North American team to win all three regionals in a, a single span or single split, yep. and they look like they're informed to do so. Of course, Genji, yes, they want to qualify, but also they also want to get that win against G2, get a, get a victory there. So they look good going into the major. So there's so much that top down everybody has to play for here i mean it's gonna be a crazy day i talked we had talked to rettles on first touch as well about it and he said nerves are going to play a part it's gonna be ugly the rocket league matches are gonna definitely have a lot of like nervous misplays affected by them today and today is one of the most important days out of all of this because you gotta get out of the swiss that's the most, biggest part of this Guys, oh, and, and there are more teams trying to get out of Swiss than there are spots in the bracket, folks. That's how Swiss works. So only half of these teams will have a chance to try and play their way into Copenhagen this weekend. This is our Swiss. We will be playing the entirety of it today. If you win matches, you play against teams that win matches. If you lose, you play against teams that lose. First team to win three before losing three moves forward. That'll happen eight times. We'll have eight teams also that lose three before they win three and they will be done. We will say goodbye to them. There is no, there are no teams. I feel like this is obvious, Gibbs, right? But just to be clear, there are no teams that can drop out of Swiss and still make it to Copenhagen. Gen G can. They only need really? two wins in yeah. Swiss and they control their own destiny. Luminosity as well. They could drop out of Swiss and 
a qualify, but they would need some help uh, at that point. So those two teams are a little bit more confident. Uh, even like a Dignitas, who's only one point up, technically, they can still qualify like if other teams fall apart around them. But you would need massive amounts of help, right? So like if you're I see, I see, I see. a fan of every team outside of Dignitas, you want to see Dignitas go home today at some point because that will allow a lot of these other teams to open up that door to get one of those top four spots. I see that that one point Dignitas has is a big is a big it's important huge. thing. But but again, they have to move. They have to get out of Swiss Four to remain strong and valuable. So okay, so there's there's a lot of crazy situations. Sure, we've, we've been talking about here. I mean, so I thought it was when you first were like, oh, just you're winning, you're in. I mean, I guess that's winning the whole event. My brain originally went to like, okay, so this is all gonna be simple. It's just gonna be like the top eight teams to move forward. What what's like the extreme circumstance? What's like okay. the craziest situation that can happen here? So let me show you a top eight bracket that is not necessarily crazy by itself. Like it's plausible. Sure, you, you need some underdog upsets to happen, but like if we can throw up that top eight bracket here, you can see like the only thing that's maybe an outlier is probably a TSM that comes top four, but their off season was great. They had top four finishes. It is possible that they make that underdog run. Now this bracket doesn't have to fall exactly like this. TSM could easily play like M80, and then we know it's a free win and they'll make top four, right? So it's possible that that happens. But if this bracket happens and if Dignitas goes two, three in Swiss, here's what the points would look like. And these points are wild. You got a six way tie for fourth place. Uh, Dignitas and maybe OG Pirates, happening? Space Station, what and TSM. If that happened, we need to play five matches at least uh, to determine who comes out like uh, for that fourth place spot. It would be absolutely wild, but this is the bracket I want. Like, obviously, <laughs> I want to see this happen. I want chaos. You're so evil. Uh, yes, but if it does, if they do go 2-3, that 18-point mark very well could lead to tiebreakers. So I think that is probably the thing that will most likely make tiebreakers is if they, toss, they fall 2-3. There's a very real possibility that a lot of other teams could fall out in that quarterfinal round and tie them. So that's what we're looking at here. That's a uh, that's some NA depth right there, Daz. That's a <laughs> very even region if that were to happen. Uh, shout outs to shout outs to Martian and Rookie Mistake on Reddit as well as Direct, uh, our statistician, for finding that scenario. Crazy stuff over there. We'll see if it happens. The fact that it's not that unreasonable, I don't know. That that that's what's what's blowing it's, my mind. Well, it could happen. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. When you showed us the bracket, I'm like, yeah, that's that seems like a normal bracket. We'll see. It does have to kind of get seated a specific way for that exact top four to happen. So again, today's action will be important. Now, Gibbs, you and I put our brains together. We're probably going to do this before every North American uh, qualifier moving forward this season, at least, and put together the most infallible, undisputed power rankings for North America. This is the uh, the list of all lists. Everyone else can stop. So, Wave, when we put this up, like, we yep. were like, oh, let's do a show. It's going to be really interesting, right? We're going to have a yep. lot of different picks. We were very boring. We wound up with the same top seven yep. picks. And then after that, eight, nine, and ten, we mixed around a bit. But, Dazarin, since you weren't part of this, and, you know, we make fun of a lot of your top ten lists, yeah, is there anything right? that you want to point out here to have well, us try and explain? Yeah, there, there's a couple. There's a couple. You got SSG at three when the furthest they've gone is top eight twice. Okay. Really quick on that. Yeah. Space Station Gaming preseason power ranked, like I think they were clear number three, right? Then they've only lost to G2 and Gen G, clear number one and number two. So it's very difficult to move them down. They have won some series maybe in five games when they should be winning them in three or four, but it's hard to move them down when they haven't lost to anyone below them yet. So that's why I think we kept them at three. That's valid, but. I don't know. I just feel like Luminosity plays closer to G2. So it just kind of, I would just have them above them a little bit. But only, but, only in that part. But Luminosity aspect. loses to, to Energy in a 3 0. Like, when that happens, it's very difficult to put Luminosity up any higher. I don't know. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I'm, okay, okay. And then, and then you got the Swiss Merchants at five. I guess I can understand that a little bit. I, I could see it. They have the potential, but yeah, they, they've also got to be able to like break out of that too. Look, here's, here's the thing I said about M80. We keep calling them Swiss merchants like it's a bad thing. 
This isn't like last season where like Swiss is like just the format for like the first split. This is the entire season. Swiss is half of the event. Be a Swiss merchant. Congratulations. You're making bracket every single event. That's huge. Congratulations. I don't know why we keep talking about Swiss merchants like it's bad. Because you can't make major off of just make a top eight and lose and wave. Gotta you gotta be best make top four. You gotta make gotta top. You gotta top two. You, like there's only four spots. Yeah, that's, okay? that's why we have them at five. It's, it's the best you can do while still not making me. <laughs> <major. You know? laughs> that is true. That's <laughs> valid. That's valid. <laughs> oh, All right, not man. bad. Not bad. It could have been worse. Okay. It could. I've Just seen to worse. Be fair, to be fair, it's kind of a. It's kind of a. It's, it, it's not a particularly controversial time in North America for power rankings. Maybe we'll shake that up this week, and we'll finally get somebody other than G2 to win. So we'll see what happens, folks. These are the schedule we've got. Again, we're playing all five rounds of Swiss today. It's the main thing you need to understand from this. It'll take about an hour or so per round. If you really just want to see that kind of final who's in, who's out action of round five, come back at 2 p.m. But really just stick in your seat. It's going to be a great day of Rocket League. Eight matches to kick things off at the beginning of the day. We'll show you to them four at a time here. These are all going to be happening simultaneously. The vast majority of these teams have a broadcast somewhere on Twitch. If you want to go and watch their specific POVs, they'll have wonderful biased commentary rooting for the team you want to see win. So we will feature one match here on the stream, but matches like OG and M80 going to be happening on their broadcast. You can see Pirates versus NRG, Space Station versus The Rebellion, TSM versus Boulevard. We'll talk about Boulevard a little bit later here as well. And then four more matches. G2 going to be taking on the Muffin Men, Squishy and Company making a final last hurrah. Excited to talk about Squishy a little bit later on today. And Gen G will be playing the Snowmen. Snowmen back in the house as well. Omelet and the Young Whippersnappers also making a return here, trying to make the crazy Cinderella runs. And to kick things off here in two and a half minutes, we're going to have Luminosity versus Dignitas, folks. Not Boulevard or Shopify Rebellion. It's definitely Dignitas. We'll see how they are able to do <laughs> things here. Uh, they've generally done well against Luminosity, but Luminosity has been stepping up. So this is a battle between two teams going in two different directions based on Qualifier 2. Like Luminosity, I think a lot of people had them as the dark horse to make top four in Qualifier 2. And everyone feels incredibly smart because it actually did happen. And they made it all the way to the grand finals because of probably an easier side of their bracket. But you got to play what's in front of you. And they did just that. On the other side, Dignitas, they went through the Swiss and they lost 1-3. And sometimes you're like, eh, maybe that was a tough road. It really wasn't. They played Omelet. They lost them 2-3. Then they beat a low-end team. Then they lost to Pirates on a boat, who's, you know, top eight, but like in that 5-8 through eight range. Then they lost to OG as well. So they need to find ways to beat teams that they should. On the flip side, they also, like, they lost to Omelet again last week. So they got a low seed, which is why they have to play Luminosity here. So Dignitas trending downwards right now, Daz. Do you think there's any way that they write that ship? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at Dignitas, it's really kind of hard to gauge because to me, what it, it did feel like it was an off weekend from them. Uh, they yeah. weren't necessarily playing up to par, but you could tell something was off. That's the biggest thing. And now there's definitely an adjustment that has been made. We talked about boot camping. Dignitas is one of, I believe, the five or six teams in North America that are boot camping over the course of this weekend. They've been around each other for quite some time now. I feel like there's been plenty of time now between last event and this one for all of the mistakes to get cleaned up. And we know what Dignitas look like when they're team that are in form. They're team that can definitely make top eight. We've seen that before. Yeah. And right now they're in the lead in the point standings. Everybody's trying to catch up to them. Even though it's by one point, a lead is a lead. And they're going to continue to try to keep that running. They have to get a good start here, though. Yeah, see, like if you're a fan of any of these teams that are not in the top three, you want Dignitas to lose here. You want Dignitas to go out uh, in Swiss so you can catch up because they have that spot right now. But they are boot camping, and maybe there's bad vibes in Qualifier 2, maybe through the like open Qualifier portion. But when you all come to play together, and boot camp, you can squash those vibes pretty easily and be back on track. So we'll see if they can do it here. Chat, who do you think is going to win? Hashtag LG, hashtag DIG, hashtag dig in the chat. <sighs> Gentlemen, there's arguments on both sides. But I feel like there's a, there's, there's a very defendable thought process for either of these teams in the situation. The fact that it's a new week, the fact that Dignitas is boot camping, and the fact and that like that the, the argument of it was a fluke week does feel true to me. I don't know what to think, Gibbs. 
it does feel true, but at the same time, these are all hopes and prayers, it feels like, for Dignitas side. Like, Luminosity, right now on paper, is the better team. They are trending upwards while Dig is trending downwards. So, yes, there are possibilities that it could happen, but Luminosity, right now, uh, they are the better team, so I have to pick them. Daz, what's the recipe for Dig? I mean, I think this is... To be fair, this is Luminosity's series to lose here, but I think, again, that underestimation of Dignitas is something that a lot of people are taking lightly here. I do think that, again, they continue to play their play style, especially you got to keep eyes on Arsenal. If he's really on, that's a huge change. Absolutely huge impact here for Dignitas, and I'm betting on it, so that's why I'm going dig here. Luminosity has swept Dignitas in the Swiss before. Can they do it again? It matters so much this time around. Every team trying to play their way to Denmark, folks. It starts right here. Luminosity versus Dignitas to kick off open qualifier number three. All you can ask for in a format as volatile as this is the opportunity to directly impact the opposition. The few teams that are competing for a spot at the major and then world's implications from there. That's what both these teams have. The chance to give the other their first strike on their way out of Swiss. Yeah, and Dignitas peaked in Regional 1. Luminosity peaked in Regional 2. And who can be our, our best and most consistent representative of North America? We want to be proud, and we want to see everyone at their peak. It starts with the Swiss. And I know that Dignitas have a lot to prove. They've been a bit on a downfall, and Dignitas are already getting demoed. See exactly which Dignitas shows up here. I mean, we, we know how good Luminosity has been over the first couple of splits. Dignitas definitely feels like they've got something to prove. Of course, they've got some ground to make up. Arsenal trying to work his way through all by himself. Shots a little bit wide. Now Evo can't keep control out of the corner. Magic Bear doing all he can to power that downfield and give Luminosity some breathing room. So far, so good. And she's, especially in Regional 2, MVP-like performance. Uh, just an all-around great player. Over one goal a game, three shots a game, two saves. Like, like, this is a player you can plug and play anywhere. Scored the most amount of goals out of any player in the Regional 2 at 40. Highest goals per game, highest total score. All eyes are on Cheese to see if he can have a performance like that uh, and, and keep it throughout the tournament. Well, he's going to collect this here on his back line, get credit for a save, even though it was technically a little bit wide. That demo by Arsenal might have opened the door, but Magic Bear's all over it. You know, if a player could have been given MVP while not being on the winning team, Cheese <laughs> definitely would have fit that bill a couple of weeks ago. I think we're all kind of cheering for Luminosity to take down G2 in that final. Because, like, yeah, you know, G2, they'd already taken care of business. Let, let's give Cheese his flowers. What better reward than running it back here in the third qualifier and maybe finishing the job and earning those MVP honors for himself. And it does feel like he's the only one of the three that would be capable of putting up numbers like that. But Magic Bear making a heroic save and then Reddles couldn't do any more as Gyro rolls underneath him. Reddles in a real tough spot on the rebound here and Dignitas overwhelms Luminosity. Yeah, and Reynolds thought that shot was going high and actually leapfrog over the ball, which I was very surprised about. So an early goal from Dignitas. And I think LG, yes, I, they're probably one of the favorites to try and dethrone maybe that perfect season coming out of G2. I know that's a long road ahead, though. And this is a tone setter of a match. Can LG remain at that peak that they showed us in Regional 2? Can players like Cheese keep... Uh, impressing everybody and Dignitas they missed out on regional two entirely didn't make the Swiss so now that they're here are they here to stay in Magic Bear close to that equalizer in case you hadn't been following in some of the other regions we also know rule one will be joining the teams in Denmark they clinched that spot today is now Magic Bear gonna try and lob one in and gyro out there as well. This is always the most exciting part of any split, and regardless of the format, this is where you start to figure out who's going to take those major spots. Teams start clinching day by day, 
And of course, a lot of action over the next couple of days. Still just the one goal lead here for Dig, trying to expand here. And everything's under a microscope at this point as well, Lemon, right? Because mm -hmm. this is your last chance to punch your ticket to the major. And with the two splits, then all of a sudden, you don't have as much room for error as you might have in a previous season. Oh yeah, Dig didn't make playoffs, I apologize. But yeah, Dig still have to pave their way to prove that they belong in the top four. And both these teams, third and fourth in points. And that's that's the hot seat right now, because as the pre-show alluded to, uh, you still need a top performance in this qualifier in order to make Copenhagen. No one is really feeling safe besides G2. And I'm not really, I'm starting to see signs of life out of Luminosity. And no, oh, that's really close to the post. And Arsenal couldn't tap that one in, even with Magic Bear under pressure. So Dignitas might squeeze out game one with a win if they can maintain the one goal lead. As Luminosity didn't really put up uh, too many shots. I think they had two all of the first half. So it's a slow day for Luminosity. Illuminosity very lucky to not get scored on there. Reynolds got caught up, not quite in a rule one, but then he got caught on somebody's car. And then Magic Bear was going to veer for boost. They realized that ball was going to come out low rather than rolling up the wall. So he had to turn at the last moment. Illuminosity still have a chance here. Cheese around the board. Reynolds also there. That demo opens things up, but nobody's in position. You had Cheese and Reynolds basically right up each other's tailpipe there. Neither could actually turn around and get a shot on. And Luminosity lets a golden opportunity go by the wayside. And Dignitas almost ended it there. Clark's going to hit zero. Arsenal grounds it. And Luminosity are going to be kicking themselves as they did not cash in on a great opportunity. Dignitas hangs on for a 1-0 victory. I don't know if I want to break the glass and sound the alarm for Luminosity. It is just game one, but this is not the Luminosity we saw in Regional 2. Like I said, slow day. What we love about Luminosity is that they're an overall balanced, cohesive team. And you had Cheese going as that third with Magic Bear and Rettles have been together, right? And Cheese has been that MVP. Magic Bear, Rettles, there's synergy on this team, but we didn't see those dots connect quite yet. Like I I said they only had the, like two shots to maybe the I think Dignitas were doubling that in the first half and things started to pick up luminosity were warming up but Dignitas hold on with game one by one goal <laughs> and hey all that matters is the one that gets through right I mean you know Evo solid defensive effort for Dignitas and that I, I think I was one of Evo's bigger critics when he debuted of course he debuted with X set and had just the most miserable debut you never saw him on the defensive end it's almost like he didn't know how to play defense but then you look at what he had around him and you're like okay I understand ever since then he has become a much more well-rounded player and the results have been evident he's got Dignitas in a great spot here still within arm's reach of qualifying for the major and off to a great start here and almost scoring off that challenge oh Evo oh so close and now this one headed netward as well Luminosity really having to scramble in the first 15 seconds and then after all that they almost score on the other side oh everything is so close but close only counts in horseshoes yeah, Evo scared me a bit there. I wish he cleaned up what he stunned in the first place. Then Rattles comes out of nowhere, brings that one home to give Luminosity their first goal of the series. Well, after all that, Rattles up to the skies, and Arsenal just a little too slow to reach him. A chaotic 30 seconds that belongs to Luminosity Gaming. Yeah, Dignitas, got to worry about those kick kickoffs too. Jai will go up high, Cheese missing that, so Dig are stable. And I think you can be pretty stable when you just lay down the red carpet like that. And we're tied 1-1. Clear the runway, flight arsenal, cleared for takeoff as Gyro runs ahead. The demo through the smoke, and nine seconds later, we're all squared. This is what we'd expect out of this series. As now Rettles indirect for himself. Try to line up a double and Gyro there to meet him. Now off to the corner. It's a 1-1. You can see the pace picking up. 
compared to game one to how that everyone's comfortable, confident, and especially Luminosity need, needed that wake-up call, a similar wake-up call than I think Dignitas got in Regional 2. Are we going to see the peak Dignitas from Regional 1? They've showed us that potential, and it goes downfield, and Reynolds gets it done again. Wide open. Reynolds caught in stride, perfectly placed. Cannot afford to give up opportunities like that. Well, that's just a small one goal lead, but hey, for four shots and two goals, you, you like that execution, especially coming out of Reynolds. And it's not even needed, these three-way passes. It's been solo, it's been open nets, and Dignitas, now that the pace is picked up in this game, need to keep it up, keep up. As in the corner, Arsenal isn't too threatened as Magic Bear slows down the play. And now we're not even into the second half, and Dignitas have some work to do. Ooh, along the second half of this game, it's oh so close now, is now Arsenal and Evo crisscross in the corner. But we're to see Evo rotating back where he did, and now Reynolds gonna have to sky this away. Works out all right for Dignitas. They've got the upper hand, even though they're down a goal and back in their own end. They've got an opportunity now to kind of overwhelm Luminosity the way they did early in game one. Evo, flip reset. Cheese has that away. Now Dyro, can he stay with this play? No, Reynolds clears, but Dig coming right back in. You know, if they could just keep that volume of shots up as they did in that opening game, things will open up for them eventually. Magic Bear thought about coming up. Evo goes ahead. Now Gyro with the follow and Reynolds stands tall. Arsenal looking for a pass, not finding any. And then Evo gets bumped by Reynolds. And that might just kill off the Dignitas attack if Reynolds can get to this, and he can. You gotta love what Luminosity is doing on the defense. They have some very valuable touches. They've been able. Dignitas generates is Dignitas will send one player forward, keep the rest at the midfield, and even with that extra presence, Luminosity's counterattack counterattacks have been fruitful. They've been scary, and Dignitas haven't been able to puncture through. And it's been quite some time that they've been knocking at that door. And Evo, I think, brings that energy to the field that Gyro and Arsenal really got to connect with. Round and out again. So Luminosity weathers another storm out of Dignitas. Just feel like two is not going to be enough. The way the Dig have attacked here in this first game and a half. One demo in front, inconsequential as Cheese has that away. Taking out Magic Bear could be beneficial in the long run. He's been uh, arguably their best defender through the first couple of events. Now Evo. Over one and stopped by Reynolds again. Cheese against Gyro. And Cheese has won that matchup quite a bit against everybody in North America, but not this time. Luminosity, though, killing more time into the final minute. They've done well to hold this lead, but I think every LG fan would agree they'd love to see one more because a one goal lead does not seem safe. Oof. That's a, a rough touch by Gyro. You had the double commit out of LG, and you really could have made some magic happen as the Dignitas are only down by one. And now you have the jump up from Dignitas, giving a chance for Reynolds to put a shot on target, forcing the save out of Evo. Now, Evo's been having good setups. The effort is there out of Dignitas, but how does he maybe pass the ball to Arsenal? How does Gyro step up and get involved in the play? El Luminosity are just all over you as soon as you get into the blue half, so Dignitas are gonna have to really surprise this defense if they want to break through, and how does Reynolds get away with that? It's a hat trick. Well, he gets away with that because Magic Bear's downfield. Gyro realizes he needs boost. And maybe would have been better served picking up a few pennies. He had to go for the back corner. And once he turned, he was dead to rights. Magic Bear nudges him out of the way. And Luminosity gets that insurance goal they needed. And now the final few seconds. Arsenal can't make it interesting. Down to three. Got a score here. Dignitas can't. We've got a series on our hands here in the opening round. 1-1 series. What I noted the most is that Dignitas, when Luminosity's coming in for that attack, Dignitas are racing back. 
they don't look comfortable, they're not stable, they're barely able to slow down the play out of Luminosity, and Rettles, when he knows Dignitas are on the back foot, can just get a simple flick above them, maybe there's a demo that comes in to open things up. Luminosity doesn't feel like they have to try very hard to score, and a 3-1 solidifies that Luminosity are, are picking things up after game one, and Dignitas are slowing down. Oh, what a kickoff to the Mobile One High Performance Replay. That goal from Rettles set the pace in game one, uh, game two. Dignitas answered back, but it was Rettles again. He had all three for Luminosity, all three in this series as they were shut out in game one. And we look at the crooked numbers on Rettles' scoreline. A couple of demos, three goals from five shots. Still like to see maybe a few more shots out of Luminosity. They didn't get overwhelmed this time by Dignitas like they did in the opening stage of game one. Definitely a tale of two different games here to open up this series. But I think what we just saw in the desk alluded to it a little bit during the pregame, Lemon. You've got Dignitas all on site, all on location. That boot camp working out for them. You love to see an org invested in their team's success, especially after a lot of NA teams and orgs had kind of come under a lot of criticism for not having that same commitment that maybe European teams and other regions have. Yeah, I, and it's nice to see everyone on site together. I think that makes a huge difference for the vibes. I don't know if Island Panda is there too, but you can pick yourselves up after a loss. You can really celebrate and cherish uh, your teammates when you're there in person. So we'll see if that makes a difference for Dignitas. And yes, North American fans, I know I said the word Europe on the broadcast. I assure you, this is not an NAEU thing. I am just as tired of it as you are. Onward now to the rest of game three here with Evo up the ladder, trying to score on his own. Left it in front for Arsenal, and he will score. Oh, what a setup out of Evo. Magic Bear right there on the backboard. Hey, that's how they teach you. You're supposed to have somebody up there. Go out and meet him. Evo just made a better play, and it's 1-0 dig. Well, Dignitas able to come back and they start off with a solid goal in game two as well but it's luminosity the, the comeback power that you got to be worried about you, you need more insurance than that and dignitas have to worry about these counter attacks from luminosity as cheese and magic bear work the left side rattles trying to break through but evo i think has had good setups in game two defensively dignitas look to be more comfortable and as that challenge is won dignitas have a stronger lead Apparently, Gyrus just different. Pinch that right off of Magic Bear. Perfect challenge. We saw a couple of these almost result in goals in game two. This time, it does find the net as Cheese couldn't catch up to it. And Luminosity find themselves looking up at a two goal deficit. Evo just dies right in front of the ball off the kickoff. And play out of Dignitas. Will it result in a goal? Not this time. And you do feel like just against Rettles, teams seem to have a lot more effective kickoffs. It's almost like his curse that teams actually do prepare for kickoffs, whereas the rest of the world, you never see it. You see so many bad kickoff goals because everybody's just an autopilot. It's good to see a team actually putting a little bit of thought into it as Gyro now wins that challenge. Tried to leave it back for Evo. Magic Bear picks it instead, and he scores! <laughs> well, he's got magic in his name for a reason. Gyro, just the touch intended for someone below him, but it was, I think the, the pass was behind the car, so that's where Luminosity will be able to punish. And maybe that's all Luminosity have to hope for, is waiting for a mistake and being at the right place at the right time. Now Cheese and Evo are locked up, so Rettles already pressure that defense. And as that demo goes through, Cheese just gets to escort it to the net. No lead is safe. Never, ever, ever. Cheese just ahead of the defense. I think the last defender just kind of had to wait a moment to see if maybe Evo could make a play there. Did not work out. Now Evo trying to go right back to work. This could turn into one of those North American shootouts. Gyro, around one, around two, but Magic Bear is right there at the back. Everybody from Dignitas had started to retreat. 
Not fully, but that one actually goes off of Arsenal and all the way downfield. And almost a real lucky break for Luminosity. Now a tie game with Evil leading that charge. You're seeing the intention there of trying to find Arsenal and set up on the blue half, but Luminosity are already trying to break up those passes. Luminosity great at slowing down the play. And Evil losing that challenge there to Rattles. Kills that offense for Dignitas. Oh, good clever play by Gyro yet again. Yeah, his kind of resurgence here in North America has been great to see, not just because, okay, it's me and he's one of my rival series boys, but to see how he's recovered from, I mean, it, everybody on that Rogue slash Koi roster kind of looked like they were all at a dead end. And Gyro has carved out a nice little uh, comeback for himself here with this Dignitas squad. It would be great to see them come back and make their way to the Copenhagen Major. Rattles demolished by Evo. It is Gyro with Arsenal waiting in behind him. Can he get out of the zone? He can, but he's burned all his boost. And Luminosity should be able to get right back on the attack, if not for Evo, up there at the ceiling. Great pick, and here comes Dig again. Yeah, Dignitas needs to look more decisive when they get these demos, especially when they're in an offensive situation. Rettles just dodging that, even running into his own teammate, but off the backboard, she's with a touch that goes off to the side, and maybe Arsenal even getting getting in the way of their plans. So, minute 15 left with Rettles against Evo. This goes to the midfield, where Cheese and Arsenal cannot collide, and this has been really back and forth between the two teams. 105 left, and equal, sh pretty much equal shots, equal goals, but one series lead ahead to whoever can score in the next minute. Match point for the winner here in game three. Rettles with Magic Bear flanking to his right. He gets demolished. He was a little too patient as Arsenal takes him out. Cheese trying to delay and save the possession. Rettles now. Dive bomb from Arsenal. Can Magic Bear stay with that? No, he's going to back off and probably wisely so. Arsenal has to make a move around him. Cheese now with 30 seconds. Is this Luminosity's time? Ooh. It's a double commit on the side wall. And Cheese, oh, he could have won that cleanly into the net. It would have been disastrous for Dignitas. Now Magic Bear, they let that one get a little bit away from him. Down to 15 seconds. Cheese. Bumped out by Evo. Demo on Gyro. Magic Bear waiting. Can Reynolds hit him? He sure can! And Luminosity leads! The recipe to success. A few demos slowly crawling down the field. A beautiful bounce off the wall from Reynolds. Reading the defense like a book with six seconds to spare. Luminosity have Dignitas on the back foot to go to match point unless something special can happen off the kickoff. This Gyro and Friends, Evo is able to maintain possession. There's an important double and make it two for Evo to get the zero second mark goal. Everybody waiting patiently. One demo, two demos. Perfectly done by Dignitas. Evo saves them and we head to overtime. Oh man. We were really wondering if these two were going to be close. Arsenal with the shot, and Rettles barely pitches it off the cross. Now Gyro is still threatening, and Magic Bear with a soft touch that was dangerous came out to Dignitas, who couldn't do much with it at the time. So Arsenal waits for his moment to challenge, and he wins it, and Cheese has to send it all the way down. Both teams have been racing back and forth. It's about who was ready on the rotations, and Dignitas already improving on that and truly generating a threat here in overtime not afford to be passive though for luminosity it's like what do you do we were aggressive on the first one and evo picked us apart or rather gyro then on the second they were passive and they still got picked apart now all they can do is try and get the game winner here in overtime it was a clever kickoff she's didn't quite send that ball where it needed to go here goes evo now She's with a full tank of boost, circling around and back, avoids the demo, and makes the save on Evo. But now Gyro trying to force his way through. It's still getting dangerously close to the front. Cheese opted to take that himself. Reynolds had jumped, but Cheese goes past him, only to hit Reynolds downfield, and the shot's gonna flicker just a little bit wide. 
That was scary because all of Dignitas were on zero boost. They fell back to their half, all got 100. And Dignitas try to knock out that door. Now Gyro leading that, and they just seem to want to bully Luminosity out of the way if that's what it takes. Luminosity's defense has just been that good that you gotta remove them by force, it seems. But Dignitas' threat level has been good, but some weaknesses on the defense have been shown, and Luminosity are very quick to punish. Now that backboard being utilized, but no one from Luminosity stepping up to take the shot. The only downside to being here watching this and trying to tell you all the story of this match ourselves is again, listen to the mental breakdown that Spaceman must be having right now throughout this <laughs> overtime. Jeez, gonna lead that forward and a little miscommunication between him and Rettles. So Magic Bear's gotta bail them out. Evo demolished by a returning Rettles. Cheese running free through the middle and Rettles popped that one way high and over and to the opposite side. I think everybody was surprised by that one. And that's why Dignitas wasn't able to clean it clearly. Now it is Rettles back to his own corner and everything can settle down for just a moment. They'll have to do it without Arsenal though. And that does not hinder Dig at all. Magic Bear in a tough uh -oh. spot, can't save it. Jairo wins the game. Oh my God, Luminosity fumbled the bag in the red zone. How does this happen, Magic Bear? Let that go. You can't let EU make montages. Not out of North America. And Dignitas will take it in overtime when Luminosity, they had the demo. They look like they were following the steps that they have showed us in the in regulation. You demo one, get established in the orange half, do a little pass to win your challenges. It, they, they make it look easy. But then Luminosity got the demo. They got step one, and then some missed touches gave Evo the ball, who makes it happen for Dignitas. One goal, three assists, two save, four shots. I'm loving what Evo is doing for his team, especially in overtime. So Dignitas now on match point. Again, the, the saga continues for Evo trying to lead his team back. I know a lot of the attention is on Arsenal. He's the big signing for Dignitas. But Evo had his handprints all over that game and that big comeback effort out of Dignitas. A couple of goals out of Gyro as well. Man, oh man, so many twists and turns in that game alone. Oh, by the way, there's still at least one more game. I think North America has been growing so much. The teams like OG, Pirates on the Boat, Omelette are, are growing at exponential rates. And I think Dignitas were kind of telling me after Regional 2 when losing to teams like that, that they were starting to fall behind the pack. And now that you're on match point against Luminosity, maybe being, maybe if you can pull out a win in this series, I think would be a huge statement for Dignitas to prove that not only are they back here in Swiss, but they are back, back in general, morally. Now you can tell the difference that it makes to be there in person as a demo has already stressed LG and the pressure is on. Well, if you practice like garbage, you're gonna play like garbage. So it's <laughs> very important to have that level of preparation and it's paying off so far for Dignitas. They've gotta finish the job here though in game four. It's Gyro. Oh, that was very favorable, and Rettles read it the whole way. But now Evo pinched that one back in front of the net. Arsenal there trying to get a piece of Magic Bear. The demo on Rettles will certainly hinder Luminosity. So Cheese has to slow this down. He doesn't have any pressure behind him, and he does clear the center line. Can Magic Bear win the challenge? No. It's brought right back in as Arsenal gives Rettles very little time to breathe. Demo on Cheese at the back. Down in front, and nobody's home. Yeah, Arsenal's been going for demos and Gyro needed someone to pass to and Arsenal was still on the same side as him. So Dignitas completely commanded the first minute of the game. They're the only ones putting down some shots. Magic Bear wanted to pinch that into the box. And that was the only signs of life coming out of Luminosity's offense so far. And Dignitas can usually start off with a lead and Luminosity's counterattacks were what was most deadly about them in game one and sort of game two. Now Dignitas are the ones that are really showing themselves on offense and Arsenal guiding this through the right side and Luminosity are all over them, but the challenges are starting to go the way of Dignitas where they're finding those gaps and 
Whether with demos or bombs, Arsenal has a chance. Evil just has to tap it in and she saves. Wow, how does that stay out now? Gyro for Arsenal and that's gonna go a little bit wide. Missed opportunity there for Dignitas, just a victim of circumstance collectively. Just nobody could get the read. Here goes Magic Bear, Rettles trying to run interference. Gyro up very early, made the adjustment. Well done defensively as Dignitas hold the line for now. That's perilously close to the net and Arsenal up to the backboard to meet it. Now Cheese can't force his way through Gyro. He's got around Magic Bear. Only for the moment, though. Great job by Magic Bear, staying with the play, and he's rewarded with an assist. Cheese scores. What else is new? Dignitas has had no boost. Almost every player, I think, was under 25, and getting boost starved, not winning your challenges, and not being able to bring much power or speed to the play to find a way to get out of a defensive clinch like they were in. Luminosity's pressure was just too much. Now they start off with a goal. Now here comes Cheese. Nebo gets a pinch, but it goes out in front of the net. You like that Gyro was there first. Arsenal may be setting up Evo for success, but now Dignitas are all getting mixed up with each other, giving a chance for Luminosity to breathe, plan, and execute. Counter attack opportunities are certainly available for Dignitas. Magic Bear was way, way up. Didn't pay the price for it there. Now Gyro. Good win, that goes over Evo, but he can stay with it. No, he's the decoy as Arsenal runs on. Now Evo will play this, but Cheese is up to meet him. Gyro hard off the backboard, Evo still in front. There's a demo there as Magic Bear is taken out, and Cheese bails out Luminosity big time. Oh, Arsenal intended to hit that top corner and just couldn't put it on target. You're going to kick yourselves, especially after Luminosity's counterattack results in a goal. This is supposed to be a pass. I don't know if it was intended for Evo to stay back a little bit or if the pass just went too strong, but it was picked off and it's a pick six back the other way with a minute 40. Fake kickoff could blow up here in Dignitas's face as Cheese is right there to stop Arsenal. And now they've really got to scramble with 90 seconds left. Even Rettles and Magic Bear getting mixed up. Gives a chance for Dignitas to threaten the net. Magic Bear with a soft touch. Summons the attention of Gyro to try and take a shot. But 50 after 50, LG neutralized the play and want more insurance than the two, but Arsenal robs them, and this drops maybe into the lap of Evo, who has a chance to pop it to Gyro! Beautiful and powerful shot to give Gyro and Friends of Dignitas a chance. Nothing left to desire about this one. Evo, quick reflex to get that out in front. Gyro, right place, right time. Perfectly executed. Gyro's got four in the series. He leads all scorers. Can they finish this, though? Still effort needed to bring it all the way back. Evo, great recovery. Arsenal up ahead. Evo is looking for the midfield boost. It wasn't there for him. And this skips harmlessly across all the way to the opposite side. Gyro trying to make a huge read from the ceiling. That didn't work out, but he got a demo on his way back. Is still inconsequential. Cheese already back in the play, and Evo took him out again. Gyro almost <laughs> clear, but Reynolds with the save. Uh, Luminosity are known to be such that, that organized team, but when you hit them with demos, that can all fall apart, and that's what Dignitas had been relying on. Gyro with the reset off the ceiling. Cheese makes the save, and Luminosity want to get themselves out of this bind, but the threat is still there. Evo escorts it to the right. Arsenal is ready to step up. The challenge going up high to oh. Evo. Gyro involved in the play, but Dignitas just can't seem to hammer this ball at the back of the net for the equalizer. And as the seconds drain by, it's one last chance for Gyro, but because of Magic Bear, it pops up. The ball is still in the air, and Evo can't seem to help this throw, but Gyro another zero, zero second goal overtime ahead. He breaks their precious hearts again. Oh, what a scramble out of Dignitas. They got the demo on Reynolds back at midfield. So he was out of the play. He was still recovering, getting back into it. And then he almost did it on the kickoff. Oh. Follow-up is saved by Reynolds. Oh, Slater on the goal line.
just barely kept Luminosity alive in round one. Dignitas know that they have Luminosity panicked. They gotta keep up this momentum. Here's Gyro slowly up the wall, now pinching it off to the side. Dignitas now have to leave the play. Arsenal was still able to grab the corner boost though, so maybe you can starve Luminosity to kill those chances at a counterattack. But Magic Bear does not care. Evo to the ground as Cheese picks it up and Luminosity need to send us into game five or this is gonna be an early loss and then maybe an unexpected one depending on who you're a fan of for luminosity depending on how this overtime goes arsenal won the race to the midfield boost but he got demolished for his efforts evo had to be quick out for that but then realizes nobody there so he can just leave that but now magic bear forcing this through the corner set up Reynolds can't force game five just yet and cheese sends that out to the corner and Dignitas still have a chance to close this out here in game four. Evo to the skies, Arsenal waiting. Gyro back beyond midfield, had to jump again. Reynolds was chasing him down. Arsenal for Evo, now let him wait too far and Magic Bear's got it. And Magic Bear had issues with the dribble even when Reynolds was clearing the way, chasing bumps. Luminosity, it's a step-by-step -step process, and their offense has been clinical, but Dignitas have the speed and the aggression, but they don't have Arsenal. So Evo and Gyro just trying to slow down the play, and Dignitas have gotten better at that as Evo sends it all the way back to the blue side. Teams can settle back into this little ping pong back and forth, wait for somebody to blink. Maybe Luminosity opens the door. Reddles, slow play, stuffed by Gyro. And it is going to go wide. Cheese can collect that corner boost, and he can go right back to work for LG. Gyro circling back around. He makes the save on Magic Bear's game-winning effort. Now, well, Dignitas Arsenal. Out, no, no, nothing there. <laughs> or is there? Gyro up high, down hard. No, it's set away. Dignitas are making saves, but if you're a Dignitas fan, you got to get your heart checked. The way that they just are letting Luminosity get into spots where they can put shots on target. Yes, the saves are there out of Dignitas, but how long can this hold up with Evo on your side? It's possible. Gyro with the shot. Dignitas take the series. Gyro, Armenian for game. Just like that. He breaks their hearts again and again and again. Gyro and Dignitas take down luminosity in game one or in round one and i can tell you this comes back around in the playoffs gyro is the last guy that luminosity wants to see ever again love to see dignitas in this state what a statement too to make against the i guess number two team uh, coming from the regional two Luminosity were one of the big favorites. Everyone's saying Luminosity, yeah, going to Copenhagen, but Dignitas are trying to sit at the big kids table. There's questions around Dignitas. Could we see them again in form like they were in Regional 1? And I was saying throughout these games that always oh, should just be Luminosity waiting for mistakes out of Dignitas because they haven't shown us very clean play. So all Luminosity had to do was punish that, right? No, it was actually the reverse. It was Luminosity uh, showing these uncharacteristic mistouches where Dignitas were there either with demos or a punish. And that's how Dignitas got away with this. One last look at the old gyro highlight reel. He was exactly where he needed to be. And now where we need to be is back at the desk as we conclude round number one. What a game, what a series, what a way to kick off Friday, Dignitas in peak style. Two buzzer beaters, two overtime <laughs> victories. Brilliant, I mean, I don't know, where, where do you want to start, Daz? I mean, can we, we can start with the Gyro Masterclass. We Woo! can start with Evo's mechanics looking beautiful. I mean, the way he was cutting through Luminosity's defense was spectacular. But man, Dignitas looked so informed. I mean, I, I, of course I had him winning, but I did not expect that fashion. Back to back, zero second goals, and then Ooh. winning an OT, that is a new level of ice.
That was wild. An incredible, incredible series. Now, again, there are eight matches happening. We'd love to keep talking about that one, but we got to talk about the games that are going on right now. Rebellion versus Space Station. Rebellion winning game four, four to one, I believe it was, or it was some close. I didn't see the final score line. Uh, the force game five here. This is the only game going on still uh, for round number one. All the rest of the matches concluding, most of them going the way we expected them to. G2 take down the Muffin Men. G Gen G take down the Snowmen. Both those were sweeps. M80 beats OG 3-1. TSM 3-1's Boulevard. Pirates in the Boat 3-1 NRG. Oof, but Space Station, they're in game five. And this has been panicky. their detriment in Qualifier 2. The reason why they get a G2, why they get Gen Gs, could be down to their game differentials. At times, they always take down these opponents, but they do it in what game fives normally. So right now, it's a very close one. but. The, the, with Rebellion, they were a top four team, Qualifier 1. Then they missed out on Qualifier 2. That was a big, big miss by them. But they're back, and they want to prove that they're one of the best again by taking out Space Station here. They got to do a 10 on the clock, basically. They need to get some pressure. I don't know. It's not looking like it. This is a perfect yeah, spot for SSG. They can just hold this in place, play the 50-50s out. And then just wait for this oh. one to hit the ground. I mean, Elder does not need to touch that. He should just fake it. Yeah. There you go. Puts it down. All right, cool. So Space Station do move forward here. Most of these match, all I just got to say, Gibbs, I think all these matches uh, went exactly as our power rankings would have predicted them to go. So We're, we're geniuses. We're geniuses. We're geniuses. You know, except for Dig and uh, Luminosity. Because that was a big L that, that literally was an upset. Never mind. So, just, just forget yeah. that I said it. Forget. The one on stream is the one that, that we get wrong. Obviously. Chat, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have round two of the Swiss. Don't go anywhere. The RLCS. Be right back.
We continue on after what was a brilliant series. Luminosity versus Dignitas. Definitely the best match of round number one. Luminosity able to thwart. Let's talk about Dignitas. Dignitas, two goals away. Two moments. Two plays away. Just moments. Just just win. Just win in two at the end of two games there. They allowed buzzer beaters and then lost the following overtimes here. We're joined by Stax on the desk. Stax, you were down and in the thick of it. What'd you think? Uh, I thought that uh, they never want to see Gyro again. He had, what, uh, six goals? I don't know if they're sheet in front of me for whatever reason, but yeah. Uh, two of them were the uh, the zero second goals. He was just a huge part of every comeback effort out of Dignitas, whether it was at zero seconds or 200 seconds left in the game. It was just, they couldn't stop him. They didn't have an answer. It, it was very weird, I and mean, Gibbs, we were talking uh, off camera a moment ago. Luminosity went for so many demos, but actually got so few of them. Yeah, it was weird. Like, Reddles, like, he's always playing, like, in front of the ball. He's the like, number one across qualifier one and two for that. But this play, uh, like, Evo, is. A, that's an insane play. Add zero seconds. Like, King Toss, hats off to him. Clutch moments, they pulled it out. But the demo plays by both teams, I felt like, was not amazing. Like, it didn't. Uh, result in a lot of goals that way and then it would just turn into a lot of counter attacks back and forth teams were trying to opt for uh, not a lot of uh, offensive pressure but they just want that one demo to open up th the net and it just really wasn't working for either team so we'll see if they change it up uh, as this goes on throughout the day but really quick uh, looking at this swiss uh, bracket and uh poor squishy it's his last Oof. event and he goes from g2 to luminosity team number one to team number three <laughs> so squishy we're gonna have to see some magicalness out of you one last time to see the way this out. the teams that are reportedly boot camping uh dig m80 rebellion and og uh two of them one and oh two of them own one is there a boot camp okay. buff undecided <laughs> mathematically right now no but we'll see what happens folks it might continue it might continue to evolve these are the matches that'll be happening across the course of round number two these are your lower bracket matches or kind of the, the teams that lost in round one now facing off against each other rebellion versus snowmen luminosity versus muffin men we see og versus young whippersnappers and energy versus boulevard again you can catch all these matches on their individual streams on the upper side of things the teams that won in round one we'll see tsm facing off against pirates on a Boat, baby. We'll see Omelette versus M80. Gen G versus Dignitas. That should be a good match. But the other excellent lineup we got out of round number one G2 versus Space Station. Very strong performances from both these teams. G2, yet to lose in RLCS. Yeah. Will that change here? Space Station, you've done it again. This is the third qualifier in a row that in Swiss. Space Station has to play G2. It's their only loss in Swiss was against G2 in Qualifier 1 and in Qualifier 2, but that was in the 2-0 round. But because they went to five games, they were the only team to do that. They got the lowest seed to go into this 1-0 round. So you're playing against the Kings of North America Space Station. You've done it again to yourselves. Stop going 3-2. It, it, it is crazy that just like the difference between Game 4 and Game 5 can be having to face against the undisputed kings of North America here, Stax. G hashtag G2, hashtag SSG. Let us know who you think is going to win. But I mean, Stax, is there... Space G2 has not lost. Space Station has only lost to G2 and Gen G. Like, what... what can we argue? What is, is there is there an opinion? Is there a, 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 a recipe for Space Station in this one? I don't know. I'm, I'm stumbling to like I mean, try and grasp I mean, something hey, here for them. Chicago, uh, I mean, he had eight goals from 16 shots in the first match. So you, you rely on him. He's the hot hand. He's got to be the one to bury his former team. Can SSG play anybody else, please? <laughs> well, they got to stop. They got to stop going to game five in round one. Apparently, that's 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 the recipe here, folks. We've got G two on the desk. You've got G two in chat. G 2s definitely got themselves on the pitch. But can Space Station? play upset g2 have not lost yet this season space station is going to try and be the first team to do it space station versus g2 for round two all the way rests on space station's shoulders could they be the team that dethrones g2 well it didn't bode well for them uh, last time they met but this is ssg's last chance to qualify for copenhagen and they have more on the on the line that's right, G2 though, trying to go perfect here. 
in major one. We'll see exactly if they can do that here in the last qualifier, but SSG is a tough team and they've been looking pretty solid so far today. I mean, they had a close five game series against Rebellion and because of that, they get G2 now. How will they stand up? Are they gonna be willing to bounce back? We saw a little bit of nerves from Space Station Gaming in that game five. A little bit of time to shake things off, but you gotta keep going. With all the boot camping going on, with Dignitas upsetting LG, it really feels like this could be the regional that can start us off on a different foot. And look at that, Hawks are scoring first. And this Hawks are good read off the ball. Doesn't let give Daniel time to control it. Just goes, shoots, and scores. Space Station Gaming with the first goal. Just got to start off aggressive, maybe. G2 will have a slow day. I just wonder how laid back they're going to be. You know, you've already clinched, but you know how important it is to have a strong seed, to have the best team you could face at LAN. G2 already clinched, but it's SSG that have a fire in them to prove to everyone they deserve to be in the top four, that maybe they could be the team that makes G2 sweat and maybe even lose. And it's a good start for SSG, kind of waiting to see what Daniel is doing. Atomic there first. Another offense for G2 is Daniel down low as LJ couldn't get this far away enough. Now the backboard being utilized and G2 are approaching. Yeah, they're taking the time. But you can tell, yeah, sure, G2 may not have too many nerves in play compared to the other teams fighting for the major spot. But again, taking down this major call three would be historic. No team's been able to do all three events in North America. They could be the first, but they got to stop spaces. You see the infield pass get cut out there. Daniel sets it up to Atomic. Back to Daniel. Daniel gets it. And G2 ties this one up. It's great to see Daniel and Atomic connecting and utilizing the ceiling. A beautiful pass right back to Daniel. And SSG couldn't keep up. And that's why G2 are the undisputed number one team in North America. The mechanics, the synergy, the solo plays. There's really not anything G2 can't do. Yeah, but it's what... can you catch them on a bad day? Exactly. And that's what Space Station are trying to do. Even if they can't, they do want to show that they can compete very close with this G2 roster. Initially, very good start for them, but we have to see how things move. Look here, moving forward, because G2 can start getting some steam. We see Space Station Gaming stuck in the back end. You see Beast Mode testing the ball. Daniel goes. He's a little late to the play, but still ends up making that challenge. And Atomic, another big dive. Chicago's in a tough spot. Has to watch out for Daniel. Tries to get the double, and he's got it to the top left corner. There you go, Dan. <laughs> there you go, Dan able to get up to this ball and even with how slow it is atomic trying to look for bumps maybe chicago trying to dodge that and to keep up with how slow that ball was it's tough and g2 know how to really catch you off guard now up by one last time these two teams met g2 only gave up four goals in four games to space station so see if space station the time between Regional two and regional three will be enough of an improvement. I don't know who's boot camping or who's not. I'm not in the know, but we saw the improvements that Dignitas made and that could equally be said for Space Station. And this is a tone setter of a match of how close can you be to crack the armor of G2? Right, there's been definitely some tape here between Space Station Gaming and G2. So they know how they stand head to head against this roster. And it's gonna be up to them to be able to make the adjustments. With so much pressure on the line, you really have to show up. Daniel trying to get another double. Oh my goodness, Daniel. What a performance. He's got a hat trick. Another double from him. I'm like, oh Daniel's God. the scariest player on the pitch. Just when he has the ball, there is no stopping him. You have your backs against the wall at Space Station. When he slows it down like that, it's you have to have the perfect jump on it. Three goals, like you said. Four shots, one save. Daniel is on fire with almost a 500 score and his teammates supporting him at less than 200. This is the Daniel show coming out of G2. Only up three to one though and still two minutes left, but it's been a relentless G2 offense. Atomic even utilizing that reset. Has SSG jumping, has SSG panicking. Well, that's a good clear at a Hawkser and maybe not just that, Chicago wanting to redirect but still trying to hold on to the ball for SSG. And you're going up once again and there has to be a little bit of uh, shakiness when you see Dale on the solo. Those past couple of goals really show okay he's on right now. Good game one from G2. 
They have everything they need. Space Station game after four Ooh. seasons. There's Chicago, good shot. Beast Mode able to make the save. No one there for the follow-up. Chicago even gets demo here for its efforts. It's gonna be tough here for LJ. Tries to slow things down. Chicago sitting there in the midfield. He just picked up that mid left on his side. Now he's able to get some control. Look at that early challenge from Daniel. And he wins it. Just those are so big because again, slows down that offense from Space Station Gaming, forces them to take it from the back end, and it gives Beast Mode an atomic time to get set up. Oh, that's a close Ooh. one. No one in the net. Chicago will get the goal, bringing the deficit down to one. And G2 have been so good at reading the spar. Beast Mode kind of collides into Daniel, pushes LJ out of the way, but what about the rest of SSG? Everyone attacking the net. SSG keep themselves within one. And G2, though, the lead is still in their favor with 50 seconds left. LJ, Chicago leading that. Atomic breaking Chicago? up the play. And wow, that was so close to hitting the cross. Two demos go in the way of SSG. They have the manpower. They're working on having the ball, too. Hawks are can't get the double, and the defense from G2 holds on. Yeah, good work here for Space Station Gaming. They're putting themselves with a chance. Oh, my goodness, what a block there from Atomic. Almost able to work here too, but they're keeping this in the blue half. G2 are starting to scramble. They're low on boost. They can't keep the ball close. If you're passing, LJ get there, he can, but he can't put it on target. Beast Mode plays this off the wall. Chicago has to reposition. Daniel with that light touch is gonna buy the team a little bit of time. Final 10 seconds. SSG gotta go. Here's LJ, keeps this one up. Is Chicago gonna go? No, he backflipped there on the back end. Final few seconds now. Ball is gonna hit the ground, and G2 survive in game one. Especially Atomic getting that bump on an SSG player uh, right as they were trying to maybe keep the ball up and you were in the blue half. It looked possible for SSG and after nine shots coming out of SSG, like G2's defense is just as good as their offense. There was maybe what, like one double commit that we may have, might have saw to G2 and SSG, they had some very powerful shots, even some passes that looked very threatening, but their position, they're placed right in the middle of the net. G2 have the reads, you're gonna have to hustle more than that to break G2. I mean, biggest thing out of Space Station Gaming is, again, you said it initially, that field positioning is really good. On their second goal they scored, LJ had a nice light touch that threw off all of G2. If they can continue to get that aggressiveness and keep the ball really on that blue half, that consistent offensive pressure, then you start seeing them be able to open things up. Now, G2's defense is great. People said it last time they played, they only allowed four goals against Space Station. Uh, or allowed Space Station four goals. This time, Space Station already having two in game one, and they started off with the lead here in this game. And you can tell Space Station Gaming has been making adjustments, but G2 still are able to get so much through offensively. We got to see a little bit of things cleaned up here for Space Station Gaming on the defensive side. They can't allow so many goals from G2, especially knowing how strong their defense is. We'll see if they can change the narrative here going into game two. Maybe SSG can find a way to shut down Dan Daniel because he seems to be the problem with that hat trick and it's been, what, two out of three of them at least were solo plays, so got to be able to keep up with G2 when they slow down the ball, when they pick it back up. Here's Beast Mode, zero boost, wanting to escort this. Daniel retreating from the play, Atomic calling him off, and with that demo, G2 back in control with the flip reset too, not getting the bump on the Hawks, or, but still, threat level is there. Now SSG with some room to breathe, hope to counterattack, but it was really all just a trap. G2 send them right back to the orange half. Yeah, they're, they're in a really good spot here. Daniel's looking for some bumps off ball. SSG, you can see the boost totals. They're trying to make things work as they move upfield. Even though Beast Mode can't make contact with that, Atomic's there. They play this one really close and low, not trying to give away a free shot. That way, Beast Mode, who was initially a little uncomfortable after his initial challenge, gets time to recover. Oh, that was risky from Daniel to bring it by the net, but he's able to make the save out. Hawks are trying to keep this one alive. Instead, won't make contact, but Chicago gets a really free ball. Leaves it for LJ. Daniel reads that out, though. Good block on the play. A little bit of scrambling there from G2, but they hold on. Pressure is there from SSG, and you even saw maybe some cracks in that G2 armor, but still no goal from SSG despite all of that effort. Now Beast Mode off the ceiling, and Atomic thought that was for him, and Chicago just breaks up that play. Now you have a chance for SSG to counterattack in this moment, and Hawks are going to leave that ball to LJ. Beast Mode's ready on the wall. Atomic's already pre-jumping, and all of G2 have great coverage on their net, and they manage to steal possession. Mm. 
I was a little little concerned there for SSG. Daniel with that free ball off the sidewall. Not able to put it on target though. And now Daniel last back here on the play. Just gets a nice light touch, keeps it close. Tried to get the bump, but good patience there from Chicago. Still though, with his pop, it's only gonna force Space Station Gaming to go back. Beast Mode was so quick on the ball and SSG, the rest of them were a little too far away from the play. Oxer's gonna get a nice touch to send his downfield, but again, right to Daniel's control. And he immediately pitches off the ceiling, sending SSG back to their own half. SSG are not leaving G2 too much to work with up until that moment. Hawks are forced to make the save in the previous play, though. It was the bounces being denied there from the backboard, the back wall. SSG been defending themselves well and going for the saves if they have to. G2 haven't looked uncomfortable defensively yet. We go into the second half now, 0-0. Zero, zero with Hawkster, just making sure Beast Mode won't touch this ball, and LJ didn't really have it, so Beast Mode robs him and almost taps it home. Daniel's up and above, has Atomic below him, but loses the ball to Hawkster, who almost gets it away. And SSG clear, not only that, LJ had a reset to work with, forcing the oh, save by the man. G2. Yeah, Chicago's able to get a better touch on that. They keep the offense going. Now it's hit to their own side. And I mean, this one is so close. Everybody's been playing really solid individually. I mean, the biggest thing is just controlling the ball a little bit more sometimes. Maybe it's just from a lack of boost or also just kind of a little bit of panic touches. You're seeing players just throw the ball away a little bit more where honestly, if they just take it, keep it close to them, it changes how the entire offense works. You see a whip there from Chicago, turns into a pass play, put the shot on, but Atomic was there. There's always someone in the net for G2 ready to make a save and even Hawks are tipping it towards the net doesn't shake up the G2 defense. G2 will never overcommit or have that third player be too far forward. No matter what happens, G2 like to play safe and even with these incredible passes coming out of SSG, they still haven't been able to score. And this is, I mean, an opponent that everyone is having issues scoring against. But now we enter the last minute of play. Will it be G2 going to match point? Will it be overtime or SSG oh, no tying way. things up? And wow, this goes to the end. And Daniel scores again. SSG starts to spread out here a little bit. You see LJ move up field, full trust in Hoxer. But Daniel gets the challenge, gets the big dunk, puts G2 up in front. 51 seconds on the clock now. And Space Station Gaming under the timer. Oh, SSG fumbling at the last minute. But the counterattacks, will they be able to find that gap? We saw even Dignitas and, and our last series have to utilize demos when you are going up against just a superb defense. But SSG haven't been able to be that physical. Their true magic comes on how they're able to pass between each other. This is dangerous for LJ, especially Beast Mode above him. Atomic goes for the dunk. It's on the cross. And Daniel cleans it up. That's really tough to see from LJ. He had 41 boost there. Tried to get the flick over. Doesn't go his way. Challenge goes the way of G2. Now, big lead for them. Up two goals with 24 seconds left. If you know G2, this is basically a lock. Yeah, it says she were really trying to commit just to find that equalizer and now things seem out of hand daniel has been the star in this series with the hat trick in game one two in game two but g2 have been relentless and space station didn't put up as many shots as they did in game one here they only have three and have been forced to make so many saves oh this goes all the way and daniel gets another hat trick but look at how he does it he says thanks for the assist Beautiful double there off the sidewall and in. I tell you, Daniel is a menace. G2 stride up 2-0. Daniel back-to-back -back hat tricks. You have to pay attention to this moving forward. Ooh. Daniel is worth every penny on that contract. I don't know what he gets paid, but when you get two hat tricks in the first two games of Swiss, it's a great start out of G2. And that's been the story. Yes, they're clinched. How laid back are they for Copenhagen? Not really laid back at all after that shutout against SSG. And you were wondering, is SSG going to be the team that could shake up G2? How many games could they take off of them? Could they even upset them? Because we, we seem to be an upset central after our first match of the day. But so far uh space station not able to generate the 
just find the gap. Yeah. It's not even the threat level because the passes have been nice from Space Station, but GT's always there. Yeah, it's it, you know, the biggest thing too when you look at this is SSG had those three shots really early on in this game. Once G2 got on, they kept Space Station out the back half. They eliminated their shot opportunities. And of course, we talk about Daniel, but he's not alone. You see Beast Mode and Atomical to assist there. You have Daniel shooting 50% here, which is great, but everybody on G2 doing their part. And, and I mean, we thought we would see adjustments from SSG, but it just feels like G2 realized everything they need to do. Big shutout here. We go into game three and Space Station have to stop a uh, chance here. Uh, for at least in terms of Swiss results, they don't want to get swept here. So we'll see exactly what they have cooked up. And even with these passes, SSG can't seem to score. And the fundamentals are there. But G2's defense, I thought it was there again. Daniel jumped in net, but Chicago scores. This is good on Chicago. He ends up taking the corner. Beautiful pass from Hoxer. Hoxer gives it to him, and he makes it work all the way. 74 MPH on that. Lots of speed. Chicago gets one. SSG in front. We've seen them in front before. They've got to maintain this time. And to give a cookie, at least, to SSG in the last game, G2 only really started scoring in the last minute or two. And SSG were able to maintain that stalemate for so long. And that comes from having a solid enough defense, especially against a team like G2, especially against Daniel, who's, I guess, peaking today in Swiss. Beast Mode moves LJ out of the way. Atomic wanted the oh. pass. He got a double commit out of SSG. The pass is on the floor, and Atomic ties. Yeah, this one, I mean, you see Chicago, he's in a real tough spot. Doesn't make contact with the ball there to get the clearance. And it looks like a disaster on the back end. Atomic is able to clean it up. Tied up game, lots of time to go though. But at least the, there's potential out of SSG when the passes, they're gonna keep trying for it, but now just trying to do it faster to see if you can really catch G2 on rotations. Yeah. And you gotta play perfectly against G2 to win against them, obviously. Yeah, and, and it's tough because Space Station Gaming isn't necessarily playing really bad Rocket League. Like, they've been keeping this particularly close. I mean, look at that from LJ. What a way to take the lead there. He grabs this one off the assist from Hoxer. Look at this great pass out. That takes out two. Daniel lies back. He's trying to get a read, but LJ slams it home. Beautiful individual performance to bring SSG back in the lead. It's SSG pulling out all the stops against G2, and their execution has been way better in this game three, but when it's match point against G2, we'll see if it's too little or too late. We've seen crazier things happen, but G2 have had SSG's number for a while. Daniel with the demo has SSG on the back foot. Atomic wins that. Beast Mode grabs the corner boost, and you were hoping to get SSG stuck, but it's LJ with the punish. This one, I mean, good clear out from Chicago. LJ of field. We've seen them try this a couple of times. This one, it works out. Great passing in transition. And here we go. Space Station gave me starting to roll. I was trying to say earlier that, you know, SSG mostly in the, in the middle of the field. They play very close here against G2. The first couple of games, I mean, game two definitely got away from them. But game one, going into game two, fairly solid, good challenges in the midfield, able to dodge a lot. And that's a great save from Chicago off the shot for Beast Mode. It's not like it's a big gap here. SSG can close it. They got the lead right now, but it's a lot of time left for G2 to bounce back. Well, G2 have been doing the same thing on a few offensive plays now. Hawks oh. and Chicago connect from down low. Insane, four to one now for SSG. And they're starting to get on a roll. Look at Chicago, lower corner slot. Daniel didn't think he could place it there. Chicago, great placement. SSG now big lead here, four to one on match point. Oh, don't let it go away off the kickoff though. Oh, Beast Mode picks <laughs> it back up. Okay, hold on now. It's a, oh yeah, just. It's a good kickoff. That's a good kickoff. <laughs> that's sometimes everything. all you need. That's sometimes that's all you need. A good kickoff. So pay attention to this one and the rest of them moving forward. 2:48 now on the clock. 
Good kill. Hoxer, great initial challenge. This one goes to Beast Mode, though. He has 100 boost. Atomic's looking for a bump on Chicago. Does get the bump. Beast Mode tried to play alone. Good challenge there from LJ to keep it in, but still pressure here. That one goes to Beast Mode. He tries to get a challenge there. He had Atomic in play, but even there, LJ. Not able to get that one, and SSG keeps this in the midfield for the time being, but they were definitely under a lot of pressure there from the jump. What I love out of SSG right now is their counterattacks. They survived the G2 offense, and they're quick to transition downfield, forcing Daniel or maybe Beast Mode to make kind of a panic, quick reaction save in the net, and sometimes that's enough of a gap for SSG to place this in the perfect spot, so they've really found the recipe for success, it seems, in this game. As G2 have started to replicate that offense of taking the ball high, dropping it off to a teammate, going for a bump. SSG are starting to figure that out, and they're having a more layered tiered defense because of that. And that's what's resulting in more saves out of SSG. And they also have, with all that you said, that ability to pass out in transition, which means you have to keep G2, a team that will have a lot of players in your own half. They have to start watching out behind them now. Oh my goodness, Chicago, wow. ground pinch, hold on. He's got a hat trick. What a play from Chicago. Takes this one off the ceiling and then boom, pinch in your net. Yeah, I knew Daniel was going for the challenge and used the pinch to just get the ball away quickly and with power. Chicago's placement too when he does receive the ball has been beautiful. Oh. This is why SSG are up. <laughs> it's now the weird kickoff there. <laughs> Everybody faked each other out for a little bit. You saw Beast Mode even stop and said, whoa, what's going on here? He is on the ball now. Chicago with a pre-jump, but Beast Mode takes it low. Still keeps this one in front. Time here for G2, but they've got to get it moving. Daniel, oh, almost able to get that one in. But SSG have everything they need. They've got to survive, though. You see G2 lurking, still looming. They have not given up on this game yet. Let's get that Atomic picked up the ball because, man, G2 are just so committed to try and catch up in the score. Both playing off the backboard, and here comes Beast Mode showing up with the open shot. Uh, man, Beast Mode he ends up picking up the mid. He beat out LJ to that mid. Atomic, great pass. Mode there to slot it home. And face you should have to be careful. It's a big lead. You don't want to throw this away. You have everything you need to submit the game. You just have to hold off against that G2 pressure, which is... To be honest, yes, it is very hard to stop, but <laughs> the three team that can do it, SSG have the ability. LJ, nice play off the backboard there, but G2, they know time is not on their side. Less than 40 seconds. Atomic tips it over to no Beast way. Mode. No way. Placing the same, but the rebound is fouled by Daniel. And G2, they're coming back. Are they going to drop this? No, surely not. I mean, that's a good touch for Beast Mode, though, because he gets two out. You saw the double commit there. A little bit of pain on that back line and then daniel had a free clean shot he's not gonna miss that 34 seconds here i'm starting to get a little concerned here for space station gaming yeah when you're up five to two you cannot this would be a monumental oh fumble but it's off the cross stress ensues in the ssg camp and the first one on the ball is daniel the one with two hat tricks atomic making hawks are uncomfortable in the net but lj has been so good at clearing this has ball zero. for ssg and the counter attack starts and lj with the uh, Force gonna save out of beast mode. Couple more seconds left. SSG just gotta stop this last offense. And LJ does so at the last second. The ball still has to land on the ground though. It Mo? goes to beast mode and wins that. They needed the second touch. Hawks are puts it off to the side. Oh my goodness. And LJ is still riding off the wall. How? G2 still have a chance, but they gotta catch this from Hawkser and they can't. SSG take a game. That was so too close. I'm yeah. sorry, that, that, was, that was too close for me. Because G2 had that. And then I, I think, it, honestly, if Daniel had boost on that midfield play where he turned off, that could have been thing, things changing in the completely opposite area. They had momentum, and that is kind of what concerned me towards the end of there. But SSG, you got to give it to them. They take the win. Five to four score line. That's, I, I don't know if G2's ever allowed that many goals in a game so far this season, but yeah. definitely very impressive for Space Station Gaming. Now it's just about continuing to keep up that pace because they started to let go towards the end and you started to see G2 ramp up. Fresh five minutes on the clock if they want to try to reverse sweep. But man, G2 still able to output such good offense. And 
SSG weren't at the forefront of our minds when it comes to teams, uh, at least at the top of the list of teams that could upset G2. And really, Space Station haven't been able to score more than, I think, two goals in a game against G2, uh, thinking about their last match in Regional 2. So the fact that Space Station have really found that recipe of counterattacks, make them quick, use the passes, and don't let G2 time to establish themselves on their half. Five is the most they've given up this season. So this is definitely big here for Space Station Gaming. But again, fresh five. We'll see how things go. I mean, already a great start here for G2. Keeping the ball there on the orange half. You see Daniel sends this to midfield. Good cut though from LJ. Forces Atomic to play this from his own back wall. How is Space Station Gaming going to continue to keep up at that pace? They did catch G2 in, some, in a couple of tough spots. But also, G2 now have a chance to reset, and you see Atomic testing that back wall. Good for Chicago to be there. Oh, it's only LJ with boost, though, and they need to have control of that. Now Hawks are back to full. We'll be able to step up and help LJ, and at least he fights for corner control. G2 won't make it easy. And with this ball going awry, it's beast mode there first, but G2 can't really get that ball rolling oh. beyond just a touch in the midfield. And that was maybe a chance for Oxer. That, was, that could have been just a little bit far forward, so it couldn't really get a good touch on that. But still, you start to see the vision. SSG are starting to create a little lapses here and really force G2 to step up defensively. SSG hoping for the reverse sweep. They need to go far in, in this regional in order to qualify. And G2, whatever happens here, it'll just be a lesson or just another match to celebrate. As Daniel races to the right side and Beast Mode almost bumping LJ. I don't think he was successful. So LJ managed to get a few touches on the ball, but can't really do much to use that back wall width and have a teammate to pass to. And really the the secret to SSG has been the passes. That's how they've been able to score the most against G2, especially in that game three. But as long as you just don't let Daniel have the ball, because he's been the true threat out of G2 as well. That was a great beat from Chicago. He was facing away from the ball and really angled his car. Good use of the air roll there to get that beat on the challenge. He gave Space Station a lot of time. Oh my goodness, a laser of a shot though. What a save from Hoxer. Beautiful reaction time. Daniel wanted to get the musty, but couldn't. Now it's all 50s. Hawks are looking for the lead block. Atomic dodges it, so he's going to be able to get a 50, slowing down the offense. LJ was last back, but he got a 50 off of Beast Mode and Atomic that worked in his favor. Another one, but this time this one goes the opposite direction. Straight to Chicago, though. Hawks was up really quick to get that away from Beast Mode. SSG have to be careful not to send too many resources forward. Could lead to a counterattack the other way as LJ is trying to hold back G2. Well, G2 were able to deal with all that bullying really well when SSG were looking for bumps, demos, whatever it is. G2 own their space. And it's another stalemate situation with no goals into the second half. But Beast Mode looking for the redirect, not able to get it. Chicago up first. Some real estate to be built here from SSG. But with Beast Mode and the, really the mechanics out of G2, you're just always going to be in a panic state if you're on a defense against a team like G2. Good saves coming out of SSG, but these counterattacks haven't been coming with a lot of momentum compared to how SSG played in game three. G2 have already adapted and know how to slow down SSG. You're right. They've only had a single shot this game. Meanwhile, G2, they've had four, but even then their offensive output has been a little slower just due to a lot of good challenges in the midfield. This though, a lot of free space in the midfield. Chicago gets a, his third save off the back end, gets demoed, but LJ will keep this and go play it into the corner. We've seen this happen a few times where the ball does get to the respective back walls of both teams, but they can't turn it into a shot. Defense has been very solid. That were almost a good chance. Hawks are able to read the miss there from Atomic. Buying some time, but the net is seemingly open. Chicago had to dodge a demo. Atomic played the bump from Daniel, but Daniel unable to make contact. Final minute here. SSG still one shot from their name. They've got to increase their offensive output here as the game is starting to close out. And last time we had a stalemate oh. like this. Oh, that's Daniel. Able to read that off the backboard. No one home to save. And I was, this actually connects with my point of the last time we've been in a 0-0 stalemate, it was G2 that began the avalanche in the last minute of scoring, what, three goals? And SSG fumbled right at the end. 
but 45 seconds, still a lot of time for SSG to work with, but with how kind of, I don't, I can't find a nice word for the offense, but with one shot this entire game, it's not looking good for SSG to do something about this. Yeah, the, out, the output isn't there. They haven't been able to generate the chances. How will they generate chances that on a drought like this with no time to go is going to be the big question here. Final 20 seconds. Space Station Gaming have to go. Otherwise, G2 will move on around three. Well, Chicago got a hat trick before, and he just escorts it down, bumps Daniel, but there was no one behind him to really pick it up. Hawkser is trying his best. LJ steps up, but Beast Mode winning that 50. It's feeling pretty over. Now we're in the orange half, and SSG got across oceans to get there, but Chicago has the boost to work with. LJ keeps it popped up, and SSG have no boost to work with. G2 will sweep. They didn't sweep. They won it for it. Three, four. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> not, not a clean sweep. Three, well, my bad. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I totally, totally forgot about that. I mean, there was a lot of goals that game. It's easy to get that one mixed up. Yeah, but, my bad. But yeah, four, uh, three, one. Yeah, it's still. Series. Yeah, three, one series score. G2 still looked very clean and comfortable. Space Station Gaming, though, did show that they have the ability to be able to win games on a large margin. But that output is not consistent enough to go over the course of an entire series and we ended up seeing it there g2 stride stride forward into round three uppers we'll see who they play up next but definitely a good showing out of them especially daniel daniel keeps playing on that level g2 is going to be a force to be reckoned with for the rest of this qualifier yeah, I was wondering like how laid back G2 would be when they're already qualified. Do they, you know, respect SSG enough to play at their peak? But G2 are always peaking. There really isn't mistakes to be shown, nothing to really be punished. And it was SSG that had to do these quick counterattacks to really catch G2 lacking on a rotational front. But with these mobile one high performance replays, SSG had one that nice game. In game three, of course, the one I forgot about was the one that SSG showed us that they know how to perform. But it's only one game that SSG are able to take, both in this time and in regional two. But let's go check in with the desk to see what they think. G2. G2, pretty clean work here on Space Station. It's it, either a budget sweep or a gentleman sweep. We're not, it, 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 depending on how you fall on that interpretation there. We got a bunch of other crazy games happening. A lot of 3-0s. There were a lot of genuine sweeps across round two here. Omelet sweeping M80, 3-0. TSM sweeping the Pirates on a Boat. Uh, Luminosity was able to sweep the Muffin Men. L's in chat there. And OG sweeping Young Whippersnappers. The other matches still ongoing, though. Interesting. I feel like, well, obviously, we got to talk about Omelet versus M80. Like, Omelet didn't even make Qualifier 1. Qualifier 2, they had to go through the lower bracket of death through Day 2. Now they finally found that form and they're competing again. They were supposed to be a top 10 to 12 team, but then everyone kind of forgot about them because of what has been going on. But battling back, they take down M80, and that is M80's first loss on a Friday. They've 3 0 both other times. So that means M80, congratulations. You are going to win Qualifier 3. Going to go through that bracket of 3 right. and 1 and make it right on through. They've broken the curse. So congrats to them. But that's huge for Omelette. And we haven't really talked about them in the point conversation. But anything can happen. If you become a top two seed and get a 3 0, yeah. then you can make it to a grand finals and maybe sneak into a top four spot. So congrats to them so far. And then TSM as well. Yep. That's a big bounce back versus Pirates on a Boat. Pirates on a Boat does not lose to teams below them ever. And TSM takes them down. I've got, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm also watching uh, Genji versus Dignitas. They are currently in overtime uh, in game four. No, yes, game four. Dignitas leads the series two to one. If they Dignitas were to is win in this overtime? Game, no. Dignitas in overtime, folks. Strap in. It might be three years till we see the end of it here. But uh, G2 versus <laughs> Space Station was more or less what we expected here. Um... We were hoping Space Station would put up a better fight. It, like, we saw Daniel just pop off like games one and two, and honestly just hitting nutty shots like that. He was the MVP of Qualifier 2, and he's kind of just doing the same thing again. Daniel looks fantastic. Space Station did fight back game three. They almost gave it up, um, but they do pull off that win. There was some questionable defense towards the back half of that game, 
But again, it's a 3-1 versus G2. This is now the third time in a row. Space Station, let's see what they got for the rest of the Swiss. They normally beat everyone else, but don't face Gen G in the bracket, hopefully. Right? I, no. like, well, I, don't, I, mean, know. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, apparently Gen G is weak right now. I'm, I'm still watching. There's still one half up. Oh, okay, Gen G, Gen G scores. So they do force. <laughs> They do force game five. They do force game five. So we will be okay, able, okay. They, we might get to watch that one. There's a few matches uh, ongoing again. Uh, I believe NRG Boulevard is still going. Let's see where they're at. Yeah, I was gonna uh, I was gonna talk about all these teams that are boot camping, what the records are, and like they're all still playing. So I don't actually have numbers other than <laughs> M80 lost this round and uh, Rebellion. No, Rebellion's still going. So OG won. We'll see. That is that is questionable for like m80 who's been so good in swiss and then they boot camp and then they lose it just seems odd but you know that's rock strange for you. strange there's gonna right? be some they, weird they results their mojo right? <laughs> yeah they were so good away from each other like, 10 seconds left. don't bother me 10 seconds left boulevard just scored their fourth goal of game five they're up 4-1 on nrg they are going to wow. beat nrg here congratulations welcome to the show boulevard um, also, to all the people in chat going, where's Jorby? We want Jorby to cast. He's literally at twitch.tv slash Dignitas casting his butt off. Go watch him. Watch him and Turtle. <laughs> They're having a great time. It's a great show over there. They're going into game five. High key recommend you enjoy this, their show. This could, with the energy loss, I yeah, think there's I a road say it. where Garrett G could knock out Squishy Muffins for the third qualifier. My heart can't take it, this. it might not happen. I have oh, to imagine, uh, calculate a couple of things, but it's possible that we might get that to end his career. Garrett G taking out Squishy. That'd be rough. But Gen G, Dignitas, here we go. Game five. Dignitas, honestly, it wasn't great that last match that they had versus LG. It, they had big moments. They scored some clutch goals. But overall, it felt like the quality of that match wasn't that great. But going mm -hmm. up against Gen G, your number two team in NA, who's been number two relatively comfortable, um, to bring them to a game five. Season. It was big, big, big games there. And now into another game five here. Team Toss versus Gen G. How did it go? I, mean, I, I love that, that, that. This would be such a big game. Dintas able to take down Luminosity and then Gen G to be 2-0 in Swiss. Who are the teams oh. they're competing with for one of those last three spots now that, you know, of course, G2 is clinched. Yeah. Another update real fast. Uh, game five, Snowman Shopify. Snowman leading 2-1 to one with five seconds remaining as it's counting down here. Those are reverse sweeps, both Snowman and Boulevard. Oh, and if Snowman win, um, almost, no, no, then I think energy will avoid muffins, so. Okay, the snowmen have won. The game is now officially over. Okay, okay. Crazy, crazy. We've got to finally get some upsets here. Uh, Gen G, gonna try and keep another one from happening here. So I have a question for you guys of the team philosophy of Gen G, right? Okay. You've done two qualifiers, clearly number two team in North America. But when you built this roster, it was meant to be the number one team in NA and to c compete versus the world. Do you try and change your game plan going into Qualifier 3? Or do you wait before the major? Or do you just try and hone with what you already uh, have been working on? Because it hasn't been working. So do you change it? Do you practice it more? Do you... Do you wait to change it until the major? I think that's a question for Genji right now of like how they want to go about their practice of regiment, knowing that very likely they're in to the major. And if they win this game, they will be in because they will get two wins in Swiss, so they will clinch go yeah. the But I just wonder, because of how far behind they are of G2, do they begin to start changing how they play? Because maybe they move first killer around a bit. Like he's been very aggressive, qualifier one and two, and it just hasn't panned off like against like the really good teams uh, like a cheese so do you change that or do you continue working on that same approach i mean i, I think you, yeah I, I think you go with what's got you here so far i mean the teams they're losing to are g2 and swiss m80 they lose to dignitas that might be having like the best series or the best day of its entire season then i, I think you kind of chalk that up to okay well you know that's especially North American Rocket League team just had their day. I, I don't think that 
it's time to press the panic button at all for Gen G yet at all. I, I think that they're still very comfortably the second best team in North America. And uh, I think that when this event is all said and done, uh, then you start experimenting. You're going to have, well, yeah, you're going to have a lot of proof that they're fine. They're not a team that needs to change much at all. By the way, they're absolutely. <laughs> so then yeah. tomorrow when we look back at this matchup, it's going to be, oh, well, they went to game five of Dignitas, but they won. That's fair, but I feel like the problem is with Genji. Like, they want to be the best in the world, right? That has to be the goal by picking up first. Right? You're the number one team in North America. You pick up the North America uh, MVP. Like, nothing other than being best in the world is what they want, right? And if they're yeah. behind G2, do you take this qualifier as more of an experimentation time to see what can work to bring to a major? I mean, I think their biggest their biggest disadvantage at being best in the world oh, is just God, not, being, <laughs> not being French at all. Um, fair, fair. And that, 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 that's the first problem to work on for the world. But when it comes to, like, yeah, obviously you got to be the best in your region before you even are a contention for uh, best on the planet. And I, don't, I think that this is less of a problem of their... Like there was there was so much speculation about the stock of like Daniel and Beast mode, especially when it came to like land performances. Were they going to fall off? It happens to players all the time, especially players that are extremely hyped um, before they come into the scene. That like they will have like a either like a little honeymoon phase or and then and then cool way off. I think there was a lot of questions about like is this is Daniel and Beast mode going to be the second coming of G two? Um, where first killer has just been so tried and true for so many seasons, everyone's like, "Yep, yeah, this is this will we're, we're confident this will work." And then, my goodness, is what G2 has dis what has found in that roster has I think surpassed everybody, even their own expectations. So I don't th I, I feel like Gen G's spot is less their plan not working and G2's uh, roster pickups just, just being dominance. yeah, just being the greatest roster move in the history of North America. So. Yeah, it's fair. It's just, but like, how do you catch them, right? I guess. Yep. Is, I don't know. Is I don't know what the answer is. Then that. that question, right? Because like, we know that like apparently Jack is not going to be like happy with number two in North America. That's for sure. You know, like no one's going to be. Um, so it's uh, like it's going to be interesting to see if they try and change it up a bit. Because I think like even if they did experiment, they would have got their two wins in Swiss very, very likely, which they will do now. So they will clinch Copenhagen. So congrats to Gen G. But now the question becomes, do you try and figure out something new to bring to the major, to bring to that Yeah, yeah spe especially once, like, G2 is no longer the, like, only threat in front of you. I think for all of the North American yeah. teams, especially teams that have the caliber of players that Gen G has here stacks, like adopting the kind of aerial air raid offense that we're seeing being so prominent in Europe and kind of getting away from the, the demo ground meta of North America. Is, is something all the teams need to at least be figuring out a good counter for if they're not going to literally just employ themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, I've always believed that in, in Rocket League, as great as a good defense can be, a better offense just is unguardable. And if you've got the mechanical prowess of the tandem of Beast Mode and Daniel, and oh, by the way, Atomic has been one of the most consistent players of the open era, like, you've just got a superstar roster, and you can punish other defenses that just aren't up to par. That's what G2 is doing, and Gen G is capable of that with Chronic, First Killer, and Apjack. I mean, they, they were forced to Game 5 by a rally in Dignitas, but that was a mild annihilation we just watched in Game 5. Oh. Gen G improved it 2-0, oh, folks. Round 3 of the Swiss is coming up after the break.
round three of the Swiss is set. The matches are in. The players are loading onto the pitch, and we will begin playing Rocket League here momentarily. G2 made pretty quick work of Space Station in round two. They have yet to drop a series in the RLCS, and we'll see if that continues here. Can they get out 3-0? We will not be watching that match on stream, though. G2 versus Gen G going to be an excellent game. You're going to want to go and check that one out on their individual broadcast. Here, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane, paying honor to one of the greatest to ever do it, and we're going to watch it as long as it takes, as long <laughs> as we can here. We've got the Muffin Men on the pitch here. Squishy going to be on the broadcast. Hopefully not for last time. Hopefully we see him tomorrow. We'll see here again. Yeah, so he announced earlier the split, like right before the split began, like, hey, uh, this is it for me. I'm going to play this one split out uh, with my boys and then call it quits. A prolific career. It's been to a million lands. He's a five-time land winner. He just like, he's just been a beast. Like he's one of the best players to ever do it. And this might be his last match. And on top of that, he's going up against one of his best friends in the scene with Justin against Shopify Rebellion. The Rocket League got, the gods were not kind to your wave at all. Too squishy, but no, no. I think everyone's gonna be pulling for him for this match. And hopefully that reverse sweep through the Swiss. Am I correct? Is Lachinio Canadian? Yes, he is. OK, so there are two Canadians who have won the world championship then. Yes, or is he? Well, yes, well, I was going to say yeah. Jane Naps, but sorry, G2 fans. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. Tried. Tried. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yes, but on top, though, we do have G2 versus Gen G. That is an absolute huge match up there. We'll see how th that one plays out. Top of that omelet versus TSM. That also is huge for the bracket. One of those teams is going to be a top two seed. So they got to pull against one another. That is great. We talked about it. The tiebreakers needed. TSM needs a top four to make tiebreakers even more likely. TSM could come out of this, the number two seed going into the bracket, making it very likely that they could finish top four. So that match is absolutely huge. And then we have a bunch of those one-on-one -on -one matches as well coming up with. Our, I, feel, I feel like we're, we're still kind of on pace for that possible six team tied bracket folks we'll keep you updated on awesome. how that one goes as we move forward again more matches happening the uppers we're going to leave those ones alone for now again check those out on the other streams we got NRG taking on young whippersnappers we got m80 taking on luminosity as well that one should be a great match to watch see if m80 can bounce back um and the space station will be taking on og as well but we're going to be focusing on rebellion versus muffin men garrett g knocked squishy out of the last two events today captain america has handed the mantle the shield to the falcon and said you got to take care of old man grandpa squishy this time around it's squishy versus justin for a round three elimination match one of these teams going home right now wow and if uh, rebellion goes home their major hopes are over if muffin men go home their major hopes are over because they still have a shot um but this one is just, it's just going to be tough to watch because, you know, it's Squishy versus <laughs> like his best friend in the scene, Justin. And it's like, oh, to see that, like either way, both are going to be feeling terrible about this. But Lemon, this should yeah. be a good one. We're hoping for at least game five. Yeah, um, it's, you know, you go from NRG to GG at this point. I, I think Muffin Men have a good matchup here. Shopify aren't looking the best. They didn't qualify for Regional 2 Swiss. They narrowly made playoffs in Regional 1. Honestly, Shopify are a team that I had higher hopes for, for, you know, the talent that they have on paper. But even just getting to this Swiss, uh, Shopify got swept by Pirates on a Boat in that double limb bracket. So, yeah, they're here, but I wouldn't say it's on a high note. So there's there's a chance for Muffin Men to pull, pull through here. It's possible, but you can see the boot camp buff so far hasn't been working for the Rebellion there Boys. And that is. is the man of the hour right here. Check, Squishy Muffin. Check. Can we get some 07s? Some 07s in chat for one of the greatest <laughs> to ever do it. All right, Wave. I'm going to give you a little trivia about Squishy, all right? Okay. Which LAN was his first? Like, how many LANs did it take until he didn't get a top four finish? His first LAN without a top four finish. Yes. So just numbers wise, like how many LANs did he compete in before oh, he finally okay. finished outside the top four? Um, was it, let's see. I'm trying to remember where he placed in season eight. At season eight worlds. I don't remember. 
I'm gonna say I'm gonna say he I'm was not guess. at season eight worlds to be fair. Okay. Well, that, that might well okay. The, the, <laughs> so there you go. So it's <laughs> All right. So is, it, so is it like I'm gonna guess like eight lands? Pretty close. He his first nine lands he finished Whew. top four. Everyone talks about uh, Vatira right now and all that stuff about he's one of the best to ever do it. Uh, Vatira he finished top eight in his third and fourth land. Squishy, it took until his 10th land to finally get a quarterfinals exit. Dreamhack Leipzig. That's how wow. long it took. But before that was Dreamhack Atlanta, where it all began, like as the D Muffin men with gimmick. They got first there. Gnarly first. Then we got a third at Worlds, a third at E League, a fourth at Worlds, a fourth at Gnarly 2, a first at Season 6 World Championship, of course. Number two at E League and WSE, he got a third place finish. So, one of the best to ever do it. One of the best international land players uh, to do it. He competed in 19 lands. He finished outside the top eight once. One oh. time. That was the Winter Major 21. 22 season with uh, NRG. Every other time, he's had four top eights, seven top fours, two grand finals appearances where he didn't win, and then five other land victories. Five and two in grand finals. And that doesn't include his 2v2 title as well with gimmick. So he has that as well. So five time land winner. You had one more for 2v2. One of the best to ever do it. He'll definitely be on the all time GOAT list. And we'll see if he can do it one more time here. Yep. One of the best North Americans. And as much as we were mentioning Lachinio earlier, uh, Lemon, but he's definitely the best Canadian Rocket League player of all time. Yeah, I, I'm very biased for JNAVs, but Squishy is up there, and you break you break uh, out of the you know the energy bubble of ever everyone always doubting energy or having questions for energy, and now you find yourself on a new team, and it's not been a good day for Muffin Men who haven't uh, picked up a single game. They got swept by G2, which is unlucky, and then LG who was number two in the last regional, so no more chances. But you're up against maybe a a weaker Shopify. We'll see how they're gonna peak, but at least the spirit are high on both sides and you want to go out with a bang because yeah. obviously a very successful career for squishy and you you want to go out with a roar and i think there's a real chance for muffin men to do just that against shopify i i do think I, I would you would hope that shopify would have some sort of mental block that justin would be like oh i don't want to i don't want to be the guy to knock squishy out of lcs <laughs> for forever but i think Justin knows he's like we're t I'm still taking this seriously I'm still really trying to win this thing for forever Squishy's already Squishy already gave up earlier I feel like if I'm Justin I'm thinking no I still have a chance at winning this I still have a chance of making it to Copenhagen yeah, I have does. to give this my all I doubt there's going to be any sort of mental block here I think that they will not they will not hesitate to punch the muffin men Oh, absolutely. Like, you have to play what's in front of you. And yes, you have to put the name aside. And th they went their separate ways, right? They went on different teams. They knew that this could happen where they'll be playing each other. But they seem to be in good spirits, uh, playing some ball, uh, waiting for this match to begin. Um, and we saw S Squishy earlier. He's smiling. He's laughing. So I think both teams are ready for the matchup as m a best that they can. Um, but I think it's just Squishy was planning this. You know, he went 0-2 in yeah. Swiss. He knew what was coming. We talk about it. When he goes to lands, he's a beast. Now he's on stream. It's the same thing. It's the stream buff. We're going to get Squishy clutching it up here and performing incredibly well. So far, hasn't been a great day, but it doesn't matter. No one saw those matches. They weren't on stream. Now it's time to reverse sweep the Swiss, and we'll watch them until they're out. Like at this point, it's like uh, this is a Muffin Men show until S Squishy is out. Yeah. <laughs> or if they make it. So to be clear, chat, we are going to watch the Muffin Men from this point on. If they manage to beat Shopify, we'll watch them again in round four. We're going to continue to want to stick with Squishy as long as he's in RLCS from this point on. And I got to I got to say, like, Lemon, it's 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 people like a lot of content creators would be like, you know what? You will be kind of a fun thing. Let's just put together a team and play through the open quals and like see how far we get. Oh, haha, ha, we made top 128. That was kind of fun. We like won a game in there, right? For Squishy, he's like, you know what my retirement party is? I'm going to threaten to make top eight and ruin actual like team's days. Like he's still on his retirement tour, good enough to make top 16 in one of the densest regions in the game. It's so impressive.
I know. I think he's ready to party, and he's like, damn, he's like, darn, like, now I have to do playoffs. <laughs> now I might have to go to Co. I don't know how far they um, are making Copenhagen, but it's like, I think he's ready, you know, ready to go. I think he's ready to go have a nap and go do life things. So it's almost like he's extending uh, that retirement party. He may be looking forward to. <laughs> well, I, we'll see. I, this, this, is, this has got to feel good as, as, as one of his oldest traditions and rhythms of his life, playing in RLCS, doing it again here and kind of like taking it in for one last time. Uh, Obviously, chat, uh, who do you think is going to win? Hashtag Muffin Men or hashtag Shopify? Do not like, come on, <laughs> come on. Like, it, you got to, you got to. Sorry, go Rebellion. Way. This is one time when we can't yeah. go. Spam the fishy. Wave. Spam, Spam the fishy. The fishy to help squishy. They Let's go. The fish. Put them up. Give it to them. Boom, boom, boom. That's what we're talking about. Now, uh, so where, where are we at? 79%. Let's go. We got to love that. Now, I got to just point out that in the uh, in the poll or in the, 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 the channel points, it's like the exact opposite. Literally <laughs> the opposite. You guys are such frauds. I can't believe it. But hopefully they can do it. We got to love it. We'll see if the Muffin Men can make it happen, folks. One of the greatest to ever do it, trying to continue the stream here and enjoy some more Rocket League Muffin Men versus Shopify to stay alive in the tournament. Is this the end of the era? We know it's his last split. Can Squishy prolong the festivities just a little bit longer? You heard the desk mention Garrett's knocked him out twice already in the split. Justin has a chance to do it. You know who else has a chance to end the run for Squishy? Shopify Rebellion's coach, Memory. He dropped them down to the lower bracket back in season three, the big upset, knocking down Iris. Can Memory do it again to Squishy now as Rebellion's coach, we'll find out. I've always used the phrase, greatness is a given, it's earned, but there have been Greatness earned on both sides of the field, where both Justin and Squishy have cemented themselves as Rocket League legends. Only one can continue to move on, and there he is, Squishy though! First goal here for Muffin Man. You see him smiling on the cams. Like a story that writes itself right past the young gun, Parth. This is how we used to do it in the OG days, Squishy. Right down the middle, here we go. 28 seconds in. Fight for survival here between Shopify Rebellion and the Muffin Men. Squishy blocks Parth off there. Here comes Two Piece. He's got Parth still downfield. Threatened to go after Gimmick. That hits the corner and bounces away. Squishy with the save. Gotta see Rebellion. I mean, they're in a very tough spot here at the Swiss. Of course, still a chance to make Copenhagen. They've got to fight down low here. We see already just lots of good space. Squishy trying to pre-jump Justin. Gimmick will get the demo on Justin, and now you see Aqua moving forward. Definitely a little slow start for both teams. Feeling out process here, but there's a good ground pinch. Squishy will get the save. Well, we're past the point where top eight would be good enough for either of these teams to even have a prayer of making it to the major. Both teams pretty much have to at least make the finals. In Muffinman's case, they pretty much have to win this whole thing if they're going to have a shot at going to Denmark and keeping this going just a little bit longer. We know there'll be free agents at the end of all of this. Gimmick through the air, denied. Just a little bit wide left, and now Parth back the other way. Squishy on the ball. Two-piece goes up to challenge. Squishy gets a pass. Now Aqua looking for the double. Does get it. Oh, my goodness. Great shot from Aqua. Forcing Park to be able to make it clear. Plays it to that sidewall corner. So Rebellion in a good spot. But got to be careful there from Aqua. That was a great shot. And he's up after this one as well. Trying to drop it down in the direction of Squishy. I wonder if maybe. I mean... Who knows how realistic anybody is about the chances, but maybe you try and set up Squishy a little more and give him just a little more to put on the highlight reel at the end here, as this is blocked by Parth, trying to get revenge for the opening goal conceded to Squishy. This goes around the boards, and Squishy will pop it to the side, needs to chase it himself. Parth is there instead. Now Parth trying to set up anybody, looking for two-piece coming on, but it goes right back once it came. Strong pinch across, too. You see Justin trying to work there. Pass. Justin can't get there. Good clearance by Gimmick. See Parth now. Tuck on that back end. But good bump from Gimmick, too. Squishy has a chance to set this one up. Takes it low. Plays a flick over. Two-piece. And two-piece. 
able to at least get a 50 out. Rebellion, got to kind of get things moving here. You're starting to see Muffin Man great strong challenges out in front. But they are sitting pretty comfortable in this game. Even with Aqua, he's not he's been low on the points there until that last shot gave him a little bit more. But he's looked like a force too. Yeah, I mean, listen, all the eyes are on Squishy, but there are all oh! the scores here. Just hanging out on the backboard. A little old school. Aqua set him up and Squishy finishes the task. Right on your head. Beautiful goal there from Squishy. He's shooting two for three. And again, still just showing. I mean, again, set up by Aqua. You were talking about him. I mean, Aqua's been great so far in the first three minutes of this series. Created some opportunities. He snuffed out some chances from Shopify Rebellion. Aqua's up the ladder here. Second touch to get that ball central, but well read by the defense and almost cleanly cleared. Now Justin's shot. It was open, but Aqua strafes across for the save. And here come the Muffin Men again. Justin, and that away. Rebellion haven't really been able to get things on the board scoring wise. They're down. Two goals. They've got four shots, but not really too threatening here. But they've got to get things moving. Final minute here. Muffin Man in full control of this game. And they show no signs of really letting it go. The rotations have been great. Marth just trying to get out of jail here, but now it's Justin. One on one with Squishy. No gimmick with the stop. Coming in from midfield. There's the demo on Aqua. Does that open things up for Rebellion? Parth denied by Gimmick. Squishy's there as well. They can't quite pitch it downfield. So that kind of looks awkward. Justin for two-piece. Well, he got it down to ground, but a little bit wide, and Parth can't get around on this for a shot. And with 30 seconds left, opportunities becoming few and far between now for Rebellion. But Justin's there on the doorstep, and he will score. This one, you see Squishy kind of waiting on the back wall, gets a touch, but a little too far away from the Fennec. He wants to get that recovery, but Justin so quick to the ball. Rebellion within one, 24 seconds to go here. They finally get on the board. Uh, so for those keeping track at home, yes, uh, all former NRG players have 100% of the goals here in this opening game. Justin looking to add another, but he's met by Squishy. Now this goes towards Justin. Got a piece of it. Two-piece now to the backboard, and he can't stay with it. Gimmick with a clear. Down to the final 10 seconds. Seven now as Aqua booms it away. Gimmick was looking to finish it Please? off. But now here's two-piece, the save by Squishy Muffins. They'll bring it to ground, and the Muffin Men take game one. Muffin Men off to a hot start. Squishy with two of those goals there in the victory. And again, rotation is a little bit more spaced out, but it works. It's so effective. Rebellion had a tough time really setting up opportunities, and you saw not too much threatening offense until things started to slow down here towards, or until things started to speed up for them towards the end of the game. So naturally, we're here. We're, we're here because of Squishy. We talk about Squishy. He scores two goals. Couple of good defensive efforts as well as we look back at the Mobile One High Performance Replay. Squishy right there. Ultimately proved to be the game winner after Justin made it interesting in the final 30 seconds. A little more Squishy trivia for you though. You remember, of course I mentioned in season three they got dropped down to the lower bracket and then well, they, they couldn't create the rival series fast enough after that. You know who actually eliminated them from that qualifier, Daz? No. Oh. Selfless. Dapper, Miho, and Pluto. Oh, and there's my yearly Pluto mention. So we got that out of the way in March. It's well done. Thank God. <laughs> okay, getting set up here for game number two. And right now, I think, you know, Rebellion definitely have been playing it, playing it a little bit slower. We want to see them kind of keep the pace up. And we have a pause. And we're just going to, you know, keep things going for a little bit longer. So... Going on to game two, though, you, you look at that first game, right? And you see all the opportunities that Aqua created. Still only win by one goal. I think they're gonna have a tough time as the series goes on, keeping up with the offense of Shopify Rebellion. I mean, we know Parth has the ability to just go off, right? I mean, you remember the nine goals he had against M80 back in the first qualifier in the playoffs, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's something to this Parth kid. And then Rebellion was 
not quite the same in the second qualifier. Still got a shot at redemption, and this is a team, Daz, that we know if they can reverse sweep the Swiss, survive in advance, they give themselves just as good a shot as anybody else at making a deep run through the playoffs. Right, but they've definitely got to get there first. Lots of matches going to be raging on here while teams are trying to qualify for Copenhagen. But here we go. Little stage change here. Game two on DFH Stadium. Here we are. Well, Squishy trying to pick up where he left off in the first game, but he's stopped by two feet. Didn't quite have the shot cleanly anyways. Justin and Parth are up. Parth will score as Justin sent it onward. And it's a three-man play here for Rebellion. Two-piece gets this one. Nice touch. And look at the pre-jump from Parf. Wow. Well done for Rebellion. They take the first goal. Everyone getting involved. Yeah. Decent. Tenth goal of the tournament for Parf. They don't let him get going. This is stuffed right back to midfield. Squishy up ahead towards Gimmick, but he's got to bail out. And now Parf, man of the hour now, will take it. As Justin got a piece of that as well. Here comes Parth again. This time he's stopped by Squishy. And Gimmick will send this out further. Squishy in behind him, waiting for a centering pass. Gimmick and Squishy connected so many times back in the old Cloud Nine days, but not this time. Two piece playing this in front. You see Justin will pinch out Parth in a little bit of an awkward spot. Has to turn around, so Aqua gets a challenge there. 50 works out well. Gimmick, strong clearance. Aqua tries to go up, but is denied by Two Piece. Justin's actually up really early. Had a tough time controlling it, but Two Piece, free ball off the backboard. Park is up. Not the best touch. Ended up rushing it a little bit, so Aqua's going to get a strong clearance. Squishy on the ball, trying to get this one through, but it's Justin with the save. And Squishy grabbed that midfield boost in stride and able to continue the play. The defensive Shopify Rebellion, good enough for now. Still holding the 1 0 lead. Squishy out of the corner. He's got Aqua ahead. Out of the corner. Squishy leaving for Gimmick. And Justin wise to the play. Aqua with the rebound. We're all tied up. Good follow up here. I mean, Two Piece gets beat on a push. Squishy looking for the bump, forcing a tough clearance out of Justin. Aqua gets the follow up goal, and we are back tied up here in game two. Well, for all the talk of these two teams being 0-2 and, and you don't really know what to expect, now you can expect a pretty close series between these two. Happen to think that, again, on paper, you, you have to favor Shopify Rebellion. But there is that aspect of one last run for Squishy and this Muffin Men squad. Two-piece, trying to do his job, and he does! He had Justin waiting in front of the goal, took it himself instead, and the defense was frozen. Look at that from two piece flip reset. Couldn't really hit the musty, but made contact enough with the ball. And sometimes that's all you need. Rebellion now with the lead. Plenty of time to go here, but they're starting to get things ramped up on offense, and that's what you like to see. A good cheat up from Parth. There's going to be two piece that takes that midfield boost, so Parth has to retreat. Gimmick over top of him. That goes through Justin and Squishy. And Gimmick trying to force one in front, but it's deflected away by Parth. He gets credit for a save there. It wasn't really on target. But now Aqua trying to bring it out of the corner. He's got it through cleanly. It's right at Parth, though. So nothing brewing there for the Muffin Men. They got to reset. And they trying to play this close, gets it under. 50 out of midfield. You see Justin send it to Parth. Parth now with control. Has to get it past Squishy. Tries to play it wide there to the left. Knew he had two piece there. The two piece had to go for the boost. Wasn't really able to get there in time. Big challenge there for Park. Almost pre-jumped it and worked out really well. The squishy on the ball. Big demo as well. Now Park getting a lot of space here for Rebellion. What's two piece gonna do? Place this out, looking for a bump. Park with the 50 and Justin will go up here. Rebellion not able to really make much happen with the ball in the corner and it's only gonna be a matter of time before it gets cleared away. There it is. There's a lot of talent on this Rebellion squad that given time can be something real special. The problem is they're not going to get much time, especially if they drop here. It is curtains for them in the first split if they lose this series. And Squishy right now is picking them apart. I mean, great, great awareness there. He goes to take the corner boost, turns on it, immediately jumps for the challenge early. Two-piece was a little late there, but also even with the double commit, no one able to stop Squishy from scoring that goal. We are back tied up here in game two.
And Aqua looking to see if he can set up for more. Aqua trying to go all the way, but Justin denies. Aqua stopped there, but again, he's been right on the doorstep. That pass ahead to Justin. Denied squishy way out in front. And now Barth will try his luck. He got around Aqua, got around Gimmick. Only squishy to beat, but squishy with the save. And now Aqua just delays. Justin, can he follow this up? No, Gimmick's got it away towards center. And Muffin Men will skate out of the zone. It's squishy for Gimmick. How many times over the years have we seen that? Squishy to Gimmick. A solid pass, beautiful setup. Gimmick able to knock it down. Absolutely love to see it from those two. Muffin Men in the lead. Feels like 2018 all over again. A minute 24 to go. Gimmick gives Muffin Men a one goal lead. Gimmick up here is, well, he's gonna stay back and a good thing because Justin has this. Off the backboard, around Squishy, now he made the save. Two feet stuffed as well. Squishy and Aqua getting in on the defense now for Muffin Men as Squishy goes up to the ceiling. Aqua to the backboard. It is Gimmick though that gets a hand on this. But another shot coming in, Justin denied yet again by Aqua. And the clearance from Squishy into the final minute now. Listen, with all the attention on Squishy, Aqua has been a real star. He has. He's definitely made a lot of work, and so has Gimmick, too, as well. Off-ball plays have been very, very solid. Everyone's got on the board. Gimmick trying to get another one, but he gets cleared away. Hold on. Here's Aqua. He's up. Gets a double, but Justin able to get the clearance. For Rebellion, this is not good. They go down here, and it could be potentially on match point. Muffin them in. Have everything going for them. As Aqua tries to play this to itself, denied there by Justin. Ball still in that orange half. Rebellion got to get it moving. They're trying to draw Justin out defensively and didn't fool him one bit. He's seen enough. Now Parth to the back wall. Gimmick got a piece of it. Didn't really slow the play down. Two piece slots it home and we're tied. Perfect shot here from two piece. Not the best touch out. Two piece gets a one look at it. Top corner slot to the left side. It's anybody's ball game. Everybody shoots, everybody scores, why not? Justin yet to score in this game, but he got his in game one. Here goes Two-Piece to the ceiling. It falls to Parth, nearing the end of regulation. Can Justin get up to it? He does. Justin at zero seconds. What else is new? Oh, Squishy with a save, and we go to overtime. The rebellion's starting to ramp up. They're getting a lot of possession here upfield. They've been making the most of it. Kickoff doesn't really go in, the, in their favor, though, as Gimmick takes that mid boost. Now it's Gimmick and Squishy and Justin all up. Aqua, though, with a chance, and Justin gets down in time to make the save. This feels like some of these younger guys, like Two Piece and Aqua, have been taken into a time warp. Here goes Justin from the ceiling. Squishy there with the save. Other stop on the backboard. Now he'll try and get around Parth. Got it forward to be stopped by Two Piece. He can quickly jump out on this, but Aqua. Right place, right time. He read it the entire way. He's got Squishy waiting. Shot coming, and Squishy wins it in overtime. Squishy with the OT winner. Muffin Men keep going. Beautiful setup from Aqua. Squishy knocks it down, gets a little bump on Justin. And we have the Muffin Men on match point. They will not go down easy. They just will not go away. Squishy with a pair in game one. He's got a pair in game two, including the OT winner. By the way, just casually two for two shooting in game two, which does go to the overtime. We look back at a wild shootout. Seven goals between Muffin Men and Shopify Rebellion. And for all the talk about this being the end of Squishy's run, and it still could be, it may be the end of Shopify Rebellion here in this first split. And then who knows from there? After that is definitely the case here. We take a look at our mobile one high performance replay. We saw lots of highlights there, mainly from the Muffin Men. Rebellion did show signs of life, but in on that back end, Muffin Men have been just out so much stronger. They've had great pace, and now they have a chance to move into round four if they can finish this one off with a sweep. Rebellion are going to give everything they've got here. But the way things are looking right now, I mean, Muffin Men have the recipe. It is bizarre watching this team, again, with all the talent and all the expectations for Shopify Rebellion 
to be a mere five minutes away from what I would have to imagine all three would have to categorize as a failure, right? I mean, this this is a team that not a lot of people maybe pegged them as a top four team, but certainly in the conversation of teams that could get to a major. And now they've got to battle back, not just reverse sweep the Swiss, they got to reverse sweep Squishy Muffins in the year 2024 AD. And it actually looks like a challenge as Squishy refuses to end his career here. He's got four goals in the series. Two-piece with a pair on the Shopify Rebellion side. Justin is back and ready to go here as SR, one of the teams that are boot camping this weekend and have put a little extra preparation into prolonging their season, now find themselves up against the wall. Down 0-2, here we go. So will we see a fight back here? This could be Rebellion's last game of the split. Justin almost, but hits the crossbar. Could have been a good start here in game three. They're not done yet. Justin, another shot. Bang! It goes in. First goal to Rebellion. There you go. That's exactly what this team needed. Get Justin back on the scoreboard. 17 seconds in. Just a challenge shot. Hey, catch up to it, old man. He could not. And now Rebellion. Can they hold this lead? They're certainly going to need to expand on it as this kickoff does go deep into their territory. Squishy's waiting on the opposite side. Here he comes again. Got it in front. It's just going to hang there forever, and Aqua scores. There was so much time there. Aqua got to take and utilize all of it. Squishy got the read. Aqua knew exactly where it was going. Okay, let me back up the boost there, make sure we secure that goal. And we're back tied up. Muffin Man strike quickly. This first minute. Plenty of twists and turns fitting for the setting that we're in right now. And, oh, it's an own goal! Gimmick just hands one to Rebellion. <laughs> Look at Park. <laughs> yeah, nice job, boys. Oops. <laughs> That's all you can really say there, is just oops. <laughs> Gotta go next here. Unfortunate error there on the side of Gimmick, but you keep things moving. How big will that be as this series goes on? Neutral ball at midfield. Aqua then decisively wins that. And here come Muffin Men rushing into the zone. Aqua forwent that boost for a moment, but he did steal it. Now Gimmick out of the corner. Needed a second touch. Didn't control it. So here goes Parth. Race to the midfield boost. He won it. Now Justin sneaks by Aqua, trying to get through Gimmick. Not going to happen, and Aqua couldn't send it even further. Aqua's in a real tough spot, though. Almost got ramped there on the, uh, the corner. And boy, that would have been dangerous for Muffin Men. They're still in a spot of trouble, especially with that demo on Squishy. Another one coming maybe on Aqua. He makes the stop, but they can't clear it, and Parth extends the lead. And Rebellion really getting that consistent offensive pressure going here. I mean, you see Justin getting a lot of bumps and demos at the back end. Look at the speed from Park. I mean, once they had that offensive control, they initially they increased the speed tremendously. Now up 3-1 here. They're in a good spot, but there's so much time left in game. They've got to make sure they maintain. A goal here would be big, and Justin's going to secure it. 4-1 scoreline. I could tell you what's going to happen on this kickoff, or, you know, you could just assume that somebody turned the wrong way after the kickoff didn't go the way it's supposed to, and then all of a sudden they get scored on. You're welcome, Johnny Boy. I did it for you. 4-1 as Shopify Rebellion continue to pour it on. See what happens on this kickoff. Justin's got it, and Parth in behind him. Rebellion can start to breathe a little easier, but there's still so much time, and we've seen even bigger deficits erased with even less time. And now we have to see how things look. G2 and Jin G, Robo 1 going game five as this series continues to battle on. Will Rebellion also force a game five. We'll have to see Justin forces it to the top left though. And Rebellion are starting to run away with this. Finally, this team has come alive. Justin, four out of the five goals. So he took a little extended break in between games, came back, and is just a completely different person. Two-piece, got around one. Muffin Men looking at this closeout opportunity, fading away. 
as Aqua will try and set up Squishy. No, it took it himself, and that play didn't work out. How about Justin adding another? Why not? The beating continues. Oh, yeah, this one. I would, normally, I would like to call this one over. I mean, it's a five-goal deficit. Two minutes and 50 seconds left. I mean, they're scoring all these so early on in game. But you can tell definitely a change has been made here on Rebellion. They just seem so much faster. Justin, five for six shooting is wild. Six, one coming up oh. on the halfway mark. And look at OG taking down Space Station in a sweep. Okay, we knew this one was going to get crazy, but yeah. This is getting very crazy. You want to talk about teams that are still trying to scramble to salvage their season. I mean, both of them with SSG getting brutal draws in the playoffs these first couple of qualifiers, but OG has a ton of work, had a ton of work after just laying a complete egg in the first qualifier. They are looking like the team that everybody kind of expected now. This two-piece has that one to the backboard. And again, this Shopify Rebellion squad. <laughs> More of this, please, if you're an SR fan, as Justin's got that to the back wall. And it just seems like Muffin Men are going through the motions at this point. You can tell they're just a little bit slower. And now Justin scores yet again. Give him six goals. It's a Brazil here in game three. It is indeed a Brazil. Rebellion have said hello. <laughs> are not going down in a sweep as they continue to increase the score line. And Justin especially, he is 50 points away from 1,000. And there's still a minute 40 left. They're just, he's gonna hit it. He's just gonna hit it, it's gonna happen. And as we've learned in previous weeks, nowhere close to a record even in regulation because we've had some real goofy games over on the European side in the past, especially during the league play days. This is Parth now as we look up in the top corner, you saw Dignitas has taken out Snowmen. So Dignitas still looking very strong. That dropped out in front and an opportunity for Parf to add on to the beating. And finally, Aqua will clear. You know, I mean, all, all the eyes have kind of been on other matches, of course, in this third round. There is only one other elimination match. This could have been NRD trying to put Squishy's career to rest, going 3-0 and against him in the split. Instead, it falls to Justin, who may still finish the job yet. A little light touch here, you know, for Muffin Men. Definitely probably have ridden this game off already. The biggest thing is just to stop the score line and stop the bleeding. And they are doing just that. But still in a good spot. They're up 2-0 in the series. It'll, probably, it'll be 2-1 after the final 30 seconds. So then they get a fresh five minutes to really start to try to turn things around. But Rebellion, their biggest thing right now is just keeping up the pace so that they go into the next game with the same mo ball movement. Now, how many times has seen, whether it's an RLCS, CRL, or a, a Nexus Weekly for that matter, game one or two series turns into an absolute route, the next game becomes something very, very different. This one, Muffin Men will keep a short memory and they're gonna come back with a vengeance, but it's Rebellion facing elimination in every sense that comes back and not just punches Muffin Men in the mouth, they hit a full-on combo to stay alive. They did. Justin with 1,071 points that game, shot six for seven, a couple of saves and an assist. Did 100% goal participation there. And that one was really just all, all, well, mostly Justin. Everybody doing their job there on Rebellion. And we'll see if they can perform the reverse sweep. Speaking of reverse sweeps, Young Whippersnappers no are trying way. to reverse sweep NRG. They're in game five right now. Wow. After NRG was reverse swept by Boulevard in the previous round. Just a, you can't win. That is a, that would be a brutal exit for NRG. Elsewhere, of course, we mentioned OG has swept Space Station. Pirates on a boat did sweep Boulevard, by the way. Speaking of that Boulevard squad, TSM oh, wow. goes 3-0 in their match. Hold on, We're still waiting on a Game 5 result between G2 and your boys as G2 try to reverse sweep Gen G. Yes, G2 is trying to reverse sweep Gen G.
Right now, the game scoreline is 3-1 in game five in favor of Jing G. G2 just scored 59 seconds on the clock there. So we'll see what happens. And we've still got a lot of business to take care of here, including a team on either side that could be very well in the major discussion if they can survive the Swiss, especially Shopify Rebellion. Trying to stay alive. Parth challenging Squishy. Squishy wins that one. Justin avoids the demo. Two pieces up. Parth is already downfield. Aqua was at least vaguely aware. Oh, what a drop down. Did two piece for the lead. I mean, look at this play. Two piece sets it up. Parth says, hold on, I'll give it right back to you. Drops it straight down and two piece able to get that goal. Great ball movement from Rebellion. They strike first. They didn't miss a beat in between games. They just continue to pour it on after seven in game three. Justin again on the ground. This time stopped by Aqua, but not cleared out of the zone. This should do the job as Squishy will send it away. Only as far as Two-Piece who can land on the wall. He's got Parth mid. Two-Piece instead opted to take it himself. Justin starts creeping up. Here goes Parth to the corner. Justin following in and Gimmick beat them both. Good control here. Squishy now on the ball, trying to get a pass to. But now, have to see what Rebellion can do. This could be an open look for Justin, and he will get a great assist from Parth there on the play. Strong challenges out of Parth. Sets Justin up. He was waiting for in the, well, basically right in front of the box for that one to get through. This first minute, not showing any signs of being any different from the first three of the last game. And this thing's quieted down a little bit at the end. And it's still 2-0, and now you see the result has finally come in. Gen G avoids the reverse sweep from G2, and G2, yes! First loss. It can bleed, and if it can bleed, you can kill it. They finally got one over G2. Well, well, well. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah, I'm sure that great first touch would be great, as long as, you know, G2 doesn't get their revenge later on in the bracket. That's right. Right now, though, Rebellion trying to get their revenge in the series. They're up 2-0 now in game four, looking for a way back in, a little bit of a double commit, and almost ended up working out there for Rebellion. But you're starting to see a counter attack develop. Squishy to Gimmick, back to Gimmick. Aqua now getting up there, but not fast enough. Justin on the counter, it'll go in. Three goals for Rebellion. Hammer, meet nail. Shopify Rebellion has come alive here. By the way, with that result just now uh, between G2 and Gen G, Team Solo Mid is your number one seed out of Swiss going into tomorrow's top eight playoff. Okay yes. then. <laughs> Gibbs actually yeah. might get the chaos he's looking for. Oh my goodness, who predicted that? Oh man. We could, we could potentially have, a, I think it's a six-way tie. Uh, they were talking about a six-way tie. Please, dear God, no. It all depends. Swiss is still developing. And we have another score line coming up here real soon. There it is. LG takes down M80. M80, Swiss merchants normally have been, they've We're lost selling. twice in Swiss. They have. Another one of the teams that reportedly boot camping. And with questionable results, Muffin Men will get one here. At the halfway mark, Aqua just walks one home as the Rebellion defense just gets beat at every turn. And all of a sudden, it's a game again here. 2.33 to go. And there is still life here for Muffin Men to send out Shopify Rebellion. I see a little bit more pace here on the side of Muffin Men. They've been speeding things up here for sure. And but that, that two-goal deficit, they may have to take some risks. Wait a second, where it may just be gifted to them. Can Aqua get there? Parth! Oh, big save. Squishy follow-up shot. Good save there from Parth to deny. Yumi will try to keep this in play for the time being, but it goes to Justin. He's threatening on the solo. Aqua, though, has a great reach to slow him down. Lots of space in the midfield for Rebellion to work with here, but they have to be careful not to overextend. Could have been a one-goal deficit if Aqua would have been able to get that over Parth. Oh, two-piece outlet to Justin, looking to add to it. Squishy ranging across, just oh barely got a piece of that as it started to change colors. Aqua back the other way, and that shot's gonna be well wide, maybe intended for Squishy, but too strong, and the gimmick banks it off of Justin and in. This is way off the mark. 
but it's Justin at the last second. Oh, no. That is unfortunate for Rebellion. Up in this game, they had at least a 3-1 lead, and it's starting to slip away. Just a, a slight error, though. You have to respect it to see if Gibbon takes the shot. Good save there as Justin blocks out Squishy's shot. But a minute 30 now. Here is Justin. Playing this high. He's going to actually go for the corner boost here. And two pieces. Not going to be able to get to him. Park will actually control this. Solo it. You see the clear from Squishy. Aqua plays this right to Justin. So he's going to take his time. Squishy just got takes the demo. Says, see you later. Muffin Man with the ball in the orange half. But not for long. Good carry here for Park to two piece. They play it off the back wall. Squishy's there to intercept. But not a lot of boost. So that one's going to get away from him. Oh. What a save by Gibbon. He had to read exactly where the shooter was. Perfectly placed, but still trailing. 50 seconds remain. Aqua from the skies. No way. Oh, no. NRG does get reverse swept. They're out. They get reverse swept by Boulevard and by Young Whippersnappers. Final 40 seconds over here, though, and we could see another reverse sweep brewing if Shopify Rebellion can hang on. Two-piece trying to get out of the zone. There's Aqua to tie. It's high and set out by Justin and Parth. Parth, the carry there. Aqua wants to keep this in place. He's squishy. Hold on, he has to turn here. Justin kind of forced it towards him. Squishy now, staying close to the ball. Aqua, press the brings to Gimmick. Gimmick a little late. Two-piece is able to keep this in the blue half. Rebellion. Need to keep this, the ball exactly where it is as time ticks down. But here come Muffin Man, one last charge. Squishy gets a bump in the back end, but Justin's on the ball. Gets this to mid, bounces off of Gimmick's Dominus. Aqua keeps this up, but only for how long as Justin could get a double to send it down, and he will. Rebellion Force Game 5. With absolute chaos ensuing elsewhere in the Swiss, all eyes turn now to what could in fact be the final game of one of the greatest to ever do it. And how crazy would it be if it's Shopify Rebellion, if it's Justin, along with his coach memory, that are able to reverse sweep Squishy out of the Swiss here in this final qualifier. We look back at the highlights of what was a more interesting game than it promised to be in the first minute. Muffin Men had a run at it. Remember that own goal given up, though. That was uh, almost fatal. Didn't prove to be. Now one last shot here between Muffin Men and Shopify Rebellion to close out round three. See the score lines here. Time is ticking down. And you know what comes next. Game five between Muffin Man and Rebellion. Both players between Justin and Squishy have their names on the banners of Champions Field. And I take this time to remind everyone that heroes come and go, but legends are forever. Game five, about to get started. A fitting backdrop for the end of this one. Somebody's major run ends here. Will it also be the career of Squishy? Aqua slowing this one down. He'll lob it forward, Squishy's way back. Just in the initial save. Aqua sent it across to Gimmick, off the backboard. Here comes Squishy, bouncers home! Muffin Man start this one off hot. Beautiful passing between Gimmick and Aqua. Sets up Squishy for the lane and bounces it right under Justin. First goal for Muffin Man. We've had goals in the first few seconds of every game, it seems, in this series. Hasn't meant a whole lot to the final scoreline. Two-piece now to the backboard, and that's set out by Squishy. Everything resets here mentally for these squads, and plenty of experience between the two as Aqua's going to walk it in. And now it's all Muffin Men in the first 30-some-odd seconds. I mean, good setup there from Squishy to get it to Aqua. It's Aqua versus Parth, and just plays a nice low 50 to force it into that right corner. Back-to-back -back goals here for Muffin Man in game five in the first 30 seconds. Maybe just a little more magic here on Champs Field. But it's Aqua trying to steal the show. 
Parth lost this one. Justin trying to run under it. Parth can still stay forward a little bit. Have to rely on some pennies as two piece comes up. He could get one more. Had to redirect that back out central, and Parth was way, way back. This will fall right to Justin. Boucher got away from him. Gimmick doesn't have any teammates over there, so two piece will set up Justin, and that's well read by Aqua. Can they walk this one in? Gimmick certainly can. And this again, everyone on Muffin Man getting on the board here. Great cut from Aqua. Gimmick was in the back end. Solid touch control. Catches Rebellion out. Big start here in game five for Muffin Man. They are in full control. After what was, what, nine unanswered goals, maybe 10 unanswered goals, Muffin Man themselves have come back with five. And all of a sudden, this series has taken on a very different complexion, more akin to what we saw in the first game and a half. It is all Muffin Men on Champions Field. Here goes Justin, trying to remedy that. It's a long road, and he can't take the first step just yet. Two-piece back for the midfield boost. He'll also take the corner to make sure Gimmick can't steal it, and he'll start the counter charge again. Aqua's in his way, then gets knocked into the net, and Squishy doesn't let the ball follow. Gimmick's looking for bumps on Justin, trying to slow him down. But now Gimmick gets demoed by Parf. Free ball for two-piece. What can he do? Squishy's trying to go up to challenge. Aqua's on the back wall, and Aqua gets the clearance. Justin was playing the miss, but he has to retreat. Here's Parf. Gets it past Gimmick, and now has the ball on his head. Has two-piece here in the midfield. There's the flick, but two-piece, he can't get up for that. Has to try to play it around. Could have been a good chance here for a strong attack from Rebellion, but now they've got to take it from their own end. So trust becomes important, too. You can't pre-jump if the passes haven't been on the mark. Here goes Aqua. Intercepted by two-piece. Can't force that through, so now Justin's got to dive in. Corner boost available as Aqua goes up to meet him. This could fall towards, two, uh, towards Parth. But Squishy's there instead. Two pieces lobs it to an open space. Aqua takes it. Got around one. It's almost open. Two piece gets there ahead of Gimmick. And now here comes Shopify Rebellion. Opportunity here to start the second half with a bang here in game five. They need to get something out of this trip, it feels, and they won't. I mean, Muffin Man are just so quick to the challenges right now. They are not giving too much space here for Rebellion, even though it looks like they'll have free ball in midfield. It's just not that simple. This one off the side wall. Justin was up early. Demo on the play, but it's Parf that gets Demo. Two Piece wants to keep this alive. That midfield boost is up. No one was able to grab it. Two Piece is actually looming. Wait, he's going to leave it for Parf. Tried to get it low, but it just wasn't enough. Power slide from Justin, though. He wants to keep this in for Rebellion. Gets it high. Two Piece, no. It's Water denied lead. by Aqua. And now Rebellion have to go back. Time is ticking down for them. Time running out on their split. And again, so much unknown for the future of Shopify Rebellion. Here's Gimmick to the back wall. Second touch is on the mark, but cleared away. Now Justin, denied by Squishy. How fitting. Gimmick taking his time. Two piece up to meet him. Martha and Justin waiting on the ground. They've got to move down to a minute 20. Muffin men nearly get reverse swept and then all of a sudden come out with a flourish in game five. Will it be enough? That stop by Squishy suggests it might. Demo's not enough to get by. Again, two piece getting in the way of gimmick. Checked him out of the play. Down to the final minute. Justin, gotta work. Took out Aqua. Hard Low play. Can't get around Squishy. Squishy, the last person alive on the team, gets the big save, gets another one, that one. even with two pieces, flick it to the top right, he will not be denied, 45 seconds to go, chance here, I blocked out again, Rebellion are sit packing. Final 30 plus, and Rebellion are really up against it now, desperation shot, easily sent away by Gimmick. Squishy will clear it away. Full tank for him. He'll throw on Central. Gimmick and Squishy just prolonging the torment now for Shopify Rebellion. Now it's two-piece denied by Aqua at the last and the final 10 seconds will spell the end for SR. They tried to end this. They've got four seconds left but hardly enough time with two piece scoring here. Yeah, we'd, they, we'd have to see some magic here off the kickoff. That one bar down and in by two piece, but it does come down to this. Final kickoff here shortly as this one closes out, going to the Shopify Rebellion side. 
and the, there's just a little more magic left for Squishy and the Muffin Men. The story continues into round four. Muffin Men survive and advance in the Swiss after going to a crazy game five. If you look at those last two games, Rebellion seemed to have things figured out. Strong statement in game three, kept up the pace in game four, but then it came down to game five and the Muffin Men exploded on offense, kept up the pace for the rest of the game and denied Rebellion on so many strong offensive chances. Well done. They almost get reverse swept out of this and Squishy almost gets reverse swept out of his pro playing career. But nope, a rule one content creator takes down Shopify Rebellion and goes on into round four. How much further will it go? You have to stick around and find out after this.
Muffin Men lit 36 million channel points on fire. The frauds were exposed. Squishy reign supreme of that original NRG roster we all have to talk about. Garrett, Squishy, and Justin. Only one remains, and it's the Muffin Men moving forward. Nobody would have predicted it except for everybody on the desk and and some of you some of you believers in chat. You, you guys you guys got you guys got heavily paid in the channel points. That was pretty that was pretty sick stuff there. What a match! Here we are again. Prime time squishy. He shows up on stream. That's what it's all about. He had two goals in his first two matches today. Game one alone, he puts in two goals. Like squishy, he knows when to show up. We talked about his LAN accolades Woo! and how he's such a great player. He just likes that spotlight. He shows it here on the mainstream. His first appearance, and they're one to know. And the desk even got the sweep on the predictions. It's, it's a great day to be a Muffin Man fan. That's right. Oh, you call yourself an individual muffin man. Way, muffin I mean, man. You know, the way the, the support was there, but also it showed in the gameplay too. I mean, you saw moments that some of us, it gave us nostalgia, the squishy passes yeah. to gimmick right back and forth. But then you also got to see what Aqua could do individually. And he was solid as well. Rebellion did strike back. We saw them control things. You're like, okay, this is where things are going to take a turn. But once we loaded in that game five, muffin man played with a completely different purpose different sense of pace and it was just so tough for rebellion to get anything going i mean the amount of saves even squishy individually got that yeah. were just so clutch was absolutely incredible and we talked about garrett g and justin potentially taking out squishy how garrett's done it in the past no this time they're both gone and it's squishy the one still standing here in the swiss Squishy moves forward. We'll see their match here again. We said we're going to stick with Squishy the whole way through, but that doesn't mean there's not drama happening all around the Swiss. You saw it in the mid-match update to confirm. Gen G have given G2 their first Woo! loss of the season. Gen G are through 3-0 and TSM wow. after a crazy, surprisingly haphazard beginning of the season is also through 3-0 here, Gibbs. TSM went 9-1 in games. They will be your number one seed heading into the playoff bracket. We talked about it earlier. If they make top four, tiebreakers open up for a lot of these teams as long as Dignitas falls in the 2-2 two and two round. They're playing in the 2-1 and one round versus OG, who also took out Space Station game in 3-0. That is Space Station's first loss to a team that is outside the top two, G2 and Gen G. So wild results across the board. Uh, M80, they're in the one and two round. They won seven matches of Swiss in a row and now have lost the last two and they will go up against Muffin Men. So watch out M80. Watch out M80, watch out luminosity i feel like they've been having a up and down series today and now they're going up against omelet who made it to the 2-0 round after taking down m80 it's man it's a wild day and honestly like we gotta go back real quick shopify rebellion i think a lot of people had them as a yeah. major team like at the beginning of the split i think i predicted them fourth fourth or fifth around there but they were definitely in the major contention and they are going home. They lose out in qualifier two and then go 0-3 here in qualifier three. So they're done like energy is done. They were all, uh, also boot camping and they went 0-3. Uh, so the boot camp buff not going too well for a lot of these teams and M80, they're boot camping. They're one and two. So it's interesting right now what's going on in North America. We'll see what happens, folks. Here are some of the matches going to be happening. Again, these matches are going to be happening on streams, on team streams all across the Rocket League category on Twitch. So go check out those streams if you want to watch those matches. But again, in paying honor to the legend he is, we're going to be following the Muffin Men's run until they lose. It could be here. They could play in round five. Many people thought that they would not make it to round four, and yet the Muffin Men will now take on M80 Daz. Yeah, they will. And M80, we haven't talked about that too much. In round four of Swiss, one, two. 
And a lot of people are wondering, Toodaloo? what? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be Tudaloo if they be. don't <laughs> step up here. Uh, losses in Swiss. They went five against Luminosity. Okay, that's a good matchup. They lose 3-0 to Omelette, which is questionable for them. For M80, especially with them all playing together, doing the boot camp thing. I mean, Ness and Jorius were already together. It's just AJ who just came over to play with them. But yeah. now not seeing them being able to, you know, sweep Swiss and taking a couple of losses here, you're starting to get a little concerned about M80. <laughs> And here we go. You, it's squishy, right? It's squishy. Like, he's he's here again. But M80, they're literally one point out from a major spot. They are a top five team right now. They're in that four-way tie. All they really have to do is make top eight and probably win one quarterfinal, and they're very likely going. But now they're at one and two. Now they're up against it. This is the first time they're facing, uh, like, elimination outside of the bracket games which they are 0-2 at. So every time they're facing a, it's like a loss and they go home, they have lost. Will it happen again here? On paper, huge favorites. But the magic is with the Muffin Men. Chat, chat, if any of you put hashtag M80 in this chat, I'm, I'm <laughs> just telling the mods to ban you right out. Like, it's 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 the Muffin Men all the way through. I'm, I'm surprised. They, they, they lit, like I said, they lit 36 million channel points on fire in the last one. There's already 31 million channel points on, on M80. Just a bunch of frauds, a bunch of haters out here, folks. Uh, 86%. I like it. I like it's it. Better. You guys are there. It's better. We got believers. We're moving forward, chat. M80, definitely the biggest test of the day for the Muffin Men. But oh, I don't know. You put a firecracker in a muffin, it might just last. It's still going to be tasty, folks. Muffin Men versus <laughs> M80 to stay alive and move to round five. Garrett G, last. Justin, last. Squishy Muffins, <laughs> last man standing. As this magical run continues, will it proceed? Past Swiss M80, the next mid boss steps up. Got me stressed and casting this one. It's like, I don't want to cast. Uh, it's like, I want Muffin Men to win. But then they're here, and now I could be casting them losing, but maybe I could be casting them winning. This could be the start of the reverse sweep by the Muffin Men. But yeah, you're absolutely right. There's been some crazy results so far. NRG are out. TSM's number one in Swiss. G2 get their first loss. Dignitas is bouncing back. Regional 3 is entertaining me, to say the least. <laughs> How can you not be entertained by this, of course, with all the drama? This being the last chance to get points to try and qualify for the Copenhagen Major as Jory is blocked by Gimmick and we're off and running here in game one. Everybody just decides to leave the ball so AJ can take a soft shot. Rebound comes out to Jory. a lot more pace behind this. Nass is there and Gimmick with the save. Not out of the woods just yet, but a good initial stop. M80 tries to keep squeezing the pressure on here. Squishy around one. Only Nas to beat. Bring it down to ground and he chips it over him. This is just the squishy show. He showed us what he could be like when all the lights are on him in that last series. Had a total of five goals against Shopify Rebellion. Off to a great start against M80 who bring consistency of their own. M80 has gotten top eight in all the regionals thus far. But you know, regional three has been a little bit chaotic to say the least. And with, you know, Squishy's end of the career on the line, with both these teams being one and two, you know they're putting it all on the line. Squishy's downfield here, couldn't connect on that pass from Gimmick. Aqua waiting, he'll have to be called into action on the side, as Squishy just goes right down the middle. Could have sent that over towards Aqua, opted not to. Now Nass over to AJ, and Gimmick there for the stop. What can Gimmick do with this? He's got Aqua jumping here, and he's checked out of the play, so now that will just fall to Jorius, and M80 can go back to work. It's so weird seeing M80 playing this deep into Swiss after they were so dominant in Swiss in the first two qualifiers. I know so much has been made of that because they, again, did not proceed past the quarterfinals. That shot narrowly missing. Nass with Jorius downfield. Nass will take it himself and just dribble it right home. 
And it helps to have Jorius go for that demo where Jorius was the player actually with the highest assist per game coming out of Regional 2. And then with just all of the offensive capability out of M80, once they start rolling, it's really hard to stop them, especially when they're going for demos like that. So M80, you love to see them connecting when it matters the most. And then Jorius gets to have some time in the spotlight too. Maybe the fun police have arrived here. Jorius with Aqua coming up. He crisscrosses with Gimmick. That doesn't work out. He just waits and picks a spot. And M80 out to a lead after conceding that first goal to Squishy. Remember, Squishy scored first in the previous round as well. And it worked out all right. One of his five. This one pinched on target, and Squishy has to make the save coming across. M80, after match, they're going to get quite a few more quality opportunities. So the Muffin Men defensively are going to have to be on their A game as Nast Stone's gimmick. And he will take this himself up to the sky again. Threaten the ceiling pinch and Squishy was right there at the doorstep ready to save it away. It's nice to see the, the bounce back that Muffin Men have had uh, at the start of their day. It did not start off so well. 0-2, but a big win against Shopify. Uh, I was on the desk there saying, you know, you're facing a weaker Shopify. Muffin Men, I think that was a big confidence booster to win a match against a very well-respected team in Shopify Rebellion. You're going up against M80, titled the Swiss Merchants, who've had a rocky road of their own, losing to Omelette. Uh, very painful game five against Luminosity with three overtimes. We'll see if M80 still have gas left in the tank. So far, so good, but one goal insurance may not be enough. Here comes Aqua, but see that uh, Muffin Man are still working on that second goal. A oh, great pass out from Gimmick. Squishy hits the bar, and Jory is with the save. Aqua goes to the backboard, trying to line up a triple, and it's still right there on the front doorstep. And Jory's will bring it away. Squishy ranging back, and he makes his save. Coming out of the net. Aqua will send this away as well. M80 not done just yet. Near misses on either side, but we remain a one-goal lead here for M80. And a really important save coming out of Muffin Man. You keep this within one. But Muffin Man will be, have their defense tested after that. Clear they couldn't recuperate. And Jorius is trying to bully through that net. All three of Muffin Man are there. But managing to make some real estate, but not able to break out. Aqua waiting for the long pass, but it's AJ that manages to get a shot on target. Saves coming out of Muffin Men. But where's the retaliation? They only have one minute left to equalize. That was going to be a fatal mistake gimmick leaving that ball, and it nearly turned into one. Still remains a one goal game though as Aqua tries to get around Jorius. Boy, they are just stuck in their own zone. Finally, Squishy can escape through the air. Aqua's downfield. He can't get a piece of AJ. And boy, the more this ball stays up in the air, I understand Squishy's over there, but they need to get this ball down to ground and make some moves along the ground, get some passes, get possession again, because if they have to keep chasing M80 into the air, they're not going to have enough time to get back into this game. Aqua had that one skip out, and Nass is right there with 13 seconds. Double touch to keep this downfield. And here's the last charge for the Muffin Men in game one. Intercepted oh. by Nass. Aqua will leave it for Gimmick. Squishy's there, waiting to make a play. He's got to scramble onto this around the corner. It kicks out. Nobody's there. And M80 take game one. Great defense coming out of M80, especially when they were getting demoed. They had to face these two-on-three situations, and M80 deal with that pressure well. That's why they, they're called the Swiss Virgins. You go match after match, and you stay calm in and out of the field, and M80 got the job done in the end. You love to see Jorius be the assist king there, but also get some time in the light of getting that second goal, and Muffin Man, well, they'll start down one, but... They were really close to tying things up. Yeah, they did have a couple opportunities to get back level, but on the other side, M80 had some chances to blow this one wide open. There are a lot of goal line saves made by the Muffin Men collectively. They had 10 saves in that game, and there is Squishy with his signature save inside out from the ceiling of the goal. And it almost turned into something on the other side. Unfortunately for Muffin Men, it turned in to an L in game one. So now we go on to game two. Can the blue side kind of turn it around here? Or will it be the end for Squish? I mean, look, we saw a almost a reverse sweep in the previous round with these guys. They're never out of it for sure. And of course, the momentum is never too strong. We go on now to game two. 
See if M80 can keep their hopes alive for getting into the playoffs and making a run at the major. It's Muffin Men scoring early again. Wow, what a kickoff already. We had kickoff shenanigans in the last game, but Muffin Men need to start off strong, and they did just that in game two. And from Aqua, of all things, when it's been all squishy, doubling his teammates' score in this uh, for in the first game to putting on a show in the last series against Shopify, you need all of Muffin Men playing at their peak. It's one and two. It's do or die. You lose this match, you're out. And you can see that Muffin Men are feeling that pressure. Loose ball on the side that's taken over by Jorius, who had a key role to play in M80's couple of goals. Now Nass threatening Aqua. Well, that is great concentration out of Aqua. Again, can't sing his praises enough. And he's going to make a roster better somewhere in the second split, wherever he ends up. Squishy, indirect for Aqua. Floater sent away by Nass. Nasty has to deal with Squishy. Robbed a Majoria sends it away, and it's on target too. And just like the last game, M80 sure know how to tie. Yeah, that one, that one hurts for Muffin Man gimmick. Just didn't have enough giddy up to get back. So they're all level now here in game two. This is exactly how it happened in game one. Muffin Man. Reverse it. Squishy. Denied by Jorius. Couldn't get a second touch. Now Joris. Demolished by Aqua. Gimmick trying to run onto this, and Nass just slows it right down. And I think that's part of the frustration that Muffin Men are going to have here, Lemon. As quickly as they can move, they are going to get outpaced by M80, and it feels like M80 is going to be able to just kind of control this series and play it at their pace. And they're going to make Muffin Men uncomfortable every step of the way. Yeah, M80 have been winning a lot of their challenges, maybe except for that one. And that's really stifled their chances to get a good offense going. This gimmick forced to jump up, make the save. Nas able to utilize the back wall, and Aqua denies the double. But all three of M80 are knocking on this. And I can't believe they didn't score. I can't believe they didn't score, but then Aqua misses. Oh, if it's on target, it's a 2-1 lead. Oh, he's going to want that one back. I mean, what a read and save by Gimmick on the other side. Can Aqua do it again this time? Yes, he recovers. A lot of players might have kind of slumped their shoulders and be like, all right, well, that sucks, but at least he got back into it. <laughs> Squishy left that one for Gimmick. Nass is right there. He's got a full tank of boost, and he'll use it to win this challenge deep into Muffin Men territory. Nass ends up in the goal, Squishy way above him. And here come the Muffin Men breaking out in formation. It's Aqua denied by AJ, but Gimmick is right there. Can he get a shot on? No, it got too far away from him. Yeah, it's unfortunate Jorius couldn't put the shot on target there with a beautiful demo that cleared up the net, but here comes this time for redemption. Squishy will sh slow down the play, but it still gives a chance for M80 now in this blue half, but a mistouch from AJ. He's not going to win the ball back, but Nass assisting forward gets M80, you know, to the right of the net, but not necessarily able to carve through towards it. Now tied 1-1 going into the second half. Sort of a more quiet game coming out of AJ, who's been having one of the highest uh, shot percentages, at least in the top 10, I want to say, after Regional 2. So M80 struggling to get the lead back in their favor. But now Jory is Nass with that demo actually sends it away, but a back pass to AJ, which he wasn't expecting. Now Gimmick catching M80 fumbling. And you see that Muffin Men are hunting for that lead. Oh, Gimmick. I don't know if that was intended. It's like he backflipped and it really threw M80's defense for a loop. And then his shot still denied. But I mean, that's what Muffin Man are going to have to do. They're going to have to try and use some misdirection to try and trick M80's defense. Because just simply putting a shot on, it's going to be red. Unless you can get a blistering shot off a tailor made pass. It was Aqua. That midfield boost spawns underneath him. So Jorius takes it. And he may use some of it if this ball comes back into their territory. He may use it anyways. Here he comes. Jorius up to the backboard. Almost forced it through. But Aqua's there to slam the door shut. Here in the final minute. Muffin Men looking again. Fire down and in. 
that's so tough because in the previous play, I thought Nas had such a fantastic setup, but needing to use the backboard just bought, costed a lot of time out of M80. And then as they're all mixed up, just the quickest counterattack came out of Muffin Men and M80 weren't established in time to defend against it. Now two to one for Muffin Men with 45 seconds left. M80 not even having clear possession here either. Jorius has to fight for it. Nas has a second to control the ball and escort as AJ is getting Aqua out of their end. But now Gimmick and Aqua against AJ. But well, I mean, <laughs> Muffin Men are still trying to yeah, collect that's... the ball. Yeah. Uh, you take it. No, you take it. No, nobody take it. Apparently that that could be costly. There's still 20 seconds. Demo on Squishy. Well cleared by Gimmick. Now Nas. Up to the heavens, Jory is downfield. He bumps Squishy back to the corner. This is still dangerously close to the net. Still dangerous again for NASA, and it's cleared out to the corner. That surely should do it for the Muffin Men. Aqua, though, beaten by Jorius. AJ under duress from Gimmick. Can they keep it in the air? Yes. AJ left it, and Muffin Men spike it to the ground. And we've got a series here, one all. Series tied 1-1, one, one. and Kind of a tough showing out of M80. I said that AJ was having a, a quiet game and he and he still is at the 150 score and similar most quiet player in game one too when it comes to M80. And this is a this is a match that matters a lot. You're in one and two situation. I've already spoken about this and this is winnable for both sides. I think this is a very even matchup. But with Muffin Men on the come up, they're bouncing back after some tough losses. They're the ones to watch, especially Aqua with a fantastic game there. Uh, with two goals, three saves, four shots, he was doing it all. Squishy has always been a bit of an enigma. You can never actually figure this guy out. No matter how how much people have tried to analyze his play and break it all down and figure out, okay, just how does this guy think? Listen, way back in the day, they would sign up and they would play like part of a weekly tournament. And then by the time they get to the semis, Squishy would be like, all right, I'm out. And then like Epic Johnny or whoever their sub was at the time would jump in and play. Actually, I think Gimmick at one point would be would have been their sub and been playing for them. It's just, you never know what this guy's gonna do. And there's still a lot to unfold here as we go to game three, a tie-breaking game in a one-all series. Both teams cheating up off the kickoff, but AJ didn't have a full handle on it. So Squishy wants to set up Gimmick who gets demoed for his efforts. And good defense from M80 off a, a shaky kickoff there. And AJ's looking for bumps, can't find it. Jorius, no gap to be created for him. Pressure is on for M80. Oh, Gimmick and Squishy cross here. And now Jorius shot blocked away. Nass trying to just harass them just a little bit more. Jorius is there. Double commit though out of Muffin Men. And that's going to force Aqua into a real awkward spot. But he's got that one cleared away. Squishy back to the net. Everything looking normal ish for Muffin Men now, despite that bump at the corner. As Gimmick hassled by Jorius and away. And AJ just caught up to that one at midfield. I think I saw Nas grab the corner boost from Muffin Men. So Muffin Men are running on fumes, except Aqua, I think, managed to grab a side one. And it, it generated some momentum, but not enough when he didn't have teammates. So M80 back on offense with uh, not too much being generated. Now it's AJ who has to slow down Squishy and Gimmick coming through the left side. This is a dangerous spot to be in, but Nas waits for the approach of Aqua, reads it well, and here's the counterattack that comes in quick. M80 score off of it. Now this is Nas, but also Jory is there just slowing down Squishy. Squishy had to respect the redirect effort there, and that gave Nas all the time he needed bust through that window just outside the first minute. A rare game where we don't see an early goal out of the Muffin Men. What will that mean for them? As Aqua there to stop Jorius, got around another. Nas, can he catch up to this? No, wide open, Aqua! Aqua is just that guy. He had, uh, what, two goals in the last game to now the counterattack, this time favoring Muffin Men playing off the back wall there. Fantastic job out of Aqua. And these have been close, low scoring games. I think 2 1 on both game one and game two. So both teams have each other downloaded. Now Nas and AJ just get this away from Gimmick. They go above, they go high, and Aqua inching to. 
shake up M80's offense. You need to come in quick if you're M80 to really try and surprise them. Getting below the defender is one thing, and AJ can't control the rebound, but goes to the corner to give themselves another chance, but loses it in the progress. M80, they've kept the pressure on for the most part. They're, of course, one of the teams that have kind of mixed things up here with this boot camp plan. Trying to put a little extra preparation into saving their split. Nash will turn on this and force Muffin Men back. So the teams that have gone to this boot camp strategy here this week, they're not performing well. Four and 10 collectively coming into this round. Just bizarre <laughs> numbers when you think of all the talk about, hey, a boot camp will help. Well, only if you do it right, and apparently, these teams haven't been doing it right. They've run into some bad matchups. Here goes AJ turning on this. Jorius on the weak side. He started to turn in, ball went over his head. And then Nass had his pocket picked and it just went wide. And M80 are still trying to collect it as Gimmick came in for the challenge. He's been usually that demo guy or the challenge guy, something to surprise M80. Now Aqua bumps people out of the net. AJ comes out in time for the save. And the counterattack from M80 was coming quick and it got slowed down right at the midfield. And M80 have to survive now. They've taken care of Squishy, so you weaken that Muffin Men offense. This one hanging on the edge of a blade with a minute 30. Aqua challenging AJ. Where's this coming out of the corner? Paul oh, Jory has just got there ahead of gimmick. AJ and Nass now. It's gonna be all AJ. Almost forced it through. But again, another goal line save out of the Muffin Men. Shades of game one. This one skips downfield. Gimmick is there. Got a piece of that clearance effort out of Nass. He was ready for it. And now Jory is back the other way. Quick shots high. No follow up as Aqua denies the rebound. I like the effort coming out of Gimmick, but the perfect setups haven't been there. It's been tough for Muffinman to get the strike they need. Here's Jorius up high, dodges the one, sets up Nass, and the 50 goes awry. And that was a chance for M80 to get the lead with less than a minute left. It's still a scramble in the blue half. It comes out to Jorius with M80 for the, some time to breathe until Squishy gets the challenge, almost gets Gimmick in a position to score. But AJ and Nass were ready. Spacing's not good. Aqua, they, they finally disperse, but that could be troublesome for Muffin Men here. Final 30 seconds, well, there was not much. Oh, it's an own goal! There was not much of a path out, and Houdini found a way as Aqua, I mean, it's all gimmick there, clearing it out to Aqua, and then he just rolled it in AJ's path. What a development. <laughs> that is gonna hurt. So Muffin Men, two to one. If we're following the trend of 2-1 score lines, this is where it would end, you're right? We'll have to see in 21 seconds as Nass and friends control the ball in the blue half, but great challenge out of Aqua, but does get bumped a little bit. AJ goes up high to recovery quickly, and Jorius couldn't catch this, so Squishy's on his tail. This pops up the gimmick. Who takes the shot, and Jorius makes the save. Oh, Jorius can't continue the play up high. There is something in the air as the Muffin Men are on match point trying to end M80's run here in the final qualifier. Kind of uncharacteristic to see M80 uh, in this struggle position. Again, AJ has always been one of my favorite players to watch. All of M80 have been the dark horses of these brackets, and I guess you don't even need to call them dark horses anymore when they make top eight pretty consistently, but M80 have been that team to watch, that team to try and upset everyone if they can even make it to Copenhagen, but Mothman have had their number. They've always kept this within one, and then that last sort of own goal, unexpected shot there gives Muffin Men two to one, and they take game three but I could easily see M80 force the game five. I mean, it, it's hard to fault M80, right? I mean, they, multiple times, they had the ball right on the goal line, on the blue half of the field. They had it, I mean, a couple pixels here or there, and they not only maybe win this game, they win it running away. And all of a sudden, that fluky touch goes off of AJ, downfield into an empty net. And now M80 
has to fight for their tournament lives against Squishy Muffins. Game four is <laughs> underway. Maybe it's just the the broadcast buff of Squishy starting to win. Squishy and friends, obviously, starting to win games now that they're on stream. Because it didn't start off well, that's for sure. Now he gets demoed as I'm talking about him. But to be also oh. uncharacteristic, if M80 didn't make playoffs and they want to change that story, Nass with a great shot. And Nass after, I mean, Aqua did what he could, but just couldn't recover. Squishy couldn't get to that as it goes bar down and eventually in. We may have seen it just a moment ago. OG sweep Dignitas. So now Dig has to go to round five. And remember that big six way tiebreaker absolute mess that Gibbs had talked about a while back. All the chaos that could ensue. Kind of the, the linchpin of that is maybe Dignitas going out in round five. Well, that's where they're headed now. Oh boy. I'm I'm glad I'm not in charge of math because that all seems very stressful and difficult. All, all I know is North America is fighting for three spots at Copenhagen minus, you know, G2 having the first one. And, and it's really spots, anyone's right? game. With, with Gen oh, yeah, yeah. securing their spot. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. There's there fewer recent. spots than there were at the start of the day. And it's, boy, it's getting real tight here in the final weekend. Oh, no way. This goes in. Oh, what a save by Jorius. Oh, man, M80. How long could they hold on to this for? Gimmick with a setup for Aqua. The shot, the jump, and the defender's not there. The tie. Right back where we started. Squishy retreating, and he has a great view of Aqua scoring over his head. 338. And we're all tied up. Three games decided by a 2 1 score line. Who will be the first to two here as Nass makes the saver along the crossbar? Gimmick is up, but that's well saved away. Another attempt, though, from Aqua. He'll go from the ceiling. Waterfall down. Jory has had it all the way. Now M80 can breathe. Squishy grabbed the corners. He's able to go high with a full tank of boost. And Nass tries to interrupt him here in the midfield, giving time for M80 to reestablish defensively. And Gimmick just hasn't had a handle on that to maybe set up Aqua. Well, he comes back to his own half, and Jorius wanting that second touch, doesn't get it. Nass wasn't ready for the pass, and three minutes, match point for Muffin Men 2. Aqua shoves AJ out of the way, but Squishy can't win the 50 against Nass, and Gimmick gets involved, headbutts in. And then M80 have dealt with that aggression well. Oh, big oh. shot from Jorius. The defense, the transition from Muffin Man just slowed down a little bit as nobody really knew where to go. And Aqua, just a little bit of hesitation cost him big time there. Jorius just lets one rip. Aqua couldn't catch up to it. Halfway mark of game four coming up. A must win in so many ways for M80. And they keep it going, though. Aqua's got that one cleared away. Here comes Jorius with Squishy waiting on the back wall. Yeah, this this has to be mentally tiring for all these players. <laughs> AJ's challenge ends up in the net, and the lead is two. A yeah, beautiful goal out of AJ. M80 with extra insurance. Even in the goal before this one, Muffin Men were really generating potential, but they were playing so far forward because the 50s just kept stifling, and then they couldn't find themselves rotating quick enough when M80's counterattack ensued. And now things are looking dire. Second half, three to one. Because now we break the two to one curse, I guess. As the ceiling pinch denied there by Jorius. Races against Aqua. Wanted to maybe pinch that out to AJ, but Jorius struggled with that. So now the defenders from Muffinman are back on this. They need to get something going, but AJ with Jorius really threatens the net against Muffinman. Hey, Gimmick, nice save. Where'd you learn that one? And that goes across. As now Jory has had that skip out from the wall, caught up to it, set up AJ. Now they're just driving circles around the Muffin Men. Somebody's got to get boosted, get up in the air. Aqua grabbed a full tank. He'll come across, still needs some of it. That shot from Nass near the mark. 
And now Jorius doesn't let that get anywhere near midfield. Here he comes again. Looking for the backboard. Found it. Aqua's up and past AJ, but no pace on this. M80 will easily collect it back in their own territory, but just one brief moment of respite here for the Muffin Men. They weathered an absolute salvo, and then they left the door open. All that work defensively just to get scored on anyways. Oh, I know, you said time to breathe, but it's M80 just being relentless. One strong clear out of Muffin Men, but the ball not in their hands. M80 collect, and they send it right back. Four to one for M80 with not a, but not a lot of time, especially with only four shots registered out of Muffin Men who not only need to clear this, but maintain possession and deal with shot after shot coming out of M80. And Muffin Men are panicking in the state of affairs and the down low pitch gets into. And another one, and another one, and another one. It is time to go next on to Champions Field. Game five yet again in the future for Muffin Men. Yet again with closeout opportunities, letting it go to game five. Close out this final minute here as Gimmick will push ahead to Aqua. And what else is new? Another intercept at midfield. M80 have just had the clamps down on the Muffin Men throughout this whole game. Even that shot goes wayward now into the final 30 seconds. Will Aqua get one for the road here? No, Nash with the save. It's time to pack up and head to the next one as this one surely now, right? Now, if you can't score there, you're not gonna score the rest of this game. M80 do exactly what they needed to do. They scored early, they scored often, they kept the pressure on, and they converted those opportunities that they could not in the first three games. And the final result, when the clock hits zero here, is another trip to Champions Field as M80 perseveres and survives to fight another game. So back and forth. Game one went to M80, then Muffin Men with game two and game three. Now M80 back in the game four. It's, uh, jeez. I know everyone is stressing watching this match, whether you're an M80 fan, maybe rejoicing. Not especially someone like AJ is putting out the numbers we know him to be. Jory is obviously known for his assists, but this time the primary scorer and Muffin Men who are losing challenges in the midfield, which is stifling their opportunities. When M80 able to put up 10 shots to the six of Muffin Men and other man just couldn't keep up, couldn't really hold on to the ball for long enough. Elsewhere in the Swift Star, at least going the way that Muffin need, though, if they are to somehow complete run. But they would have to win the whole thing with a win on Champions Field. Game five coming up yet again, back to back rounds for the Muffin Men after being swept in the first couple of rounds here. They have come back with a vengeance, swept by G2, swept by Luminosity. You can't really blame them. Almost reverse swept by Justin and Shopify Rebellion. And now trying to survive and advance to round five against M80. The Swiss merchants, stock has been falling today. Can they salvage anything here and put to rest the career of Squishy? Ooh, Nas forced to make the save there. And yeah, M80, I know have a, I know we call it Copenhagen, but a lot of Hopenhagen too. When you have to reverse sweep through the Swiss to make playoffs, to give yourself a chance to go there. Now Aqua to the side. The challenge is coming in strong out of M80, where I said they were winning a lot of their 50s and sparking up a lot of potential and opportunities. But you know that Muffin Men won't take this laying down. Squishy, not able to get that challenge. And this goes to Aqua, and M80 can't do much with this. Aqua anxious to get back on the attack. That's where he is best. That's where this team is best. When Aqua is able to act as kind of the facilitator. But he's got to play defense here. Shutting down AJ. And a race to the corner boost. But Aqua couldn't even what? jump for this. As Nas scores. Aqua in an impossible spot here. 
Yeah, I, I thought that Aqua maybe could have jumped, but I think the car, the ball was coming from behind him and didn't see it in time and maybe trusted his teammate that was there. Either way, M80, great pinch off the wall and they get the first goal. Three shots already <laughs> registered in the first minute. M80 are not playing around and guess who's on offense again? Nass with the shot, but it's centered out. The rebound found by M80 as Aqua managed to at least clear this out. Oh, Aqua this time staying away from that ramp near the goal and able to make a play on that ball. Just spikes it for Squishy to go chase. That high bouncer though controlled by Jorius. Now Nass from midfield. Has to go forego the midfield boost. Aqua takes it from under him and then he gets back to make a play on Jorius. Here goes Squishy. Trying to prolong his career for at least one more round. But that one got up and away from him with Aqua waiting. Here's Gimmick on the other side. Corner boost available. Gimmick steals it. Aqua's there too. Gimmick. Just bullying Nass right at the corner of the goal. It's available and Squishy scores. It's the team effort from Muffin Men, starting with Aqua having the reset, dodges the challenge, has everyone panicking. Nass with the attempted backflip when there might have even been a bump with the net, and Muffin Men benefit from it, getting one on the board where it felt like M80 were just bullying them in the first two minutes of the game, registering all these shots. And the one time up and then break out, will they execute? Champions Field, the house that, uh, that Turbo Bolsa built, and then Squishy, of course, taking his place. We look, as you see up under the M80 players, Omelette, 3-2, take down Luminosity. And that adds another wrinkle into the Swiss as Nass goes to work and Aqua's right there in his face and a chance out for Gimmick on target. No, just a little high. I'm still just trying to absorb the loss there of LG. What a weird regional this has been. But it all comes down to not only this match, but what happens in this regional for the stakes of Copenhagen. And anyone can lose, anyone can fall, no matter what peak you're at. We've even seen that out of G2, so. Squishy, Gimmick, Aqua, all playing forward. Hungry for this 2-1 lead. Oh. Squishy from up high gets it done. Oh, the wizard does it again from the ceiling. Nass, I don't even know if he had any idea he was there. With 2.15 to go, our last match of the round again comes down to Champions Field and comes down to Squishy trying to keep it going. Putting it in his own hands. Nass downfield. What does M80 have for an answer here in the final two? Could be Jorius up high and sent away. Yeah, whatever happens here, you want to play your best as Squishy has put up the numbers in these last two series. Now two goals in this game. Game five champions field when it matters. Jorius gets demoed. It's off to the side, but who's there first? I thought it was Naz, but Aqua is quick. Drove up, drove up the wall instead. And M80 harassing this blue half. Here comes Aqua with the double tap threatening there, but couldn't execute with that much speed. And Jorius, the counterattack, looking for the bump. AJ taps it in, and we're tied. Oh, they almost kept this one out, too, and M80 fans would have been raging. What else do we have to do? But AJ got to it just in time. Minute 23, all square on Champions Field. Squishy going to work to the skies yet again from the ceiling denied by Nass. Oh, that one got free. Team. Ooh. You make their first, and Nass wants to be careful with this. Jorius escorting out with Gimmick on his tail, and Squishy makes the save. Double commit in the net, I think, too, from Muffin Man. As Nass can't escort this through, so AJ gets involved, and... It's Muffin Man holding hands on this defense, but they still manage to make some space, but they're interrupted in the midfield. Jorius crossing in front of the net, but having no friends to pass to is tough, but the ball still remains in the blue half, and Gimmick managed to pitch this out from the corner. Want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. Squishy has done most of that here in this game. Aqua has done a lot of work, Gimmick keeping the dream alive on a couple of occasions. Down to less than 30 seconds. 
gimmick going to get this one away with two bearing down on him. Jory's is there. It just seems like at times there's no escape out of the blue zone. Squishy's going to dive after this with AJ coming on. And he does and wins that cleanly downfield. But across now, Jorius with Aqua waiting. Jorius gonna have to take it himself, and Aqua got a piece of it. Follow up is sent away as well. Overtime looming. Nass has something to say about it, and M80 <laughs> has pulled it off. Jorius buries the career of the legendary Squishy. I told him overtime for sure. It was so special to watch. After M80 has been so aggressive in demanding the offense, up until that amazing zero second goal out of Jorius. I was highlighting his assist stats, but Jorius really put in the work today to help M80. He did, and it brings to an end what, what was a storybook ending brewing here in our final qualifier at zero seconds on Champions Field. Jorius scores the game winner. And it is indeed the end of an era. A legendary playing career comes to a close for that man, Squishy. And what a ride it has been. With a world championship to his credit with the legendary Cloud9 in Las Vegas. Kind of an outside shot at getting to one more land and making one more run. But alas, it comes to a close here on March 1st, 2024. <laughs> you marking that on your calendar for sure. <laughs> At least Squishy is all looking like he's smiling. Obviously, not the way you want it to go out, but you force the game five. Squishy had a ton of goals, not only in this series, but the last one. You got to be happy with the showing. Yeah, at least be happy with the bounce back that you had. Like, Muffin Man started the day 0-2 and, and had the reverse sweep Swiss to get into playoffs. Just, just the improvements they made between Regional 2 and Regional 3 is amazing to see. And M80, well, it was kind of uncharacteristic to see them struggle this much when they were consistently making regionals. But now, now you got to put them under a microscope, too. Comes to a close for Squishy Muffins and the Muffin Men. But M80 gets to march on. We have one more round of Swiss here in our final qualifier before we send two more teams to Denmark. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss round five.
The story finally comes to an end with a buzzer beater on Champions Field. M80 put an end to the Cinderella run. The clock strikes midnight, and the Muffin Men officially go home. M80 still alive. We'll see them play in round five against the Pirates on a boat who managed to take game one off of G2 before uh, normal G2 things started to happen. So that's we got three rounds left or three rounds, excuse me, three games left. I'm so glad we don't have three rounds left. One more round, <laughs> three matches within that round. It's going to be some banger matches, some some huge implications for the major as well here stacks i'm excited for it but uh man talking it's, it's just for one last time here thinking about the match we just watched the stories we just saw the legacy that was just cemented uh how you feeling I mean, it was like there was one last flash of lightning right where just squishy just sticks his fist up in the air like hold on i got one more in me Bam. right because he took over in game five and then squishy save happens at the end yeah, he, had, he had his, his signature save Gardner had a signature shot in one of these uh, series here coming down the stretch here. I mean, you look at his totals from the two series we had on stream, right? He had like eight goals, a, a bucket load of assists. He look, a lot of times you see a guy at the end of his career in traditional sports and you can tell he doesn't really belong out there. Look at this. Look at this. Look at Boom. this. He wow. absolutely could still go. And what a way to Woo. go out. I mean, just the absolute dramatics of game five and I think that was that might have been the reaction to that last second goal from Jorius there that is just what if you're gonna go out I mean zero seconds on champions field yeah. you gotta tip your cap at that point and he yeah. scored both goals on champions field he scored one of the best goals we've seen this split as well for his final goal of his ROCS career squishy he still got it like he can play split too. Like he's building a good resume to get picked up, maybe by a team. But he's quitting because he, he wants will take to. his leave here. He's yeah, quitting because he chooses to go on his terms. Chat, one last time, give us the fish <laughs> to help there out to help out the squish to thank the squish to commemorate the incredible performance of this man. What an important, impressive, impressive run there. We'll get to see uh, his teammates continuing on as well. But I, I'm excited to see. What what occurs? What occurs for the Muffin Men? What does Squishy do next? Thank you for everything he did for RLCS over the years. Excited that maybe we'll get to, maybe we'll get to talk to him about it here in the, in the coming weeks. We got we got a lot of time. He's not dead. He's still alive. We can <laughs> talk to him. So it's gonna be a great one, folks. Let's talk about what's coming up in round five. Because the Muffin Men, they lost. They're done. It's old news. Let's talk about the teams that still have a chance to make it to Copenhagen. We've got three rounds left. G2, Omelet, and OG punched their tickets in round four up in the two and one. I mean, we were talking about so much about the uh, uh, Muffin. Luminosity lost to Omelet. OG beat Dignitas. Look, look at how stacked. I mean, M80 Space Station, Pirates on a Boat, Dignitas, Luminosity, and Boulevard might be the most stacked round five in the history of North America, Gibbs. It's wild. It's just absolutely wild. And it's win or go home at this point for all these teams. Like M80 vs. Pirates, if you lose, no major for you. If Illuminati loses, they have hope, but they'll need things to go their way throughout the bracket. And then Dignitas Space Station as well. Win or go home because very likely, yeah. I think the only way it doesn't happen is if Boulevard sweeps, but I could be wrong there. Okay. Like if Dignitas lose here, one of the other teams that, that are right behind them will play OG in the first round of the bracket. Okay. So one of those teams will move ahead of Dignitas. So Dignitas could very likely be out here as well. We'll, we'll so see. Everything on the line. We, we got to get in the match. The players are ready to play. They are tired of sitting around and waiting for this one. We're going to be watching Space Station versus Dignitas. The Battle of the Yellow. Stories on every side. Content, contention here. I, was it uh, Space Station versus Dignitas played each other for a tiebreaker to make it to winner? Or like, like basically effectively a tiebreaker to make it to the winner major last season. This already happened. Dignitas won that one, but very different players. Arsenal was on Space Station at that time. Now it's Arsenal's playing on Dignitas against Space Station. Chicago coming in on top of them. I mean, it stacks. Where, where do you want to start? Well, well, for both of you, this has to be the absolute worst series, and you should be thankful you're not casting this because it's the two teams you've been confusing all, all uh, Very long. true, very true. <laughs> That's true. It's That's like, true. Oh, it's, yeah, Guilty Arsenal, he's on SST right now. No. He's on the yellow team. He's, right? Yeah. It's the same. It's this the is, same. I mean, this is a, a, a story of circumstance, right? Because you get SST SSG that uh, has just been wrecked by the bracket 
two times in a row. If they go out, like, let's say they go out in the quarters, like, they make it here and they go out in the quarters, they'll be the best team in NA that's not major, I think, by far. It's just they've had such rough luck. Now they've got a chance to get in, and I think they would most likely avoid... They would avoid G2. Who knows they if they it. would avoid Gen G? <laughs> but, you know, I mean... Things were looking okay for either of these teams, and then all of a sudden TSM decided to go 3-0. and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. And both these teams lost to OG as well, 3-0. So that was Space Station's first loss versus one of those top teams. So OG making their mark here, but winner go home. Here we go. Let's winner do it. Winner go home. Chat is split. Three to two, two, two to one. We're split two to one up on the desk as well. Dignitas, uh, maybe a slight underdog in this situation, especially coming off of that 3 0 loss to OG. But do or do not, there is no try right now. Someone famous said that one time, folks. I'm excited for it. Put it up or go home. Space Station versus Dignitas to play in the playoffs. Dignitas and Space Station fight for one of the last spots in top eight and the few tickets left for Copenhagen. Dignitas are on their redemption arc, but Space Station are trying to play up to everyone's expectations and the land dream lives or dies after this match. Big match here. Major hopes on the line. It's time to put up or shut up. Best of five between Dignitas and Space Station Gaming. Whoever wins is still in the running for Copenhagen. Whoever loses has to watch at home. Here we go. And both teams have had strong showings against the top teams, whether it was Space Station shaking up G2. I got to cast, uh, watch that match. That was fun. And Dignitas going to five against Gen G, who's uh, firmly at number two and clinched for Copenhagen. So both these teams have been showing up. But both losing to OG, maybe that's just us maybe needing to respect OG a little bit more. They're on the come up too. This has been a wild regional. It all comes down to what happens in this round. All right, you have to be a little bit careful here. You can see Space Station Gaming off, all the way off to a hot start. They'll be keeping up the offensive control as Dignitas. We've seen them really show signs of life, but we also see struggle. I mean, for both teams today, it's been a journey. How will things shape up now? SSG only one shot registered here in the first minute, but they have been holding on to the possession. So far, so good. LJ doing the dance against Gyro. Chicago helps the push go forward, but Dignitas are not going to let this go by easy. This could be dropped off, but no. Evo escorts it down the field, collides with LJ, and I like that Dignitas are backing each other up and helping this ball go forward now this these 50s just keep dying and not really going anywhere so it's been a bit back and forth this lj against arsenal that's not going far either here's evo chance here for dignitas to break out but you see just that battle for midfield how are these challenges working out lj gets a win so there's some space also picks up that boost so now dignitas is going to be low on boost going to try to slow things down here good 50 from gyro we've seen gyro especially be able to light up scoreboards and make some big time plays will that continue on so far two minutes into this one stalemate again ssg keeping this ball in the orange half chance here for lj he plays it off the back wall gyro was there waiting Oh, LJ's on his tail, though, but nonetheless, Dignitas trying to break out. These 50s are just killing the momentum. Slow as heck right now. It's gyro shot on target. Double commit from SSG, but they save. And LJ tries to go for a quick counterattack, and it's slowed right at the box. Toxer goes up high. Gyro may not have enough. No, he actually did have enough boost, but was just following the ball. And this is enough. Here's Arsenal, keep it close. When, you know, for Dignitas, they've looked so much better, especially compared to their last event. We've seen SSG even push G2 down to, I mean, they get, they scored five on them. Hoxer trying to get one, got the flip reset. Hoxer strikes first for Space Station. I think Evo was, coming from the corner here and just from the side Double barely reset my god <laughs> this didn't wasn't at the front of the ball in time to kill that off to the side a great job by hawkser and ssg you get the first one on the board going into the second half 
All right, game halfway done. Big goal there for Space Station. The way things have been looking, Dignitas have to force the issue. Expect things to be a little bit faster and it may even potentially riskier, especially depending on how that clock goes. Gyro, Arsenal's waiting midfield. He's trying to get it to him. Arsenal will go up. Light touch, Evo's trying to intercept, but LJ, great on keeping this ball close. Keeps it on the hood. You can see SSG trying to force at least a 50 here, seeing if they can pull out somebody from Dignitas. They're trying to slow down the attack keep this maybe even a one goal game there's a potential chance for it to go that way lj not enough boost for the double and evo will be able to control this clean lj's got to be the guy to watch for me for ssg the way he creeps up goes for these challenges in the blue half tries to make dignitas uncomfortable and you can tell now they're forced to have to demo lj or demo ssg to get them off their back and it's still in the blue half talks or fights against gyro who wins that challenge and lj Steps up, forcing Evo to go to the backboard. Hawkser and LJ work the left side, and this is SSG keeping Dignitas trapped. And they don't have a lot of boost to work with. They're trying to collect that while also trying to command the real estate of this blue side. And finally, you thought Arsenal had a chance to move forward. Gyro has to help him out. It's not been easy to move around this oh. field. And Arsenal, that's not a good touch. He pinches and gives it straight to LJ. Evo was in the back end, and Gyro's on the sidewall, so they basically give up possession here, which is going to be more worth moving upfield. Chance here. Oh, Evo wanted to get the buff. Arsenal plays that one, but Gyro's not going to be able to make a play off of it. Instead, he'll have to wait for the clearance, and he is there in time. Chance here for Arsenal. Chicago last back. Gyro threatening with the buff. Leaves it for Evo. The shot. No. It's going to be sent to Hoxer. He's going to pick it up and try to move it the other way. Time ticking down here. SSG so far still in the lead. You gotta worry about what SSG's counterattacks look like last couple of seconds with SSG's lead only by one. And Dignitas have to cross over and Hoxer wants to land this straight down. Great catch by Arsenal. Gyro in the box, but so many members of SSG in the way. Pick up game one. SSG start us off here. All it took was one goal from that man Hawks or May. My goodness, it was a highlight as well. Like I said, two flip resets there to get to the, the dunk on Dignitas and then they were able to continue to keep up the pace. Could be the case of how this series is going to go. A lot of fight from the midfield here and both teams have to be careful. There's a lot of nerves and a lot of pressure on the line, but you gotta keep the ball close. We saw plenty of times there where Dignitas could have the ball up field, made something work, but then they rushed a the touch. There was no one there to get a follow up. They get possession straight to SSG, who are gonna continue to keep it on your own half. Possession was the name of the game and SSG won that today. And when I got to watch Dignitas against G2, I thought Evo was my player to watch in that match just for how many opportunities he's been creating offensively for Dignitas and still trying to, to get warmed up in this match. SSG only put up two shots and one of them scored. It was really putting up the number of saves that they did, but then counterattacking counter -attacking as fast as they did. And you got to thank Hawkser for that, who's always quick to take the ball and run with it. Right. You see, you see Hawks are super quick on the ball. You see LJ always looking to disrupt. And Chicago, we've seen him earlier today. Very efficient. For Space Station Gaming, they have all of the pieces. They just have to continue to put them together. They're up in the series right now, but game two is just getting started. The best of five loser, not going to Copenhagen, not going to top eight. It's a lot riding on this game. And Ars Arsenal wasn't able to cut through the ball given to him right in front of the net. You're not out of the woods yet if your SSG Ooh. Dignitas really threatening this after Gyro puts a shot on. Evo catches this. Is it gonna make it easy for SSG to break out as LJ chases members around the net, hoping to create the gaps that SSG needs? But possession is the name of the game here. Possession is definitely in the game. Dignitas doing a good job of that too. They've been able to dodge a couple of bumps here at the start and also set themselves up pretty well. There's Evo with the first touch. Not gonna be able to find a follow-up there after LJ with a great catch. Is gonna at least play this downfield. You see Chicago, he knows where the 50's gonna go, follows it all the way through, hits the back wall, but not enough. Hawks will keep this one in line, trying to get it to Chicago, but it gets past him. Now LJ, last back. Chance here for Arsenal, leaves it for Gyro. Gyro, there's the shot, but it's straight to Hoxer who will clear it out. Oh, and Dignitas could have kept that going too. It was hard to find the oh. rebound. Great saves out of SSG. Now Gyro and friends. Arsenal gets the pass. Chicago's in front. Steps up to try and clear. And Dignitas want to set themselves up to have SSG's backs against the wall. Now that pinch from Gyro forces Chicago back. And 
SSG find themselves yet on another defense, but as we alluded to in game one, it's the counterattack from Hawkser and the disruption from LJ, as you pointed out, that was really the deadliest thing about SSG. The Sigma Toss are trying everything to get past this defense. Yeah, you see bumps there too. LJ was in an awkward spot on the back end, but just not enough. Good challenge there from Arsenal. He had Chicago all the way in his own half. Chicago gets a bump. Look at the infield passing though. Almost made it through. But this one actually goes off the post and rolls up. Space Station gave me one to keep this in play, but they've got to be too careful. They don't want to send too many people forward. There's only three, less than three minutes here in game two. Feels like this one's gone off for a while, but that just goes to show you how close it's been between these two teams. This Dignitas is just a slow grind trying to get to the orange side without meeting every challenge and every SSG member in your face. It's been tough to surprise SSG to get them on the back foot, but hey, it's still a 0-0 game. Anyone's time to shine going into the second half. As Arsenal gets the ball across the net here, but no one able to find that opportunity. Gyro sets it up to the orange side again, but doesn't have enough boost to compete against LJ. Boxer was looking for a bump to Arsenal, not able to do that. And SSG are on defense again. And they are, you see Dignitas pulling very close, but Gyro making sure to stay a little bit further back, waiting for the clear, and there he is to be able to intercept that. Chicago, good touch off the wall. Arsenal's up quickly, actually beats out Hoxer. He wants to stay on it. LJ had to hesitate there. Evo made him clear it away, but look at that from Hoxer. Dishes out to LJ. Chance here, Arsenal has to make a good stop, but no, the flick high actually buys Dignitas enough time to get back. SSG have him dancing for this ball. SSG just hammering their heads though and just still haven't been able to break through. Three shots to two in favor of SSG. He said possession was the name of the game. Seems like an obvious statement, but neither team have really felt comfortable on the ball. I would say maybe more SSG than not. Now Gyro pinching that off to the left. No one, at least Evo, not ready in time. Now it's a pinch to the right and everyone's just chasing the ball. Now with that demo on the Hawks, so you got a 3-0-2 in favor of Dignitas. Evo wants to find some pumps, but everyone's up against the wall, and this cross is in front of the net, but nothing still for Dignitas. You can tell Dignitas are trying to eliminate the space. A lot of challenges in the air. Some of them have been ambitious. Oh my goodness, speaking of which, LJ! He pulled that one out of the hat. What a play here. He goes forward. You see Chicago with the pass. He takes the boost, and look at this. <laughs> a touch to throw the ball off speed behind the defense. It's just enough for Space Station to lock in the first goal. <laughs> Caught Dignitas chasing their SSG through a... Uh, it didn't even look intentional. What if it is? They look like geniuses after that. SSG with one, with one, less than a minute left as Arsenal and Evo. Again, it's a slow grind for Dignitas to safely transition with the ball to the orange side and even try to find each other in these passes. It's feeling impossible for Dignitas. After what they were able to do against, what, G2 or something earlier? Like, I was expecting so much more out of Dignitas, and there's still time to find that equalizer, but it's been tough to look confident on the field. Especially the way SSG has been able to, I mean, those attack, counter attacks have been so strong, and Dignitas is starting to look a little shaky in that back end. 15 seconds to go. They've got to get things moving here. Gyro doesn't get the double. Oh my goodness, Hawks almost picked it up and scored. That could have cemented the game. Evo has 100 boosts. Flick over one, loses the second 50. LJ trying to get that to Chicago. Gyro has to keep it up. Hawks are with the clear. Is that going to hit the ground? It is. And Space Station Gaming, one game away from making top eight. And just like the most low scoring <laughs> affair too. It's just game one was 1-0, game two was 1-0. And it, it did, even though these are low scoring games, it feels like it's taking a lot of effort to get it done. Um, and it's not, we know SSG are this amazing team, but just with all these challenges coming through, it's been tough for any team to really maintain and hold the ball comfortably. At Dignitas, just looking even less confident on the field, just not able to go into that orange half without just getting fighting to death for it. Right, and I mean, it's tough for Dignitas because you see they're playing close. Two one-goal games here where just that slight misplay or, uh, well, I guess it, I wouldn't call that a misplay. It was really just mainly LJ there. They got that touch that just completely threw off the rotation. And now Dignitas have to reverse sweep if they want to keep their hopes alive here. 
for Copenhagen. It's going to be a tough task, but this one is not out of reach just yet. What do Dignitas do with their backs against the wall? Can Space Station Gaming on the other side close this series out? Sometimes match point is the hardest thing to get through. We'll see if they got it in them. And we thought there was a boot camp buff seeing Dignitas all together, seeing all the teams come together. But sometimes just being in a different environment, you're not used to that setup or I don't know how quickly they traveled over to this area, but ooh, that was quick coming out of SSG. But Dignitas, they want to go out with a bang. They got a reverse sweep to do it. SSG, oh, sorry, one predicted them to be at Copenhagen, but Dignitas won't go down without a fight. Yep, there it is. Good strong clearance. Good beat. Miss Reed on the play by Hoxer. Open net for Evo. And he's going to push that through. First goal here to Dignitas, but a lot of game left. Especially with how they haven't scored this series yet up until now, and it's in the first 30 seconds of play. Arsenal is missing. And now SSG look to fight back. Because they want that sweep. And they want to go to Copenhagen. They at least want to get to top eight, and we'll see from there. Chicago against Evo up high. This comes down to Arsenal. LJ won't let that bounce from the back wall go through. Evo takes the corner boost. And Gyro's going to slow down SSG with Hawks are missing. Dignitas recovers the ball and hopes to really put the pressure on because it's going to take everything to score against SSG with, I mean, how difficult it's been so far. Exactly. But right now it's SSG that really have to get things moving here. And you can see, again, just kind of playing their game. They're trying to look to intercept LJ here. He comes from midfield to try to make an initial challenge. Hawks is waiting in the back end, wants to get involved here, but has to turn off. LJ is going to take it to give it to Chicago. Chicago off the back wall. Can Oxford get there? He can, but the shot's off target. Could have been a perfect chance for Space Station Gaming to equalize, but it's gone by the wayside. And only Arsenal has boost here in Dignitas. At least it managed to get out of that situation. With, uh, without giving up anything to SSG. Toxer misses his time to challenge. As Chicago chases the ball and Gyro puts it to the corner and can't reach that. So now Evo's attention is summoned. But Dignitas, I don't think they can maintain this hold depending on how this 50 goes against Arsenal. So yeah, they have SSG scrambling for the ball, but it's not really an offense out of Dignitas, but just keeping SSG there, which is, I guess, the plan for Dignitas. Yeah, I mean, we saw SSG do that for the first two games. It would be no surprise if we saw one goal game the other way. We're approaching the halfway mark, though, and there's a lot of time here left, though, for Space Station Gaming to get back into this one. First things first, they got to get past Dignitas here in the transition. You see Gyro, he's got Evo on the wing, he's got Arsenal on the back end. Arsenal trying to play close forces here for Evo, and Evo just trying to pull out LJ. Gave LJ the double, though, and you're going to pay for it every single time. Tie game! <laughs> This is after Gyro gets a double demo, so LJ is like the only person alive and breaks everyone's ankles to find the tie when his team needed to the most. 1-1 going into the second half and match point for SSG still as Dignitas, that lead has gone. And they really surprised SSG off the rip in that first minute of play. It's been a struggle for them to score. The first time against SSG was this game. Now Chicago and friends of SSG don't seem too threatened, but in the corner, Evo and Gyro were waiting. Starting to become a back and forth battle here. Everybody's looking for those plays, those bumps off ball, trying to set each other up. Hoxler left that for LJ, but Gyro's there to get the block. Look at LJ, even off ball, getting demos. One gone, two gone. Chance here for Hoxler for an equalizer. LJ coming up, slot, no, blocked away by Evo. Chance here for Chicago, oh, it's blocked again. Evo had to get up there quickly. Oh, and LJ, uh, Chicago even tipped it to LJ, and there was a moment to turn that play around, but at least he has slowed down the counterattack from Dignitas. And that's been the recipe to success for SSG, to just keep making Dignitas uncomfortable. Now Dignitas hope to strike through the hearts of SSG with Chicago missing. Got to get on this ball, but Hawks are with that against both Evo and Arsenal, and SSG make the space and buy time to reestablish himself. Demo on the play, but no one from Dignitas can get there. So Hoxler's able to cut that one out. Could have been a chance there, but people had to turn off. 
We're approaching the final minute, and it really does come down to, again, these push-pull situations. Are you, are, is Dignitas trying to pull SSG out? Hit him with a strong counterattack. How are both teams looking upfield? If you're going for a buff, you gotta make contact at the minimum. Otherwise, you're removing yourself from the play, putting that third man in a bad spot. Right now, Dignitas have the pressure, but can they keep it up, and can they secure a winning goal? Well, Dignitas are able to deny some clears but with the coverage on this ball by SSG. Dignitas can't keep them there much longer. And maintain some pressure here would be ideal for Dignitas to try and get a lead here in the last 30 seconds. But it's SSG's defense and now a couple passes almost to Hawkser, which would have been a beautiful opportunity for them to score. Now SSG just got to stop Evo. Now that the ball is above him, Chicago sets up Hawkser for success. Gyro forced to make a touch off the back wall. Now LJ can't cross through. This is going to fall into the lap of Chicago. There's a few more seconds left until OT. As long as SSG can live this next offense, Gyro not able to keep it up. Uh, there was almost two chances there for both teams. And now those final few seconds. Have to check things though off the kickoff. LJ got a bump on Gyro, so Gyro can't solo. He actually has to play the 50 now here. Chance to fit for LJ. Good challenge from Arsenal, but Dignitas not out of danger yet. Evo will get this clearance. This follow-up is going to be important here. He's not going to be able to get the ball, but he slows down Chicago enough to allow Gyro and Arsenal move upfield. First few seconds of OT. We've seen the ball the possession change left and right. Big save there for Evo to kind of keep things in there for Dig. Fake challenge from Arsenal, so Gyro can get a clear up field. And now Arsenal's hunting, looking for a demo. Won't be able to get that either. You can tell the speed of gameplay has increased, but with so much on the line, you cannot afford to make a mistake if you're Dignitas. Oh, LJ almost crashing to the backboard, but Arsenal was there, and Dignitas have been a lot better at breaking up the plays, breaking up the passes between SSG, which is what made them so deadly against G2, which Dignitas faced Gen G, you know, these G names, but now one minute into OT, Space Station hoping to lock in top eight. Now Evo won't let this cross through there by Chicago as Hawkser steps up, but the two in the corner from Dignitas sends it all the way to the orange side. Oh, that one was Ooh. almost an old goal. Overtime still continues on. Big challenge win there from Hoxer. Arsenal, smart to play that high. And you see Chicago so quick for the challenge. That's a good clearance downfield. Arsenal can't do anything. No bumps, no anything. So he's going to be out to play for a bit. But good on Gyro to be able to get this control. Beats out LJ. Big challenge win there. Dignitas have space here in the offensive front, but they've got to make sure not to throw it away. They're trying to see if they can force a mistake on while SSG are set on defense. But that's a big challenge so far because the defense has been set and they've been clearing out very properly. All right, Dignitas back on defense, but with Chicago threatening, this goes to Hawksers, second touch. Not on target, but to the corner. And another fight ensues for SSG to main, just try to get possession so they can try to end this overtime in their favor. But it's Dignitas not able to just win these 50s. Evo was looking good there for a second, and Arsenal knows there's potential here, and he's trying his best. Gyro now steps up, and Dignitas are doing everything. Oh. He tries to cut LJ, jumps up for the save. So close. Dignitas still have the ball, though. You see Gyro waiting. You can look at the boost totals. SSG are star. Could be a chance here. Demo on the play, and Arsenal sinks the shot. Dignitas play on. They force a game four. Nine shots later, two and a half minutes into OT later with the demo creating the gap for Dignitas to keep themselves alive in this series. And you're not even seeing, you know, they're fist bumping win or loss, but they are looking stressed because that win did not come easy. Oh yeah, they're locked in. You have to be at this stage of the game. You have to be locked in. We saw the, that gameplay in that game three. There were opportunities that were very close. I mean, the margin for error is so small at this point. And we know there's a ton of nerves at play. They have to shake all that off and take it game by game. They do so here. They get that first goal again, forcing Space Station to play up there. Space Station responded. You saw the goal from LJ and then came down to that play. Demo, smoke screen, and Arsenal was there to knock it in. Now we go on to game number four here between Dignitas and Space Station Gaming. And who knows where we'll end up.
You love to see the work that Arsenal did there at the end to get involved in the play, to not hesitate because you just can't. Sometimes you do have to take those risks to score in overtime, especially when it's just been stalemate central between these two teams. Chicago's off to a quick start. This front Hawks here, but Dignitas able to transition now to the orange side, and we've noted how difficult that's been for Dignitas. And a chance here. If Jairo can win this 50, Chicago won't let this cross in front of the net. Evo thought he had a chance, and Dignitas loom around for a shot to put on net and try to make SSG as uncomfortable as they made them. They're yeah, already off to a great start, right? Lots of field possession here in the orange half. But there's that breakout chance, and you have to be careful because Space Station Gaming can be deadly on those opportunities. This is a light touch from High, so it leads it to LJ, but LJ, no, too high. Chicago wants to play it low, and Evo's there to knock it away for the time being. Crisis averted on the side of Dignitas. So many save there, saves there, and Hawks will need to let them transition. As LJ sparks up another offense here with, S, uh, with SSG. But it's been tough. The 50s from Tignatos working out on the defense. Toxer has a little freedom to work with. Has Arsenal all by his side. Evo harassing from below. It's SSG can't find the gaps and they're gonna need to look for bumps or devils or something. But now LJ doesn't look too threatened here as Dignitas went to the orange half, but without the ball. Toxic a chance here to solo. Trying to line up that double. LJ in Chicago pushed up pretty far here. But not too bad. They're able to stay close to the ball. Great couple 50s there. Arsenal wants to play this into the corner. Nice and away from him. Keeps that control. But now you're seeing Space Station Gaming on the defensive end. They're sitting there fine right now. They're boosted up. And they're going to be able to transition this ball fairly easily, especially if Dignitas just let them. But Arsenal comes in with that close challenge. Pass. Shot off target. And could have been a chance there. Wait, Gyro trying to keep this alive. Evo wanted to play really close, but he has to abort mission because there's no way he's going to be able to make a shot the way Space Station defense has been set up. Both teams playing phenomenal offense and defense. I say that as Gyro picks up another save. But again, we're looking at another close game developing. Dignitas starting to run out of boost and now with gyro demoed Evo managed to grab the corner and Dignitas with what little they have left take the ball they run to the orange side but not with confidence <laughs> the ball is already cleared out from SSG's side LJ gets a demo it's three on two for SSG LJ receives the pass and he scores LJ shoots LJ scores. You think he's out the play? He's absolutely not. He turns on that on a dime after Hoxer gets the pass out and he finishes the job. Space Station Gaming in front. Dignitas major hopes come down if they can score to tie this one up with 2.20 to go. Hey, okay, backward already being threatened. SSG don't win the 50s though. So here comes Arsenal. Good backflip though from LJ to slow down the Dignitas offense that was coming and swinging and then Dignitas need to swing for the fences it's match point for SSG less than two minutes left only down by one and LJ with the oh. flick above it's off the cross and Chicago taps it in LJ gets space here and he sees where Gyro is lines up the flick executes it perfectly and so fast that even though Gyro jumped to try to react to it it wasn't fast enough. Chicago will secure the goal. Space Station gave me secure a two goal lead. This is dangerous territory for Dignitas. They have to fight with everything they've got because so far the way this series has gone, you could say this one's already over. Dignitas couldn't challenge, couldn't slow down SSG's counterattack and that's when they got you on the back foot. It's too little too late. 2-0 for SSG with some time, but a Dignitas offense that hasn't done anything in this game. Zero shots recorded versus the eight of SSG. Dignitas, they've seen the orange half, but without ball position, you can't score. It's just as simple as that. Yep. But they'll do their best. Evo does find that demo he was chasing for, but again, the ball not in the hands of Dignitas to score with. They can't get close to the box, and they have to be careful too, because if they give too much space by overexerting on offense, it leads to a solo play opportunity from Space Station Gaming. We know exactly what that can do. We know what Hoxton can do as well. Plays off the back wall, LJ, no, it's off target. 
made contact there. Space Station Gaming going to keep this ball in the blue half for as long as possible because they are killing that clock and every second counts if you're Dignitas. Well, it's a chance for Arsenal to get a pass here too and Dignitas needs to take advantage of every opportunity they can, but time is just not on their side. There's two members of Dignitas looking for not gonna receive a pass, maybe do a bump, but no one's even having the ball, no one's even kickstarting that offense. And Dign Dignitas are still left with zero shots, and the SSG just have to play defense for this next 21 seconds so they can lock in top eight. And LJ has been that star for SSG, and now it's Chicago's turn with the second goal he scored for SSG. Big win there from LJ. They went all in on that play, but LJ was that much faster. Pass out to Chicago, open net, and reality is starting to set in. They're gonna try here off the kickoff. Maybe a chance, no, Arsenal can't do it. He doesn't have the boost. He doesn't have the time. Dignitas put up a tough fight, but Space Station Gaming keep their major hopes alive as they take this series in four. It was a great job by SSG to play that disruption game that we've known them for. LJ rising to have a really a top performance in that one and Dignitas falling off at the end, but at least they rose from the ashes from kind of peaking in regional one to falling asleep a bit in regional two, not able to make playoffs to a, at least putting up a stronger fight in Swiss in regional three, but Dignitas' Copenhagen dreams die here and SSG. Uh, we'll see if Swiss has risen any doubts for them, but SSG made G2 sweat and ended up with a win over Dignitas. So we'll see what SSG can do in top eight. The race for Copenhagen is starting to come to a finish. Won't be finished here today, of course, but the picture is becoming so much more clear. Luminosity and Bovard are in game five. Other series are going on. So of course, we're gonna send it to the desk to break things down. Lots of action, lots of implication for each of these games as they are played. Space Station able to take down Dignitas and punch their ticket for the bracket. Meanwhile, in the rest of the round of five, M80 is finishing off what at this point is just procedure against Pirates. They are up 4-1 in game four. That will be M80 advancing to the bracket as soon as that game concludes. On the other side of things, though, Luminosity versus Boulevard. 47 seconds left, 2-1 right now. Luminosity leading. They're going to have to hold on for a little under a minute to punch their ticket to the bracket. <laughs> Guess what, though? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if this plays out this way, doesn't Space Station end up going against Gen G in the bracket? Does it really happen to them again? Gibbs. I'm pretty sure it they might, get the seven. It might. There's a lot of calculations going on, but oh, uh, poor guys. I think I think there's I think there's a possibility. I'm pretty sure. Um, there's, there's a chance. There's like a one, a one in four. Uh, <laughs> right. I am checking if Luminosity do win. I think it might keep Dignitas technically alive, but they need like 10 things to go their way. Six, I think. six seconds, um, five, blah, blah, balls in the air there. in a bit. Two Boulevard players are up for it. It's plummeting. <laughs> Wait, it's fight, in the play, dirt. Play, do it. Luminosity has won the match. Woo. Congrats to them. Congrats to them for sure. That, that, I'm not sure if that clinches yet for them either. We're waiting for our staff guy on that, but um, that does put them in a very, very good spot. Luminosity breathe a little bit of a sigh of the relief there, but not something they want to do, but it seems like they always do this on the Fridays is they go to five yep. rounds no matter look, what. They, and, look, but, look, but they always make it. So Spaceman and Crowley are putting on a show, okay? And you can't <laughs> put on a show if you're just like getting out of the game in like round three, right? You got to go to round five. It's got to be game five. It's got to be close. You got to have the dramatic music pumping. So they're doing a great job over there. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite a broadcast, quite an experience, but my goodness. We we what have our top eight teams. Yeah. What 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 is the biggest surprise for 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 you, uh, Stacks, coming out of the out of today? There was there was a bunch of different ones. I mean, there, there's an easy one, right? Omelet. Omelet are actually yeah. through. I mean, I mean, TSM being number one, that that's up there. But like, Omelet slays M80, which M80 comes back down to earth, and then Omelet gets by Luminosity in four, no, five games in round four. That's crazy. It was, it, was, it was crazy. It's just wild that it comes down to this two and two round where like everything's on the line and Space Station and Dig, you know, two different ways through this split. 
But at the end of the day, when two teams are this close, yeah, it's going to come down to maybe trying to do those boot camps or whatever, trying to get that one last raw. I think Toss falls a little bit short here. Um, but man, oh man, just across the board, it was just a wild day. Like Muffin Men making a show. We were like, all right, we're going to show Muffin Men until they lose. But man, did they put on a show. It was yeah. a lot of fun to watch that. Both matches. It was great. And like Omelet, yeah, that 3 1 is huge. TSM, the number one seed. Who also beat Omelet 3 0, who then went 3 1, so they only <laughs> lost to TSM. It was a strange day in North America. And this is like a uh, wave, so this is going to make a much better power ranking show for us. I think it's yeah. like, it's nice to see some mixture of results. M80 as well, like they find a way back uh, after losing two in a row against like, Swiss, yep, so yep. kudos to them. Um, but it all comes down to tomorrow. See who makes that major. It's going to be it's gonna be a good time. You know, four of the teams that we've ranked in our top 10 eliminated uh, in the Swiss, two eliminated in round three. So this should make things uh, spicy as we as the conversations develop next yes. week of who is really the best in North America. But there still is only one team at the top who has only lost one time now. G2 did lose. There's maybe an argument you can make about Gen G. We'll see as things move forward. We got a bracket to start playing tomorrow. The top eight there in the green boxes. We have reorganized them by the rule book. No It'll way. Be TSM versus M80, G2 versus Omelet. OG Sports and Luminosity and Gen G right. Mobile One Racing versus Space Station. All right, Wave, I'm going to cook here real quick. You ready? Okay. So okay. TSM wins versus M80. G2 yep. loses to Omelet. Then Omelet what? beats TSM, makes grand finals, and loses. You're Gen G and anymore. Space Station, we got Gen G winning this entire tournament. We got Luminosity beating uh, OG. If that okay. happens, <laughs> uh -huh. OG, Omelet, TSM, Space Station and Dignitas and M80, I believe. I think there's still a way to get six teams tied. What is wrong with have you? a tiebreaker, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Omelette can join that tiebreaker if they make grand finals. Okay. Uh, okay correct okay, me okay. if I'm wrong, but we could do another six way tie. But this is this is so much less likely than the one you were proposing at the beginning. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Hey, real quick, real quick, like uh -huh, Omelette, uh -huh, like uh -huh. if they just lose to G2, it still could be a five way tie. Okay. It still could be a five-way tie. So we're still lo uh, looking at that right now because if TSM wins their match, they get that three-point bump back up and they will join Dignitas, M80, uh, OG, and Space Station as long as those other teams lose. But do you see Omelet down there at 12? Yeah. They're another three-point gap down. So if they make grand finals, they will also join that tiebreaker for a six-way okay, okay. tie. Okay. So that, that's crazy, right? But if we're, living, if we're living in the realm of actually what can happen here, if sure. Luminosity, Gen G, and G2 all win their matches tomorrow against M80, OG, and no, excuse Space me, Station, not, yeah, right. Oh, no. yes. Yeah. So who's, who's the, the M80 so, here? M80 needs to lose to TSM to keep yes. a four-way tie. That's yes, the big but one. then TSM would have to lose in the top four round, which again, that one is very plausible. And then we could have a five-way tie. Oh, for the man. last spot, <laughs> which is more likely than I thought uh, after yeah. this whole event. But that one, like, honestly, out of all the brackets, probably is the most likely to happen. So um, I, I do want to point out, buckle up. <laughs> G2, I believe, has already clinched number one in NA, right? They have, yes. They, they have, have a lot less pressure. I mean, I understand. You, you play to win the game. Thank you, Herm Edwards. <laughs> but... I don't know that you're going to get necessarily the same high intensity G2 you're going to get. But, um, I, like, I imagine the last there. Sunday is an omelet versus TSM that could mean a six way tie or no ties at all. Because if TSM <laughs> wins it, they just take the spot. <laughs> That's imagine. what we're coming down to in Qualifier 3. This is no, why you watch oh, sure, why not? Also, Let's also, go. M80 will, if M80 wins against TSM, then it's M80 just, will move M80 ahead. Just yes. Yeah, yeah it's a, they, the, the M80 can literally rob us of all of this tiebreaker nonsense to, now, if they beat M80 to, or TSM. Real quick, they're not in yet because Space Station could also win and so on and so forth. So they would just move ahead of Dignitas being out of that tiebreaker portion. Right. But there's still other ties available. So there's a lot to be played for. So it's not win and in. It's win and you're still alive and you don't want that big tiebreaker. But for all of us at home and all of us watching, 
we want the six-way tie. All right, that's all I'm saying. I want to see Oblik like in that grand finals. It'd give us like a whole extra day of Rocket League chat. How great yeah. would that be? And just, and just, and just, and just prove how deep of a tournament series region that North America North is America. here, folks. So you know, deep. Just, so deep, folks. If you want to watch these teams compete against each other for real billaloon.dk you can be there in copenhagen incredible stuff i'm excited to see you guys there i hope you'll be there that's march 30th and 31st the days you're able to be there in the house watching the players compete directly in front of you so please go get your tickets if you have a chance my goodness stacks we got we got some crazy matches coming up tomorrow we got the four matches you just saw on your screen in this order we're going to start off the day with og versus luminosity we're going to save the tiebreaker determiner for the end <laughs> of course why wouldn't we what does space station have to do to get somebody that's not gen g or g2 in a bracket are you that's actually not, kidding me right now one against I, shop well, five, yes right i now. guess i guess just how right. how unlucky can you be? I mean, yeah, they're gonna, <laughs> imagine they get stuck on 18 points and then this whole tiebreaker comes through and then they finally persevere through the tiebreaker. Wait, that would, that would be just like them to get in that way. So like, all I'm going to say is I have a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids. And these mm -hmm. next two days, if this happens, a six way tie, it might be the happiest day of my life. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> just saying that right now. I live for this. I live for this chaos and I hope it happens chat it's it's he's not he's not <laughs> blowing steam i asked gibbs years ago gibbs if you could run a podcast on anything that for a long time that you think you could run for a really long time what would it be it's a just tournament formats man i would just love to just like like turn formats and like stats of tournaments this is literally what he lives for i'm not gonna lie i'm excited for it i want you to have that happiest day of your life it would make me happy too <laughs> chat thank you all so much for hanging out with us the quarterfinals kick off tomorrow at 10 a.m pacific pre-show live at 9 30 a.m you might get to hear from a recently retired pro on that show stick around for the pre show it'll be a good time thanks for watching we'll see you guys tomorrow
Fit for now, the things you said were playing loud. 